to the FGS Open. Neymar, though, which way is he going? It's left. It's the Brazilian short for the Tire Wolves. Dubai is where we are heading. Oh, it's the 92nd minute. Sao Paulo. They will be absolutely loving every single second of this. We're getting into the nitty gritty now. That's great there. Oh, wowee. Heading to Madrid. Tar 9 with the finesse! <laughs> Bang! There's the top right corner. And we will see them in IP. Well, hello guys and welcome to the third and final day of the FGS Open presented by PS5. As you can tell, I'm pretty excited to be here. Let's just talk about what we have seen so far then, because on Friday, we started with 16 regional qualifiers all vying for a spot, those Team of the Season Cup in April here in London as well, but actually in the Copperbox Arena in Stratford. Over the last two days, though, we've filled 10 of those spots, 10 teams have already already secured their place. So that means today there are only six spots remaining. We're excited to see who is going to fill those six remaining spots. And where is all that coming from? Well, this awesome studio here in Twickenham in London. This is actually the Twickenham Stadium, home usually to English rugby. You can see the pictures of that stadium. That's the outside of it. Obviously, you're seeing what's happening in the bowels of the stadium at the moment. It's an 82,000 capacity stadium. It's super awesome. Obviously, this weekend is playing home to 2v2 FIFA action. And I say 2v2, if you are just joining us today, I say 2v2 because that's how the FGS season this season is playing out. Usually it's 1v1, not anymore. It's 2v2. Let's check out exactly how this season is going to work. 
2022 brings a new game, a new season, and a new way of competing as the FIFA 22 Global Series see the world's elite FIFA players put aside past rivalries and pair up as FIFA Esports goes 2v2. The new cooperative format will put teamwork to the test as players compete for the $1 million season prize pool. We kick off the season in December with the FGS Open with 16 individual qualifier tournaments covering the entire globe. 16 teams will emerge victorious from their regional qualifiers and book themselves a flight to the Team of the Season Cup in April. The 16 qualifiers will then head to the Copper Box Arena at the Olympic Park in London to be joined by our 16 Masters teams featuring past champions such as Fnatic Tex and Falcons MS Tassari. The season finale will also be the first ever live FGS event to feature an open bracket, allowing the best amateur players out there a shot at taking down the pros for the $500,000 prize pool. So now you need to know the rules. All FIFA Global Series 22 matches will take place on the Ultimate Team Game Mode. Each fixture will take place across two legs, as you can see right now on screen, home and away, with each leg taking place over 12 minutes. Aggregate scores across both legs will be used to determine the winner of a fixture. If both teams are still tied at the end of the second leg, we'll head to extra time and then penalties. FGS teams also carry restrictions. You can see them on screen right now. And that's everything you need to know to enjoy the FGS 2022 season. Well, now you're up to speed on the season. Let's bring you up to speed on these two awesome chaps here that are my guests today. Obviously, Chris Tan in the studio with me and Mike LaBelle from New York City. Boys, welcome back to day three. A little bit tired. We've had loads of great action. Chris, welcome back to the studio. Mike, how are you feeling over there about how everything's unraveled over the last two days? Well, I'm happy about the FIFA gameplay. I'm unhappy about the the MLS result. I saw NYCFC become champions. Not happy about that. I was seeing all the games. You know, I was kind of rooting against them. You know, as a New York Red Bulls guy. But I'm vibing today. I feel like we got some extra time. We got a little bit of bonus action. We got the money ball if you watch basketball because we have six regions today as opposed to five on the previous couple of days. We do indeed have six. You are well and truly going to be treated I can count. today. He can count. I love Marcus. that. Chris, Mike's just mentioned six. We're kicking off with Singapore. Obviously, we've got some absolutely great opens. Three in Europe. Where are you most excited to head to? I think it has to be Paris, really, doesn't it, mm -hmm. for me? Tasty. you know, It's where we're supposed to be going in January, it has to be said. But at the same time, I think, you know, you look at all the European matchups we got today, that's where a lot of people would be putting their money on winners to probably cause a lot of problems for people when it does come down to April. But I'm interested to see what some of the other regions have got, but everyone's eyes are on those European games today. Yeah, especially Paris, like Chris said, we've got some real big FIFA players, some names that you guys I know at home will know and love. So keep your eyes out for that. I think it's the, the third Open coming your way today. But boys, let's just take ourselves back to yesterday, day two. We had five awesome qualifiers and we can see exactly who went through on the screen. Now let's quickly talk about Sydney first. Dire Wolves, Order Army, didn't go to a reset. Nice to see. What did you think? Oh, I, I mean, it was one of those, it was just a clinical performance from the Dire Wolves. It just a very, very consistent all the way through, did very well. And then O1 Esports versus Undefeatable. O1 Esports going through as well in Dubai, boys. Then let's move on then. Creparetto, they obviously big defeat there. R10 Esports, we thought they were going to go through. They didn't. Makers versus Tricked. That's on the screen right now. Makers getting their second team in April, which is awesome to see, followed by Casa and Movistar here. Mike, what were your thoughts on the last one? What a goal to seal the deal ah, for Casa. Pretty cagey, pretty cagey in the, mm -hmm. in the final matchup. You could feel the tension. Uh, I, I don't remember the saying where you could slice something in the room with the tension, but it felt that way. We saw in the, the second reset, it was finesse shot heaven. They were in the clouds, everything was floating. We had talked to Gravison a lot about those finesse shots. It kind of gives you an X factor in FIFA 22, if you green time a finesse shot from long distance, long range, you're sitting too deep, top corner, best corner. It's got that nice little curvature, that movement. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Just Mike's nice here. Little, nice little curvature. You know what he likes to do. Yeah. Um, Chris, I'll bring you in now and say, what were you? Wh which result were you most surprised at? Because there were a few that we didn't expect to go the way they did. I think it had to be the Madrid one, to be honest with you. I think, you know, you look at the teams that were coming in, the Movistar Riders were very much the favourites heading into that one, but Casa 
they played it well. It, well. I agree with Mike in the sense that it was very, very cagey. It's one of those games where it does set up in that way. It can go either way. And I know we've got some games today that have potential for upset as well. So I'm curious to see how they're going to go as well. Yeah, well, the 7-0 one was it for me. We did not expect Creparetto to do the job like it did on R10. But, you know, today's a new day. Let's see how many goals some of these teams can get past each other. But let's just remind us now of the qualifiers so far. I'm going to run you through all 10 because it's, you know, the start of a new day. So Tokyo kicked things off on Friday. Kawasaki Frontal going through. Then Safan Goliath from Joburg. Then RF Esports from Miami. Timbers Esports from Mexico City. Lou Time Joe Sway from Washington. Day two kicked off in Sydney, Dial Wolves getting the job done. Then Dubai, 01 Esports, followed by Sao Paulo and Creparetto. Then we moved to Stockholm and Makers went through, like we said, their second team to make it through to April. And finally Madrid, which everybody loved here, Casa Esports went through there. Right, this is day three. This is the final day. I know you guys are going to be saying, oh, I'm so sad it's the final day. But this is not sad. Look at these open. Singapore kicking off at one o'clock. Milan. Paris, Frankfurt are three European ones for heading to Buenos Aires and then Portland. I'm sure Mike Bell will love Portland at 8.30 GMT British time. OK, and they're all the, the matches we have. And if you watch all of them, guys, well, you know, we're nice. We'll reward you. Check this out. If you watch for 60 minutes with a linked EA and Twitch account, you'll get an FGS swap tokens. And these tokens can be exchanged for packs but save them up to get better player packs. You could only earn one swap token per event, so make sure to set your calendar for future tournaments. We're talking about the one in April, I'm guessing. And if you watch for 90 minutes, you can earn these four team kits, which are on your screens right now. Lovely. I mean, guys, we are so kind, aren't we? There's so much that these guys at home can also get rewarded for, for watching our beautiful face. I'm talking about this man, beautiful people, Mike Clavel. Anyway, enough of Mike and his beautiful people little thing up there. Let's, let's move to Singapore, guys. I'm gonna go, can we switch on? We're heading to Singapore. Oh. I'm so clever at doing that. Okay, hey. guys, Singapore, the first one of the day is actually India taking on Malaysia here. The Indian team, are in the winner's bracket and they have some quality players. I don't know who wants to start on this one. Chris or Mike, I'd love your thoughts on this Indian team. M42 Esports, of course. Chris? I, I'm happy to jump in because we were discussing it beforehand in the green room. We're having a little chat around them. They have put a lot of goals in and weren't necessarily expected to be in this scenario. But I think the big thing for me, the pressure that will be on them, they will be the first Indian competitors to qualify for a major tournament. So that is massive for that region as well. In terms of the representation, they want to be the first ones there for India. Yeah, and Mike, I was actually looking at Crusher, one of the Indian chaps' tweets, and he actually, about a month ago, was putting it out there saying, I don't have a partner for this season. And I mean, look at him now. He's already in the winner's bracket with Chelsea there doing the job and, you know, possibly could go away to April. But Mike, I'll bring you in on GB. BX Esports are actually ranked number one. Do you think they can upset the Indian team, this Malaysian pairing? Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're going to start shot. out the day with a reset. I, I, I'm feeling a reset to start the day. I think today in particular, especially with the European trifecta, and if you're new to the competitive scene, when you're going into the European regionals in particular, they're so difficult to predict because uh, not only the vast amount of talent, but the depth. So everything's very interchangeable, and I, I just think today's going to have a lot of resets on display. I'm calling it. I'm putting that energy out early. I'm okay with some penalty kicks as well. I watched some yesterday. I want some more today. OK, well, Mike Clavel, we know where he's going. He is going for GBX Esports to do the job. Chris, where are you going quickly? Um, I'm going to go GBX as well. I'm spoiling Ooh. the party. I'm sorry. Ah. OK, well, there we go. We know where these two are going. We want to know where Brandon and Lisa are going because they're calling this one, guys. Enjoy the first open of day three. Thank you very much, Rachel. And yes, day three of the SGS Open is now upon us. And we've got six regional finals coming your way today. Super excited to be taking you through the Singapore side of things with myself, Brandon Smith, and Lisa Manley. Lisa, it's going to be... Uh, a, a great game, this one. You've got the two Malaysians that have gone through the loser bracket, and I think this does scream a bit of a bracket reset. However, on the flip side, there's such a good story there for this Indian duo of M42 Esports. They could be the first Indian team to make a LAN event, to make a FIFA event, and that would be massive for them as a country. Massive, obviously, as you mentioned, it's going to be their first ever time at a major, and it's going to be a lot of pressure on as well, but they are in the upper bracket, so they can lose a game, but they screamed out for a bracket reset. What, what do you think? Uh, 
I, I think it's... <laughs> I need to see how this first leg goes first. I need to see how this first leg goes. Brilliant duo, though, uh, Akmal and Lukman. They have been a duo for the last couple of years now. They had so much success last year in the Global Series in more of a 1v1 environment. They were both teammates at national level for Malaysia. They qualified for the FIFA E-Nations Cup. Unfortunately, that tournament didn't go ahead. But they also played in the Club World Cup. Although these have been sort of 1v1 tournaments, there's still a team element to them, Lisa. And I think them having that experience has helped them a lot. They went 5-0 and in Swiss. They didn't drop a game in the Swiss rounds of this tournament. Experience is vital. The more time you play against each other, the more you sort of learn how each other play. And as you saw that, unbeaten, that's massive. And then they did drop a game in the winner's side of the bracket. That's why they're in the loser's side of the bracket. Whether they got their head down and it was elimination FIFA through a number of rounds to get to this stage now. But on the other side for M42 Esports, there is a story in the air. There's a story looming for India just in general. Last year was the first year they were eligible to play in the Global Series in the FIFA 21 year of the FGS season, a 1v1 season. And there was one man that was making a lot of noise. Charanjot from India. Played superbly well, was nearly on track for an E-World Cup spot at one stage of the season. He unfortunately didn't have the greatest playoffs there. Represented India in the E-Nations Cup though. Had top four finishes, had top two finishes in multiple qualifiers last year. He teams up with Crusher, and these guys could be really, really deadly. And I think if they were to go and win today, I can't imagine how much news and media will be around that, because what a story it's going to be for them. First ever Indian team, first ever Indian players to make a sort of global LAN event. And I think it shows a lot, Lisa, as well, how far they have come as a scene and the quality that they have on offer. Yeah, it's massive for them, of course. They, they, they want to do it for themselves, but they also want to do it for the nation, and that's really important. They're going to have the backing of India in this game as well, of course. It's not going to be, they're not doing it just for themselves, they're doing it for everyone else that's watching them behind the scenes. They're all going to be watching this broadcast, rooting for them when they score, but I'm looking forward to see how it turns out. Well, it will be. The duo, as you said, of Charanjot and Crusher from left to right in that red strip in this first opening leg. Remember, they're in the winner's side of the bracket, so. They win this two-legged game of FIFA. They will be on their way to that tournament. It's Pele there back to goal. Eusebio, sorry, he's trying to get easy pick-ins. It's not the nicest at the back there. Petrzec was on the floor, defenders were on the floor, and for a split second there, Lisa, there was panic stations, and I thought Eusebio was about to tap that one in. Panic stations indeed, and you can't be doing that at this level. Simple mistakes like that can cost goals, and it's quite hard to actually get a goal in these games because of how defensive these players are and how good they are at defending. Here comes GBX! Oh my god. Renato Sanchez, that would have been one way to announce yourself into this regional final here in Singapore. End to end FIFA. We've only just got to go in 15 minutes into this one. If that was to fly into the back of the net, that certainly would have been up there for goals of the day. De Bruyne. Charging forward, finesse from distance, off the woodwork. And we thought that was an exciting start. De Bruyne didn't even time it, Lisa. Just, fed, just thought, you know what, I'm going to have a shot from 30 yards out. And very, very nearly, that found the top corner. To be honest with you, I thought it was in, but so, so close. Maybe if you'd have green-timed it, could we have seen it going in? Who knows, but end-to-end -end stuff here. I don't even know who's going to get the first goal here. Well... There's another chance for GBX Esports. Now, their icon of choice is Pele in this one. There was a number of squad restrictions to follow ahead of building these teams. That included one icon outfield. Your goalkeeper doesn't count, so there'll be people thinking, oh, wait, wait a minute, they've got Petacek and they've got Pele. You are allowed any goalkeeper you want within these restrictions. But outside of that, it's one icon of choice. And to be honest, across these different regional finals we've seen all around the world in Europe, naturally, it is very R9 dominant, uh, dominated because everyone wants him. Everyone can honestly afford him as well. And Bappe back to goal, does really well with the cancel of the skill move there to cut back inside. But over here we're seeing, especially on the Indian side, Yasebio starts. There is so many options you can use up front. Obviously, they are all different prices and they do have to buy these players themselves. So R9 is quite hard to get. But if you can't quite afford him, you can obviously go Pele or Yasebio. It just depends on choice. It comes, Petacek again punches that one away. And it's the first time we've seen a little bit of a sprinkle of Premier League mixed into a team. It's Jao Cancelo in on the left-hand side. De Bruyne also in that midfield trio, just making things click and, and tick across the board. And the goalkeeper of choice for the Indian side is Edwin van der Sar there. 
Question for you, Lisa. These two teams actually qualified for this match about two days ago. So we've had a lot of time to watch all the other games taking place in this FGS Open over the last two days. What do you think they would have been doing in preparation for this game? If I was in this situation, I'd be trying to get as many pro friendlies as possible because you can play division rivals, but it's just not at the same sort of level, in my opinion, as it would be if you played a 2v2 against a pro team. But in general, that's the only thing you can really do, of course. You can sort of work out when playing against pro, pro, who does what, who presses, who cuts the pass in lanes. And that's probably what they've been doing, of course, in these sort of scenarios, really. We've had a good 40 hours or so in the build-up to this one. Lionel Messi trying to get this attack going. It's a lovely dig ball into the box. It's easily manageable, though. Just name up. On Marquinhos. Easy defended, though. Nice little scoop turned. Opportunity to drive away. And Bappe driving forward for M42. Trying to punch into the feet of David Ginola, which is often a very efficient way and effective way. We've seen teams sort of build into the box. It seems that whether they set up in a 4-2-3-1 or a 4 triple 2 4 4 2 Get that ball into your strikers, ping it into their feet, so there's just no time for your opponent to react. Chance, he's onside, Pele! What a save! That is why you bat the big man and go in with Van der Sar. Great pass there, and you expect him to score from there, to be honest with you, but that's why you have Van der Sar in goal. He's just so tall, so wide, and he's able to save in them 1v1 situations. You know, this weekend we've seen a lot of goalkeepers. We've seen Van der Sar, we've seen Alisson making double saves, we've seen Donnarumma. It just depends on who's in the back for you, obviously. If you have Donnarumma, you're going to likely have Marquinhos. Just too keen off the mark, Mbappe there. We're five minutes away from half-time. This has been an exciting start to the Singapore regional final where we are going to be giving away spot number 11 technically from this FGS Open out of the 16 we will be dropping and the 27th spot for that team of the season cup as we said we've got a packed day of action three European regional finals times it green it was Mbappe that time sticking the hands of Petr Cech. but it's, it's it's quite interesting what Rachel was saying there about Crusher I think about a month ago or so didn't have a duo didn't even have a team to try and come into this tournament, but they've put their heads together. I believe there's a couple of other Indian outfits in there too. It's quite an exciting time for India in general. They just announced the uh, the recent uh, Indian e Super League, which is going to be massive for those guys. Let's have a look at the stats at half time. Sort of see where the ball has been, maybe in the possession side of things, because it's been a very even game, to be honest, Lisa. It's been end to end. I don't even know how there hasn't been a goal scored. We've seen a couple of great shots from either side that could have probably potentially gone in. It could be, in my opinion, 1-1 one, one, or maybe even 2-1. And you're seeing the use of the wings again. It seems to be, you know, the very efficient way to play on the side of Lukman. It's been very much messy down that right-hand side. On the other side, uh, we're seeing over here in terms of it's been Mbappe. Mbappe heavily involved, linking up with Kevin De Bruyne, who's had some unbelievable efforts from about 30 yards out in the game. Half-time here in our opener from Singapore. It is nil-nil. And I think at this point, you're thinking, who gets that first goal? It's going to be just a bit of a relaxer. There's a lot of nerves up for grabs. Been speaking to a lot of the teams that have fallen to bracket resets that were so dominant through Swiss, so dominant through the winners' bracket. Especially Trick T Sports yesterday. I was speaking to Kent, their manager, after they, in the nicest way, just got dominated by team makers, and they just said they were just nervous. That's the problem at this sort of level. There's so much on the line, 15,000, and for them, it's probably not even the money that's the problem. It's the, the April qualifier, but qualifying for that. And for me, that's why, you know, it's such a cagey game at the start of the game. It's nil-nil. You never really see many opportunities. And in this game in particular, we're seeing a lot of finesse shots, which we, which we haven't really seen over this weekend. I, mean, I was in shock to see Casa Esports yesterday. They were sort of the only team that were taking 30-yard-plus finesse shots. It was R9, Ginola, they all got a few. Mbappe is in the air. It's defended well. 50 minutes played. It's not only just a big game for the team of the season cup, though, in April. There is also $15,000 up for grabs that will be guaranteed if you were to win this brilliant ball around the corner. It was disguised well. The Marquinhos, who sort of seems like Mr. Reliable at the back, doesn't he, Marquinhos, of PSG? He's, he's a great player to use. We see him in a lot of teams. He's got the informed version. And he's, he's, for me, he's just the best. You know, I use his normal card in FIFA, but that, that card, he's just got, you know, he's got 83 pace and he's got 91 defending and he's quite tall as well. Mbappe cuts back, Messi's not there, Pele. And a chance to break it out in the end. 
as expected. As we said, the scenario is this. GBX are from the loser bracket. They need to win this first two-legged game to force the bracket reset, which we've seen so many times across these last few days. And don't get me wrong, it does make for an entertaining couple of legs of FIFA. However, this M42 team, they went 3-2 in Swiss. They didn't have the best Swiss record, but my motto's always been, I think many pros have been, it doesn't matter how you get through Swiss, it's just getting through Swiss and getting yourself into the knockouts. Yeah, definitely that. For me, in Swiss, it doesn't really matter if you go, you know, if you get as many losses as possible, as long as you get through that, because, you know, there are certain, you know, fine margins in these games, and each game is normally decided between one or two goals, and, you know, we've seen over the weekend that even the teams that didn't do as well in that Swiss, they ended up going on to win, so... Eusebio, Messi, cuts it back! Brilliant save! But the Jet, first time he's really been called into action. And it was David Ginola, the man that has been popping up with so many goals this weekend. He was denied by Petr Cech, and it was one of those. It was so close to the goalkeeper, but the Czech goalkeeper was the quickest to react. Such a great save as well, and five-star, five-star Ginola. Do you expect him to score from there? It was quite close to him, but I'd be quite hard done by not scoring there, especially with the great cutback. And it sort of feels like this year on FIFA 22, when you have those shots in the box, when you're really close to the goalkeeper, they just pull off these unbelievable saves. Hence why you see at times a finesse from distance, or you see a different type of finish, maybe even a, a low-driven in some ways. Because when you're in the box and you're so close to the goalkeeper, we've seen it so many times. Allison, Van der Sar, even Mark Contre to Stegen, just any goalkeeper that's sort of 89 above, 90 rated and above, just pulling off save after save, and it always seems to be reaction saves when players are anywhere in that six-yard box. Yeah, when looking for a keeper, you're obviously looking for a keeper that's got good reactions, and these Donnarumma's check and Van der Sar, they have such good reactions, and they're so tall as well, so in 1v1 situations, they can just be so big, and that's why we're seeing such great saves from them in these close-range shots. Messi, I thought he was on the side. He is on Neymar Mbappe. He is just, I believe, off the mark. We're going to jump into the pause menu very quickly. We can have an opportunity to look maybe at Edwin van der Sar as a goalkeeper in general. He has been pretty ridiculous, to be honest. And, and, and there's a reason why for that, Lisa. He is just unbelievable. Insane, as you see there. He's got 86 diving and kicking, which doesn't, you don't really need in FIFA, but reflexes, reflex, oh, sorry, I can't even speak right now, the, the um, reflexes for this keeper is insane, obviously. He's not using the um, prime version of him, he's using his baby, which is very interesting. I expected to see a more mid version of him, but he's still such a great goalkeeper. And Donnarumma on the other side, same thing. He's got such great, he's so tall as well. Yeah, and Petr Cech also, one of those icons that you see time and time again. It's time for some substitutions, I believe. It's David Neres that comes on, the Ajax man, and Kunku, Mr. Reliable in midfield. On the flip side, it's Corona. For Sanchez, Alfonso Davies will also come on. So, change for fullbacks. Where is that Alfonso Davies going to play? He's going to come into the midfield. It looks as if he will. He certainly can play there. He offers you a lot of pace, that rule breaker item. Yeah, he's been playing in quite a lot of teams recently, coming on in the midfield. We don't really see him come on at left back. He's strong, he's got the pace, and that's why people bring him on. Here comes M42 Esports. Trying to look for Eusebio. You can understand why he is the key man, the tallies man in the team. Everything has to go through the Portuguese icon. But it won't be the first time if this does end 0-0. We've seen plenty of 0-0s across this weekend. Eusebio driving forward. One of those players that's part of the five-star weak foot club, as we call it. Just off you. A level of unpredictability that you need. And Kunku, he's fresh off the bench. And Bappe. Final 10 minutes. Fancies a little passage of skill moves there. Just to buy him some more time. Xiao Cancela does well. It's M42 Esports on the break. Come back in Bappe. Marquinhos. Had to be sure not to dive into the tackle there. And he was just so good at just staying composed and staying on his feet. Great chance yet again. It's, it's end to end here. I'm not even sure who's going to end up winning this game if we maybe see a late goal here but it's interesting to see that Mbappe on the wing I mentioned it before obviously the main, main reason why he's used there is his pace his strength he's just big and he's able to get him behind very good dribbling as well and most of the time we see Ginola up front instead of Mbappe potentially the last roll of the dice for both of these two teams M42 win the ball back it's David Neres getting his first touch on the ball the Brazilian winger of Ajax he'll certainly inject his team with a lot of pace late into the game Final 
Two minutes plus additional time. Remember, there is a second length to come up in this one. Messi on amazing run of his own. Mbappe, again, defensively, you can't really fault GBX. They have been very, very solid, Lisa, in all areas of the pitch. They both have. They've been great defensively and attackingly, but unfortunately, still haven't got a goal between them. I think, to be honest with you, there could be a couple of goals for both of them. Maybe a 2-1, 1-1, two, one, two, one, but chance that just haven't been taken, really. Corona. Fresh off the bench, the FC Porto man, Pele, GBX! Oh, that was the best chance that they've had of the game. It came in the 91st minute. They do win a corner, which they will be allowed to play. Messi into the box, in the air! It's Mbappe! The star of the show, the star of FIFA 22! And it is the cover star of the game that steps up to score a goal. And it might have come in the last kick of the game. It might have come from a corner again. Corners 2v2 FIFA. We won't sharp about them because it's such a viable way to score, and that's a massive goal for GBX to take it to the next game. They need a bracket reset, Lisa. I mean, I think, in my opinion, against the run of play a little bit, but when you get in them corners, you've got, you've got to take your chances. You've got to be whipping it into the box, playing it short, and we saw that there. And I mean, great header into the back, back, back of the goal, to be honest with you. Yeah, and again, it was the warning shot before, before that that was fired. A brilliant save from the goalkeeper, sent us out to a corner. We'll look at the replay now. Lisa, talk me through this one, because the goal went in literally with the last kick of the game. Yeah, they played it short, and he whipped it into the box. And as you can see, the, he makes a run forward, and he's going to out-jump the, the player there. And as you see, he goes back in, right back into the goal. And to be honest with you, I actually think they probably should have scored the chance yeah. beforehand. It was such a great save. and. It's unfortunate for them to concede so so late on in that game. Yeah, well, the storyline is a little bit like this right now. GBX, the Malaysian duo, have to win this next game. They have to win the aggregate scoreline to force a bracket reset. And then we'll do it all over again here in Singapore. We're going to go to a quick break. Now, when we return, that question will be answered. We'll see you in a few minutes' time. My striker is in between or behind two defenders and I'm giving a little double tap pass. You will see the ball goes up so it won't be intercepted by the defenders and I will have a good chance to score a goal. Hi guys, I'm Levy. I'm a FIFA eSports player for Ajax. I'm also the champion of the playoffs of last year and I'm here to give you a FIFA 22 passing masterclass. First I will teach you how to use the lofted through ball. It's really important, especially when, when you're countering and there's a lot of space behind the back line of your opponent. As you can see, I will pass it to the first striker, my left striker, and my second striker is running in the space when you're free with the keeper. My central midfielder is having the ball, and I'm already triggering my striker to go deep. He's going into space, and this is one of the most important things about the love to true ball, because I will know he's going into the space, but my opponent isn't so far yet. At this moment, I will give a, a pass to my left striker, and as you can see, my opponent is switching as well to his right center back to cover the pass to my left striker. And I will give the love to true ball by using L1, R1 and triangle. About two or three bars, depends on how much distance the ball has to take. My striker, who, who is already in full pace and having the free space to go with the keeper and score and goal. Okay, so the second thing we will talk about today is the driven pass. The driven pass is one of the most important things in FIFA 22. So let's break it down. As you can see in the clip, I will send my striker into space. I will give him a love to true ball and he is one on one with the defender. I'm running down the line with my left striker and I'm cutting it back. At this moment, a driven pass is the perfect solution with an R1 plus X. If I was to use a normal pass, the pass will be too slow and too easy to read. That's why I'm using a driven pass, which is much harder and much more accurate and it's easy to tap in afterwards. The last thing I want to talk about is something us pros are using a lot, which is the double tap pass. My striker is in between or behind two defenders and I'm giving a little double tap pass. You will see the ball goes up so it won't be intercepted by the defenders and I will have a good chance to score a goal. Let's break it down. In this clip you will see that I'm having the ball around the box with one of my striker and the other striker is inside the box behind the defenders. I'm giving the double tap pass here because it will avoid the defenders to intercept the ball and it also will pop the ball a little bit up and give you a, a perfect uh, chance to volley the ball which makes it easier to score the goal. Okay guys, that's all. That's my FIFA 22 passing masterclass. I hope it will improve your game and I will see you all on the pitch.
Well, welcome back to the FGS Open presented by PlayStation 5. We're bringing you the Singapore Regional Final. Myself, Brandon Smith and Lisa Manley bringing you the call of this game as well. The halfway point was a 1-0 lead for Team GBX, the Malaysian duo, making it difficult for M42 Esports, the Indian side. And the goal came, Lisa, with literally the last kick of the game. It was a shot that was fired in the ball, went out for a corner. Corner came into the box, Mbappe rose the highest, and uh, I mean, that's the only difference in this game so far. It could have easily ended, though, nil-nil. It could have ended nil-nil. It also could have ended 1-1, one, 2-1, one, one, but, you know, GBX getting in a goal in that last minute, they're going to be delighted, which gives them a bit of boost of confidence coming into this game. One goal, although it can take a couple of minutes to get another goal for the other team, but... They'll be delighted to be one and up in this. Well, as we said, GBX had a brilliant Swiss record. They went 5-0 and a couple of days back now. But then when they went into the, the winner's bracket, they did fall down quite early on. But they're in a position now where they have to win this game. If they win the game, a bracket reset happens again. And in terms of M42 Esports, they might have not have had the best Swiss record. Winner's bracket, they've been untouchable. They've had so many big results. They've cruised all the way through. But... What we've already seen across these last couple of days, Lisa, is when you're losing the regional final, it does shake you and it does shake teams. It makes you lose your confidence. And some often, as we've seen across these last couple of days, do not know how to react, as this will be the first chance of the game for M42 Esports. What a block at the back that will be. What a block indeed. That could have been another goal there. But, I mean, in general, I think it's been end-to-end. -end. Even in the last leg, we didn't know what was going to happen. And... So far, they're, they're, they're starting off really, really well here. It's been that signature sign. It's De Bruyne! Involved in everything! The first time we've really seen him pop up in these regional finals. And De Bruyne with an outside the boot finish. How about that one? Time to green, time to perfection. And that's the goal they need to bring them all square. De Bruyne, of all people, to be scoring from there, you know, he has he has got such a great shot. 88 shooting, I, I think I saw there. Oh, and my he has a oh, my God, you know, look, it could be two. It, whoa, it should have been two. We didn't even get time to mention the last goal. We had another opportunity there for Ginola. And to be honest, if you're in that position, five star, five star, you expect him to be scoring there. But they'd be quite hard done by there. But they are, they have got an extra goal now. And within nine minutes, they could have been two goals up instead. I mean, it wasn't time firstly. And then number two, it wasn't even on target from David Ginola. You expect more from him. End to end game, into the box, it will go. Messi against Jao Cancelo in the air. I think you know who's going to be winning that battle. But what a start to this game. 1 1 is the score on M42 Esports. If they were to win this, they would be crowned your regional final winners. They would be on their way to the Team of the Season Cup. And more importantly, India would have representation for the first ever time on a LAN major tournament as part of the FGS competitive season. What a storyline that would be. Here they come again. Messi, is he on side? Yes, he is. Driving down the byline, looks for the cutback. And very nearly won a corner for his side. Just want to mention how well they have started this half for uh, M42. You know, they. Last, last game, they didn't really get the many opportunities that, in my opinion, the keeper couldn't have saved. And so far, they've had so many opportunities so far, too. Pele, this is nice. Asked a bit too much of Mbappe that I haven't seen too much of Pele so far in the game in terms of his involvement. But it does sort of feel like if you're not choosing R9, nine times out of ten, it is Pele that, that will be the second choice in your team if you can afford him, of course. Yeah, exactly that. R9's 10 million coins to buy on the market, which is quite a lot of coins. But most of the time, if they can't afford them, like you said, Pele, sometimes you say, we haven't really seen many cross, but he is a very good card to use in FIFA. Very interesting choice of, uh, choice of pass there, sorry, from Neymar. Back to Atal. That is Yusuf Atal in a fullback. Sort of feels like if you're looking to link in Liga 1 into that team, it's going to be Hakimi or Yusuf Atal that's in there. Both of you quite a lot in terms of pace going forward, but Yusuf Atal a little bit more. Nice scoop turn from Mbappe. This is M42 Esports looking to build. Do not give De Bruyne the time after he just did. Messi back to goal, left or right. Where's he turning? Trying to twist and turn. Fortunately, can't get past. That GBX defence who will run forward with numbers. Defended well again. End to end stuff here, and to be honest with you, M42 have started so sharply going forward. And just want to mention that De Bruyne chance. I mean, would you would you expect to shoot from there with him? We, and we know the finesse shots are really OP this year, but 
green time and it just whipped into the back of the net and gives them a huge boost going into this game. We did see them do it in the first game, didn't we? They hit the bar, it was an effort that wasn't timed, but it still hit the bar and, and you sort of in that moment, you think if it was time green, where, where was that ball going to end up? Probably in the top corner, but what a goal that was. We're going to have to see that back again in a replay a little bit later on. It was outside the boot from De Bruyne, it was time green and it was one of those that you could watch all day long on repeat, time and time again. And what a way for them to be brought back into this time. It sort of feels like he's just rejuvenated them a little bit, Lee. So they seem really up for this one now, and they have not taken their foot off the throttle. Most of the time when you, you go into the next leg, 1-0 down, you know, you're not confident at all. You, you think to yourself, well, you know, I'm beaten so far, but I've just lost the last leg. And they've obviously spoke to their coach and they've given him a, a boost of confidence to say, you know, you're unbeaten in the upper bracket. You can do this. And we saw that in this leg. They started off so well. Here comes the duo of Luke Moon and Akmal. Two very good players had a really exciting FIFA 21 season last year, both individually and as a duo. Perlai, heel to heel, he's been quiet so far. Can we see him come to life now? Again, it's managed just about by M42 Esports, but back on that point for GBX. They obviously made it to the E-Club World Cup last year. They both had success as well. Their players qualified to East Asia champion was Akmal and Lukman, who's got a very strong fan base and community probably watching this from all around the world at the moment. He was qualifier number three champion back in April last year. Messi from distance! Oh my days, they are absolutely loving that finesse on the edge of the box. It doesn't matter who it's falling to, Mbappe, De Bruyne, that man on your screen. And you can understand why. He's got a 93 long shot, Lee, so he can put them in from distance. 93 shot power as well, and he greened it as well, so the chance of that going in with that much power on the shot as well, it's always going in. You can't be giving him time in them positions. Even just Messi, we just saw there, whipped it on his left foot. You've you got to close him down quicker because otherwise, we've seen one go in, we could see another one go in, especially if they green it as well. And I think the one thing I've loved on top of that as well is just how they haven't always fallen back on that from distance. They know they're going to get the time because they're naturally, the, the two centre midfielders are sitting a little bit deeper in front of that back line. They're going to give you the space on the edge of the box. You can get the right players in those areas. You can cause damage. Messi on the edge of the box there. Didn't really even time it. Goes to show, though, how deadly they can be going forward. I still look back at that damage. You know the chance nine minutes in that they had and how that didn't even go on target. They don't get anything from this game. They'll be looking back at that chance, thinking we should have done more with it. They will be devastated that that chance didn't go in, especially with Vivian five-star, five-star in that position. It should be going in. Well, here's GBX with Neymar. Looking to drive his attack forward. Dion, Pele, what have you got? Mbappe back to goal every single time. They're on the ball, though. They've just got two or three men around them. Let's jump into the half-time stats now to have a little look at that. In terms of the shots coming in, I think more importantly from this M42 Esports team, they have been getting quite a few away. Three shots they've had so far in this game. And I mean, they haven't been bad efforts. Look at where they're coming from. All of that sort of, they're looking for that finesse pretty much nine times out of ten. They're looking for that finesse indeed. And M42 started so well in this game. You can see that in the shots. They've had three shots. Could they have had more, more goals? In my opinion, they should probably have scored at least two of them. And that would put them in a winning position. But they're definitely the dominant side. They've just got to stick together. And as you mentioned, you know, even if you have the two best players last year that played well together in their region, it doesn't mean that they're going to play well together. 2v2 is completely different. You know, you've got to work well as a team. You've got to press together. If one person presses and the other person doesn't, there's a huge gap in behind. And sometimes we see that where there's massive gaps and they end up getting that extra pass into them with a driven pass and then they end up conceding because of it. So they've just got to be careful and work well together. I mean, on paper, in terms of a duo, they will definitely be the stronger two. It's Sanchez from distance, little roulette on the ball, why not? from the Portuguese midfield. There is a lot of Portuguese players in both of these teams. The Jallo at the back alongside Jao Cancelo who's in there. Very heavy in terms of Portuguese presence, but that's what they're looking for. The links obviously to stick these leagues together. Exactly, like normally we see the Jallo and Marquinhos and sometimes we obviously see Hakimi, sometimes it's a towel depending on if you want a towel for that dribbling that he's got and the, the more pace. But in general, you know, we're seeing different links we're seeing Serie A yesterday we sometimes saw so today we're seeing a bit, little bit of Prem but you know we got Cancelo and actually both teams which is interesting because we haven't really seen him much this weekend and you know the reasons to use him is because he's so he's got 88 pace and he's got good dribbling if you want to go forward you know some of these might have overlap on their left backs and right backs to give him a little bit extra going forward and that's why in my opinion you might use him 
That's a brilliant ball. Ginola does well. Yesebio! Brilliant save from Pejek. Everything was right. It was a time green finish from the only icon in the team that they've got. And they couldn't have done anything more right there. Corner played short. Watch that back post. Mbappe whips it in, heads it away. Does Pele, of all people, who's back defending for his team. And now they could look dangerous on this counter-attack. If only they could have kept the ball for longer. Well won back from M42 Esports. Remember, they win this game. They will be on their way to the Team of the Season Cup in April. Messi from distance again. They're absolutely loving a time finish. And more importantly, a finesse on anyone's left foot. They love on the finesse, and that's, it's very interesting at this level because we haven't seen it much this weekend because it's quite predictable, and they're just getting given the time. And in my opinion, if, if I get given the time, I'm going to go try and whip it as well. And we just saw an opportunity in the box, and you know, green time, and it was still saved. So you know, they get quite a lot of luck, I guess. Not even luck. They're trying to get that opportunity in the box, and I mean, they're getting it edge of the box, and they're actually scoring because of it. So they got to defend it a little bit more better for me. Horse comes in from Team GBX. Ginola will have time. Yesebio, brilliant block again. Sort of really moving through the gears. Oh, M42 Esports. They know the opportunity on the line to be the first ever Indian team, 2v2 team, to really go the extra mile. To travel to London next year. To be amongst the 32 best FGS duo teams. In what will be an unbelievable tournament. They have to keep cool, though. They've had a lot of the ball, they've had a lot of chances, but they haven't been able to find the back of the net yet. One thing they've also got to be careful of as well is they're loving this finesse, but I think where they're overusing it a little bit too much now, it's becoming slightly predictable, hence why you're seeing Petacek maybe match a few more with a little bit of goalkeeper movement mixed into that. Yeah, as you mentioned, that's why we haven't really seen it much this weekend because it's really predictable if you keep keep doing it. Sometimes we see our CNM do other stuff to sort of make it less predictable, but all we're seeing at the moment is finesse shot after finesse shot. And like you mentioned, you know, when, when you know that's coming, instead of pressing them, you could just move your keeper. But, you know, if, if, you, if they want to be a little bit unpredictable, instead of finessing it, they could shoot far post because obviously if you move a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, you can just aim the other way and a chance of it going in if you green it. Yeah, it's a lot higher. The, the stats there, sorry, Lee. So it's zero shots they've had. Team GBX, that's got to change if they want to force a bracket reset. Time for some changes, though. And I hope those changes can make the all important difference. Corona comes on for Messi. Damas and Sanchez also have a change for them. It's Nkunku that comes on the side of M42 Esports. Pele does well. Neymar, it's a brilliant defensive clearance from Jao Cancelo. Because Edwin van der Sar was in no man's land there for a split second. You mentioned they needed to change something, and I mean, I don't know what they did at half time because, I mean, well, not half time in that pause, because they, they they paused it, they changed a few players on the pitch, and maybe they're, they're going a little bit forward, changing formation because they didn't even have a shot until just a minute ago. Whatever the change is, it's definitely woken up M42 Esports. They've just queued a pause now. Charon Jot there, team captain in the team, whose account this is on. Makes the pause, De Bruyne. He can't find the space, Renato Sanchez can. Where will that shot come in from? De Bruyne gets another spectacular from 30 yards out. That would be one hell of a way to send yourself to the team of the season cup and to bag yourself $15,000. And Kunku from distance, has he got options? I doubt he's going to be shooting from that far out. De Bruyne might though. Eusebio back to goal, tries to speed up the attack. Just about in possession, still went Pape. Tries to roulette his way out of danger. Oh, Messi would have been through there for a split second, but again, at times, they both matched each other up really well defensively. They've both been defending really well, and that's why we haven't seen too many goals over these two legs. But to be honest with you, the dominant side is definitely with M42 Esports. But one, all it takes is one chance, and we saw that there with GBX, and they probably should have scored. Davies, he's fresh. Off the bench, will be causing havoc in this one. L chance back inside. It's a gift, Pele, surely someone, Mbappe. Anyone on that, Pele got the last touch. But it still just wasn't enough. That pause has been queued for a good 15 in-game minutes now from M42. I mean, they'll be lucky to get it before extra time if we're heading that way. But another golden chance gone. It was just a pile up in the box. And are we going to see some late magic into this one? A goal that would be worth $15,000. A goal that would send them to the team of the season cup. It has to be perfect though, Mbappe. And Kunku out this left-hand side, needs to get that ball into the box, needs to find more options in support. Isabio will try and tee that run. It's back to De Bruyne. 
who does well to get the ball down, but not well enough. Alfonso Davies will pickpocket him there. Another big win from João Cancelo. Mbappe back to Nkunku, surely not from you. The French midfielder is working wonders on this left hand side. Mbappe back to goal. And it comes to nothing in the end. Another massive win. João Cancelo has been superb in at fullback. They're going to try and get this last opportunity now. And as they lose the ball, is there a chance for the other team? No, they won the ball. Another big win. Every Another time. big win here, Brandon. And they're going to try and now keep the ball, try and get that last opportunity, because if they give away the ball like they did there, sillily, there could be a chance that they end up conceding later on. As they go forward here. Well, well, well. Last roll of the dice for this Indian team, that I can assure you. I've got fans all over the world watching these right now. Mbappe. Does well, Roulette and Mbappe still superb defensively from Mark Quinos. And we need 30 more minutes to find out where on earth we're going in this game. We'll have a look at the possession stat if we can to see where the ball has mainly been in terms of the heat map on this game so far. Because they've had so much of it. I mean, you can understand who has had more of the ball, Lee. So look at that on the right-hand side of your screen. Exactly that. They've been using Messi quite a lot down that right-hand side there. and. They've had a lot of the ball as well. They've, they've obviously had six shots as well, which, to be honest with you, they probably should have scored a few more of the chance they've had. But, you know, we've seen a, quite a lot of green time shots being saved from in and around the box. But one goal we have, they have scored. But that De Bruyne, that was a great goal from outside the box. And, and look at the last 30 minutes in that game. The possession they had for, for, the, for the sort of second third of that 72% possession, last 15, 65% possession. They have been on top of this. GBX Esports teams that need to wake up right now. You're looking at two players that are really experienced, and Akmal and Lukman, but they just have not got going in this final. They're the team that need to win this to force a bracket reset, which at the moment, M42 have been on top. The way they've been winning the ball back has been incredible. They've been able to create a handful of chances, but the one thing they're missing, Lisa, is a big goal. And more importantly, just getting that ball into the back of there a couple of times. Mbappe tries to string it past together. It does find David Neres, though, in the process of the ball, just sort of bouncing around. Here is the young Ajax player. Mbappe. Who will he look to just look off to? In Kunku will do well there. David Neres. Still heavily in possession. Still got Messi on the field. Eusebio's there as well. They're all lining up on the edge of the box for the chance. Akimi from full, but that's a risk because there's a massive gap now on that right-hand side. Massive win. That's one thing they've been so good at, just not giving their opponent any time on the ball when they're trying to have an attack. They're pressing really well here, and there could be a chance here. Oh, that's a ball. Could be a chance. No! Martins, of all players, he was fresh off the bench. He just passed it to the goalkeeper. I can't believe that. What a great ball as well. And was he expected to get to him in the end? Maybe not because of the shot that he had, but pressure is on here. And it's actually end to end. I don't know who's going to end up taking this, but you don't want it to go to penalties either side or not. So they're going to want to try and get the goal before the end of the half and obviously in the next half. But it's great to see that from these two. They're just both pressing forward really well. And especially m 4 too. Every time they lose the ball, they're literally pressing both together at the same time and just making sure they have no time on the ball. And that's why they haven't had many shots. Well, they get the last chance of this final 15 in extra time. David Neres, because he's got an amazing run of his own. The young Brazilian finds Mbappe's feet, reverse Elastico. Mbappe still looking to bring others into this attack. And he's used for Tau of all players to come all the way from fullback to win it back. This is an area of the pitch where I'm quite excited to see now. You've got very tired legs in terms of Hakimi. The Jala, you've got Fresh Martins on the pitch, cut back, charge, brilliant save! Another block at the back! It's absolute carnage there, but they live to fight another day to M42 Esports, and with 15 minutes left, we're all still square at 1 1. A vital save there, and as we can see from the stats, six, six shot, shots now for each of them, it's such a close game, and great save again from the goalkeeper. I mean, should they have scored that? To be honest with you, they probably should have, and it was a great block as well from the defender, but. I don't even know which way this is going to go. You can see the XG stat in their favour in terms of GBX because all the ball's been in the box. It's been six-yard box and it's just been a case of we've all been there as players, the button jam. You know, look, look all their chances where they've been. They've been in the box. The problem is they've had no time to react. Body, you can see the shots. Four shots of those six have been blocked. They haven't been able to manoeuvre in those sort of areas. On the flip side, the, the XG 
is a lot lower for M42 is because they have been taking chances that are maybe not a 90% chance of going in. Maybe it's a 75, 80% chance of going in. But if they time it green, anything can happen. To be they're just trying to walk the ball into the goal and get it into that position, like you mentioned, to get them more of a chance of scoring. But just have a couple of finesse shots. You never know where it's going to go. And we've seen that in this, these last couple of games. We've seen quite a few finesse shots go in and around, hit the post, hit the, hit the bar. And most importantly, we saw the De Bruyne bang one. Well, it's a little bit like this, as we said. M42, the side in green, if they win this game, they will be your regional final winners, and they will go to the team of the season cup. If this team in possession now, GBX, find a winner, a bracket reset will be on the cards. We'll play again for two more legs. And it sort of feels like the players swung back to the Malaysian side as they come forward again. Pele could be through, brilliant save, he was offside anyway. The Van der Sar was quickest to react, and if he wasn't there, that would have been a certain goal for Pele. We're seeing some great saves in these games. It just shows you that there's so many different varieties of keepers you can use in FIFA. Czech, Van der Sar, Donnarumma, Alisson are the ones we've seen this weekend. And in this, in this game in particular, Van der Sar has been on fire. Well, well, well. Here we go. Final five minutes. Chance. This could be the chance. Pele! He's back defending, Eusebio's in the box. David Neres just gets confused in what he's looking to do. Massive win, this could be again for M42, it's Neres. Again, it's another bad pass. Lucky enough, Eusebio's there to save the day. Chance, Neres, last chance to lose for India. Neres! It might be ugly, but the whole of India do not care right now. This is one for the history books. M42 Esports are minutes away from making history, not only for themselves as FIFA players, but for their country as a whole. David Neres, since he's been on the field, he's been causing all sorts of problems down that right-hand side. And with the, the weirdest of deflections, that ball somehow ended up in the back of the net. Wow, GBX, to be honest, you're gonna be quite hard done by that, falling into the back of the net, but that does happen in FIFA sometimes. And Wow, I mean, last minute, we've seen it all the time, last minute winners happening, as you mentioned here, David, David Neres, you bring him on for that reason, the 92 pace, 93 acceleration and 92 sprint speed, you bring him on for that extra pace and as you can see, he's got 96, uh, 86 finishing as well and well, they ended up going in for him there. They just have to defend, that's all they've got to do, sounds a lot easier than it is, added time to follow, win the ball back and they're off to land in April next year. India will be there. M42 Esports will be there as well. They've played the time. It's game over. Mbappe can time that red all you want. The referee conclude the tie. And Singapore, that's your regional final concluded. It's Heartbreak Hotel for GBX Esports. The side that on paper would have probably been your favourites. But it's more good news for India in the FGS ecosystem. They will be your champions, two goals to one. And what a storyline that'll be. Maybe not the uh, the prettiest of goals to win with, but who really cares if you're a fan of those guys right now? A goal's a goal, and they're on the way to the team of the season come next year. What a story from them, of course, being the first time to ever make a major event. And I mean, what a way to score it as well, but they don't care that they're in there. They've got that goal and congratulations to them. Massive, you know, Crusher been in the scene for a long time, but more importantly, Charon Jot, who sort of really waved the flag for India ever since they've been involved in the FGS ecosystem. Let's have a look at that last goal again, Lisa. Talk me through it, because we've been speaking a lot about David Neres causing problems since he's been on the field. I mean, it was a terrible pass to start off with, but that happens sometimes with nerves in the minute of the game as well. And he got that extra touch there because he's got great dribbling. He sort of does really well as well in terms of trying to cut it back across that box. And we saw that, and unluckily for the defender, it just deflected off a little bit there, but they happen sometimes and they'll be delighted to go through there. Doesn't matter how it went in for them. Yeah, it'll be a massive, massive scenario for them as well. $15,000 guaranteed. You know, Crusher, as, as Rachel was saying, rightly so, didn't have a team about a month ago. Now he's got a team, not just any team, a team that is in the finals of that team of the season cup. They'll be travelling to London next year, fingers crossed, and they'll be part of that 32. It's a massive achievement for them, and it goes to show what a run in the bracket they can have. They only went three and two in it, Lisa, but they are your winners overall. And that is a wrap from us all here in Singapore for the regional final. For now, though, it's a wrap from us both. It's back over to you, Rachel.
Yeah, thanks, Brandon and Lisa. And apologies if you heard me screaming to the side of them when they were commentating. I got a bit excited there, Mike Lavelle, when that kind of looked like an own goal worked in. Let's just talk about that final goal. I know Brandon and Lisa just broke it down, but it looked like they were super nervous. It was such a messy build-up play, wasn't it? Kind of didn't really know what they were doing there. And then they just did everything possible to try and find the net. And it finally went in, Mike Lavelle. Um, your thoughts on that? India, first ever team to get to a LAN event, making history in the process. Uh, I'd love to say it was laid in great, uh, but <laughs> no. it was laid in a little bit sloppy, but it all counts the same. And in moments like that, we talk about it constantly, but there's a lot of tension, there's pressure. It's a battle of the nerves. And that's kind of what this was. You have a mistake on the defensive end. You have that overlapping run, goes into space, lays it off across the just the right area of the box. To be fair, if it doesn't get deflected, if you don't have that own goal, it's going to get tapped in. Uh, but it's not the easiest on the on the eyes. Let's let's call a spade a spade or a heart a heart. <laughs> I mean, Mike, what was the other option? There wasn't any space, was there, in and around the box? It looked like he was going to try and do a driven pass, but there was nobody to pass to. So it was just hoof the ball and see what happens. What would no, you have done? No, it was good decision making, Rachel. Okay. Good decision making. No, he made the right decision. Like I said, if that doesn't get intercepted and end up being an own goal, uh, offensively you're just tapping it home. So. You got to do what you got to do here. Uh, everything was proper decision making. The, the big portion of that sequence that shifted the, the, the game plan was really the takeaway on the defensive end that started that. There was a mistake out of the back. They capitalized. They transitioned offensively and they capitalized again with being able to make that pass across. Yeah, sure. It's not the prettiest goal, but I, I, it was deserved in, in that moment. A goal is a goal and it sends them through, so it doesn't matter how it is scored. A word, though, Mike, on GBX Esports, ranked number one, of course, coming into this. The Malaysian duo, what did you make of them? Obviously took it to extra time, couldn't quite go to penalties, couldn't quite get a bracket reset. Well, I said this on day one. Anyone that's making it to this point in the 2v2s, this is a brand new form of competitive FIFA. You should really pat yourself on the back. Uh, you've achieved a lot to get here, and now it's going to be a matter of what you can build uh, going forward. Yeah, totally. Well, these are the goals then. There was two of them, weren't there, in leg one and two. And then we had to wait all the, all the way to extra time to get that decisive goal. But a lot of chances as well. And I think it was in extra time, Mike, when there was that epic save. I think 107 minutes. We'll wait to see that possibly in a short while. But there was a, a last-ditch goal, wasn't there? On... The 90 uh, what minutes. I was, what I was going to say is, as, as a trend, Rachel, and that, that we're probably going to continue to see in these 2v2s, a lot of the affairs are lower scoring, but they're not lacking offense. You see that beautiful uh, outside of the boot, just finesse shot, just absolutely gorgeous. Goalkeepers are making saves. Deflections are happening. We're having a lot of manual blocks. You got a little bit of some AI blocks. You got the post being hit, crossbar, you name it. It's all happening. A lot of bouncing around inside the box. And I just think it's a, a new element that we've seen a lot more in 2v2s because you can move more players at once. Yeah, yeah, a lot of chances, like you said, from, from both teams in this matchup. Couldn't get a decision though, could we? And then this, I think, was possibly the, the great save I was talking about. To keep it one all and to force it to that goal. The one we were talking about, a little bit messy, but it was the goal that decided the result in the end and sends that team, the Indian team, M42 Esports, through to April. Uh, Mike, let's have a quick chat then through one of the goals that you possibly analysed. Where are you picking this one from? Which one is it? We are easily looking at the best goal throughout that matchup and this long distance finesse shot. It's something that we're going to see as a continuous trend. If you have passive defending or even in the midfield, they're not tracking back, you don't stop the ball, you're going to punish them for being indecisive. And it's just a gorgeous animation. You got to love that. Outside of the boot, the movement, the curve, the trajectory, everything is just mm, 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 mm. good. <laughs> good to go. And that was obviously to get M42 back in it as well. Obviously, they were on the back foot, even though they're in that winner's bracket. Mike, talk us a little bit about their mentality there. They were, you know, one goal down and they didn't give up, did they, all the way through to get that perfectly worked goal, like you just said. It was actually flip-flopped uh, in terms of the, the team ordering. Yeah, the goal was necessary. You had to have that in order to, to push onward here and get your equalizer and then go into extra time, of course. There we go. Well, Mike and me are going to say goodbye for about two minutes because we're going to a break. When we come back, we'll head to Europe and Milan for their Open. See you in a sec.
Welcome to my master class. えー、皆さんどうもこんにちは、えー、ブルーユネイテッド EFC 所属、えー、プロプレイヤーのアグです、えー、今回は、えー、フォーメーションの紹介をしていこうかなと思います、えー、紹介するフォーメーションは4231で戦術と、えー、指示についても紹介できればなと思いますでオフェンスのスタイル、えーバ,えー、ビルドアップはバランス、えー、チャンスメイクもバランスに設定していますこちらも守備同様4231はもともとこのフォーメーションの配置がいいので、えー、両方ともバランスに設定していいかなと思います。で幅、えー、30, PA の侵入は7で、コーナーキック、フリーキックは2に設定しています。幅が30な理由は、えー、ショートバスでポンポン繋いで、えー、攻めれるようにで、PA の侵入7に設定しているは、えー、今作理由、えー、クロスが強いのであの7に設定しています。このシーン、相手からボールを奪って、一気にショートカウンターを仕掛けるシーンですね。でこのように今作、前にスペースがあったら、フライスルーパスが強いので、迷わず出してあげることをお勧めしますで。中に折り返してシュート。このようにショートカウンターが結構強いようなフォーメーションになっているので、まあ、取った後、孫文民をダッシュパスゴーで走らせて、トップ下の、えーあワントップの選手に預けますで。トップ下を経由してあげて、一気に走ってたその上にパス。まあ、このように前線に、えーえー、4枚残っているので、えー、ショートカウンターもかなり、えー、強いフォーメーションになっています。はい、えー、以上が、えー、マイマスタークラスになります。えー、皆さんもぜひ4231強いので、えー、試してみてください。えー、それでは皆さん、えー、ピッチでお会いいたしましょう。バイバイ。And final day of the FGS Open presented by PS5. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, well, we've just been to Singapore. Actually, we're in London, but you know, we get around over here in Singapore. Open finished like this. Let's get the result then. M42 2-1 over GBX in extra time. It was dramatic, but it does mean we have the first ever Indian team qualifying for a LAN event. Congratulations once again to M42. Awesome job for those two in that duo. Okay, where are we going next? Change on! Oh, it didn't really work. <laughs> Turn on a LAN, here we go. And Mike, we're going to Europe now. I am magic sometimes. Okay, let's go over to uh, Milan. Oh, look how beautiful it looks before we get into this one. Let's have a look at some scenics from that city where we'd love to be, but we're not, we are here. There we go. Let's talk about what we've just seen though. In that losers bracket final, Mike LaBelle, we just had a 10-7 scoreline. I mean, that's something that we haven't seen happen so far over the course of the three days. Venezia Esports have a team fortune getting the job done there, um, which shows it's a massively attacking team heading into this winner's final. The fact that they've just played like that They're now going to step up, of course, when they meet UT7. They played them on day one, didn't get 
Well, actually, they did get the result there, 6-5. So they know they can beat them. How would you say they're going to approach this second time of playing them in a couple of days? Uh, well, I hope their approach play includes some additional manifestation of offensive activity. <laughs> Me too. That's a lot of wordplay there. I didn't know that I was going to come out like that. But <laughs> I, when you get an opportunity to see that many goals, that means the play is open. That means both sides are playing aggressive. And if we could reenact that now in a regional final, I would be here for it. I would co-sign it. I would like to promote it if there's something that I can sign. If you have a petition for all-out offense, I'm on board. Put me on that. Uh, put me on that flight. Put me on that boat ride. Whatever it may be, I'm riding. I'm on the ship. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we're going to have a look at those highlights. I said it was a 10-7 in the end. Of course, it was 7-7 extra time. Then we went to penalties, which we absolutely love. So we're going to run in a couple of these highlights now from this matchup. Here we go. So it was a, uh, yeah, a lot of goals, like Mike Lavell said. Very open in terms of. We're going to be here for a while, Rachel. Two teams. We got time. We got time. Ronaldo opens up with a, just a beautiful finesse shot. And we are seeing a lot more of the finesse shots. Extra passes made. Again, R9. Who else has to be R9? You see the player movement here in the supporting runs. Remember, you could find that space really well in a 2v2. You can use a lot of dummy runs. Back post, first time cross, of course, another Golasso. They are making exchanges. Three all, Mbappe finds the inside. We got that low driven pass placement, simple goal. At the end of the day, FIFA is still a simple game. You gotta have a master of the intangibles. The ball roll into the scoop, uses just a tad bit of additional space there. Able to lay it off, swings it from the corner kick, Eusebio. I like to see the return of Eusebio. There was a couple years that he was definitely in the highest tier, at least at the competitive level. And then a couple years that he was out of the rotation just slightly. And we saw Cruyff step into space to a certain degree and the likes of both the Ronaldos, of course, and Mbappe side touches. One, two, you see it, some pressure play. And this is what we saw, mistakes. Can't have these mistakes, the extra pass is made. Again, R9 takes second, buries it, doesn't go across the body, waits for the goalkeeper movement. You see goals galore. Like I said, I'm promoting it. We have our regional final. I want to co-sign it. I want to double up on it. I want more of it. Good morning. Welcome. 9 a.m. New York City. I'm telling you, I'm ready for the petition. We'll go to Milan together. I'll book a flight. He's ready. He's bringing all the good energy over there. Uh, Mike, I've just had a look at the tweets as well from UT7, the team that Venezia are going to face. Danny and Fabio make up that duo. And Danny, the e Serie A champion from FIFA 21, he tweeted out, actually, we've got a great chance because we have a great team with great chemistry. So the fact that he's actually talking about this chemistry between the two means possibly... They're one to watch. They've obviously been practicing together. Should Venezia be worried about that? I don't think any of the teams are worried at this point. If you're in the, the regional final, you've been playing great. You've been playing extremely well. Uh, you, you figured out the 2v2. You're not here by accident. And I just want to see them battle it out. And I, I can't stop the message right here. I'm telling you, I'm whispering. I'm shouting. I want more of the offensive. I want, I want to see that, that, that nasty back and forth. I want that expression. I'm here for it. We can get some uh, you know, fluent Italian back and forth as well. Maybe throw in an interview, make some phone calls. <laughs> well, Mike Lavelle is absolutely pumped for the Milan Open when it gets underway. You guys at home, I'm sure, are excited about that as well. But if some of you at home think you have a few skills, then this is a tournament you should be entering, OK? So PlayStation have a couple of tournaments happening a weekly, as you can see there. And it's just a chance for you guys to, I guess, test yourself and get some prizes in the meantime. They could be obviously in-game assets or even some cash prizes as well. On the screen, you can see how to register there, compete.playstation.com. It's really a great chance for all you up and coming FIFA pros to try and really establish yourself and, and get some competitiveness under your belt. I think that's pretty key, Mike LaBelle. Can you remember back in the day when, when you were playing, Mike, uh, how did you get that experience? Were there opportunities like that available for you? Don't age me. Don't age me. We're we got, uh, age, we got started. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> when we got started uh, competing, there wasn't the same type of ecosystem yeah. or competitive calendar. So a lot of it was kind of hoping for tournaments to happen. We always had the FIFA Interactive World Cup that, of course, has now turned into the FIFA E-World Cup. 
And uh, I love to see the growth. And a lot of the the young kids that are out there competing now, when we're looking at the 16, 17, 18 year olds, all the teenagers, they have no idea the battle it took, but it, it is all about getting experience, getting reps and being ready for those moments. Because at the end of the day, often what separates the wins and the losses, especially at the highest level is eliminating those mistakes and then taking those, those big chances or, or being confident when you need to be confident. Because at the, at the highest level, you don't necessarily get a bunch of open play. I know we just talked about all the offense. We've seen a lot of games that came down to one, two, three chances in a matter of what you did with them. Yeah, there are some great opportunities, like Mike just said. Now for you youngsters at home to get involved. And actually, Mike was a big part of making those happen as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to big you up, Mike. Uh, right, anyway, enough of us. Let's head over to Chris and Lisa Manley for the Milan Open. We're very much looking forward to this one. Thank you very much, Rachel. I'm very excited to get into this game alongside Lisa. Of course, my name is Chris Tone, and we are in to the Milan segment. The European trifecta, as Mike Labella is calling it, and we're excited to see how it comes out. Many people will be looking at these regions. You're talking Milan, you're talking Paris, et cetera, et cetera. This is where a lot of people think some of the really good teams are going to come out and challenge some of those master teams. However, you know, it's not done yet. These players still have another step to go. And we're excited to see who is going to come out on top on this one. And it's been an interesting bracket, you know, backwards and forwards between some of these teams played each other already as well. And I'm interested to see what kind of style we're going to see from these teams. Are we going to see lots of goals by the looks of the losers bracket final? That seems so. I'm just interested, though, I, you know, in, in terms of what kind of FIFA we're seeing, we're we expecting lots of goals here, Lisa. I think we are. As you saw there, the loser bracket, there was so many goals scored. Well, seven, seven or something along those lines in the end. It's it crazy. Something ridiculous. But, you know, in the last in the last time I commented, last game I did, there was so much tension. There was extra time. There was a last minute winner. Can we see that in this one? Yeah, that's it. We're into the last day. Albeit, you know, it's just different times that everybody's going to play at different days. But it is maybe getting nervy for some of these guys as we come to the business end of the weekend. They've had to sit and watch. They've had to play through some of their games as well, maybe a little bit later on than some of the ones that we've seen on Friday and Saturday, of course. But they've had to sit and watch, see what's going on in the 2v2, maybe picking up some uh, 2v2 tips. But, yeah, interested to see how things are going to break down here. But let's talk about the meta a little bit. You know, we, we expected things to maybe change change up a little bit in terms of with the Versus promo coming out and Player of the Month Vinicius out as well. Are we really expecting anything to come in? There's only maybe one or two players that could potentially challenge for some of these spots, but it's maybe chemistry that is the, the issue to maybe get somebody in like Jesus. Yeah, chemistry is a big problem. We've seen a lot of League One links going in with Atal, Marquinhos and Renato Sanchez and obviously links to Ginola and Messi, uh, Mbappe, sorry. But, I mean, you know, like you mentioned, maybe Jesus could come in for these teams. Maybe as a super sub, he has a million coins, so he is quite a lot. But he's 1.3, isn't he? He's, he's a, a, lot, a lot more yeah. than... I think he should be, but I mean, Vinicius Jr. you mentioned as well, he's about 800,000 coins, but we've seen how good he is coming off the bench for some of these players. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how many of them are using the player of the month. But we were talking again about midfield pair-ups, and we've seen quite a few in fairness, haven't we? We've seen the, the the standard kind of seems to be, well, Renato Sanchez is there every single time, which is which is the obvious. I'm curious if we see Annie Hullet today over R9, to be honest with you. I know a couple of the European pros have been talking about Hullet. Who would you rather in your team? If you could pick one, who would you rather have? For me, it's got to be R9. I yeah, mean, he's one of the be, best players in yeah. the game, especially going forward. And he's solo clinical with his way he shoots. You know, he's strong. He's five star, five star. Mm. I feel like in the midfield, you know, Sanchez is probably just as good as Hullet, in my opinion. <sighs> I don't know if he's just as good. He, he, but I, I, I think, you know, in terms of comparing what they could bring to your team, I think R9 just, for the most part, doesn't miss. And it depends what kind of player you want to be. But I, I think, you know, what we've seen from the midfield, typically we have seen Renato Sanchez in there for the most part. We've seen Kevin De Bruyne in there as well. It's just... There's so many different options. Draxler was in there as well. I think if you were to pick from any of the ones that you've seen in there this weekend, though, Renato Sanchez is the mainstay, of course. But we are eventually into this game. We're actually seeing Seco Fofana alongside Renato Sanchez in the middle there, so that's going to make things very, very interesting to get past. But here we go. It is going to be UT7 shooting from left to right and Venezia from right to left. Interesting to see how this game goes. I mean, can we see an early goal? It definitely does help their confidence if they can fire in one early, but I'm looking forward to this one. I'm hoping a couple of goals early on just to get a bit excited about, but how do you think it's going to go? Goals is what I'm hoping for, and we may well get one here immediately. Eusebio are trying to break through, but Janola was offside. I think it's going to be pretty standard in terms of the meta that we have seen. Look, we can see a towel there. 
Kind of been 50-50 between himself and Hakimi over the weekend for that right-back spot. It depends what you want to kind of do with your midfield as well, if you need that strong link to Messi or Mbappe. Speaking of Mbappe, here he is on the ball there now, trying to cut it back. Let's see if we'll deal with it, though. Quite the loser's bracket run that they have had after losing to UC7. So now find them in the position where they have to find the bracket reset. That switch ball is not going to find anything, though, but will. The pass, absolutely not. Atal now in the middle, plays it forward, well intercepted, and this one will now be played away by UT7. See Mendy in here, very typical. French link, just does well for Vinicius Jr. as well, if you want to set up on a 4-5-1, etc., etc. Plenty of good links and just a really, really solid team, as sort of meta as you would possibly want from both sides. Eusebio now for Farnett. No chances to speak about after 12 minutes, but I'm sure they will come. Atal into the feet, Mbappe. Back to Ronaldo Sanchez, building a little bit here. Good ball into Mbappe's feet, looking for a little bit of room. Fofana now goes for the green time himself. Not necessarily known for bending them in, but it's one of those moments where you sort of say to yourself, right, OK, we're going to have a go. And is that the sort of thing that we're going to see from Venezia for the rest of the game? I mean, in that position, you don't really expect you to shoot with Fafana. He's a great player in the midfield defensively and a little bit going forward, but you really want Messi in that position. But he greened it, so there is a chance of it going in. Fafana just about gets in the way. He's such a bully in the middle of the pitch. Just so hard to get past. I hate playing against him. I, I kind of wish I'd done him. <laughs> it's hard to link him at the same time, I suppose, if you don't have a plethora of ridiculous talent from League One. Mendy now forward to Ginola. Not going to quite work out, and that ball passed out is very, very well done. And it's actually broke the trap that we were trying to push up. Venezia were putting a lot of pressure on. Lorente will find Mbappe. Look at the run here from Neymar. But Mbappe's going to go himself. Oh! And it's an absolute disaster for Venezia. It was a really well worked chance. It's a really good strike, but the unfortunate moment where it bounces off the defender and into the back of the net, that's one that will make you sick. On the other hand, UT7 will be ecstatic that it went in. I mean, to be honest with you, the shot with Mbappe there, I mean, you kind of do expect that to go in, but it was a great save and it just bounced off the defender, which you don't really want to see. But like I mentioned for UT7, it's a great start from them and they'll be very excited going into the rest of this game, 1-0 ahead. UT7 will be very happy with that one. That little bit of luck sometimes, you know, it giveth and taketh, you never know. It could go the other way sometimes. It's just sometimes the thing that can happen, not just in FIFA or in football, you know, teams get unlucky. And that's just one of those moments. It's a good strike, defender, not aware, not controlled. And all of a sudden it's in the back of the net. But UT7, can they add anything else? They're on the winner's bracket side of things as well. So they can definitely play a little bit more passive here, Lisa. Yeah, they don't need to go forward. They're winning, like you mentioned. They don't need to rush it going forward because, like you mentioned, I mean, they're in a winning position. And even if they, if it, even if it was a closer game, one-one, they do ha have a fallback in terms of going into that loser bracket and playing another game. But you don't want to be doing that when you're in the upper bracket. You haven't lost yet. You're, you're on a great run. You don't want to be. You don't want to be. You know, going in and falling back into that last game because the pressure will be on you then instead. Fullbacks getting pushed up. Something that is becoming more and more. Usable, if anything, you know, a lot of people used to like to try and keep their fullbacks on, stay back while attacking. I don't know, I, I'm kind of mixing it up, but away from the fullbacks is David Ginola, one on one, got saved by front check. Kind of check finds the ball with his left hand. That's a big, big chance, though. Ball in from Renato Sanchez, can the answer straight away? Not quite, and Mbappe will get this one away. Huge chance, that Lisa. Massive chance, in my opinion, could he have gone a little bit closer there before shooting? Maybe could he have greened it, but it was a great save from Petacek. I won't be mentioned before. There's so many goalkeepers they can use. We're seeing Czech, Donnarumma. Oh, great ball, Nima! It's just out of nothing again. You don't track the run, you concede a goal. Nothing lucky about that one. Well worked. That's 2-0 to zero now. And Venetia have got it all to do. UT7 in the driving seat. You can see why they are in the winner bracket. They're so defensively solid attack they're just so clinical with them passes and driven passes into the players which is quite hard to defend against when it's fizzed in and as you saw there Neymar five star five star and such a great player going forward he's pacey he's got good shooting and as you saw there a great finish into the far hand side of the goal can they add more a third at this time in a 
two-legger. It's not necessarily done and dusted, but it will put you really in a comfortable spot. I think if you have an SEA, you really do need to concentrate on getting this next goal. 2-1, not so bad. 3, dangerous. At the same time, though, Lisa, I think, you know, as we said, there's plenty of time. Do they need to rush this? I, I don't think they do. Ginola now. He had a huge chance. He may have had one there had Renato Sanchez not closed him down, but the finesse doesn't come off and an opportunity for UT7 to break. Break indeed. They don't really need to rush it. You know, they're in a position where they're winning 2-0. They can just try and keep it and work the ball a lot more. Oh, Mbappe is in. Can he do anything with it? Goes to the chip. The deflection is eventually going to come out to a defender from the side of UT7. They will clear that one away. And UT7 have that lead of 2-0. But it has to be said, look at the expected goals. That's something you guys at home, when you're playing your games, it's the first thing you look at. And if you are the side of Vanessa, you maybe are a little bit scarred by that one. Two really, really good chances that I haven't been able to put away. To be honest with you, they both had really good chances this game, and UT7 have just put them in nicely. On the other hand, they haven't really, the other team hasn't really had opportunity where, you know, they need to just do a little bit better, maybe shoot from further in, because obviously they did have a few opportunities in and around the box where they, they just didn't take it nicely. Now an opportunity here for R9. UT7, if they can find another. That's a huge, huge moment. Ronaldo, ball in, and look at how deep they are. It's Messi inside the box. Could this be three? It is at the second time of asking. Three to zero. And Neymar finds the back of the net. UT7 in control. I mean, we did mention before the game, we thought we'd see a lot of goals, and I mean, we are, but we are seeing it from just one side in UT7. I think Vanessa need to defend a little bit better, but also they need to take their chances when they get it because they're getting quite a lot of opportunities. They've actually had more shots in this game than UT7, but they just haven't found the back of the net yet. So change is going to have to start coming on through here for Vanessa, but there's that in-form Neymar card causing so many problems. But UT7 have just taken their chances here, Lisa. They've taken them. We mentioned it, obviously, they both had four shots, but UT7 has found three out of the four shots they've had and put it in the back of the net, whereas on the other side, they've had four shots, and to be honest with you, they probably could have scored at least two of them, but they've been a little bit unfortunate, shot from a little bit further out than when they had a couple more touches to bring it into the box, but great saves nonetheless. And as you can see on the diagram of where they've been shooting from, UT7 have been shooting from in and around that little six-yard box, whereas on the other side, they haven't been shooting from in and around the mirrors, they've been shooting from a little bit further out, and could you say if they went a little bit closer, they could score? Let's see. It's now a little bit dangerous for the side of Venezia. It's getting into that territory of... It's very, very difficult to come back, isn't it? Very, very difficult. UT7 now, moving this one forward. If they can find another, then uh, this is game. You would surely expect. Three is pretty comfortable, four... Not quite unobtainable, but it makes it so, so difficult. Ronaldo now into the Felix Sabia. Fnatic just really not got anything going. There's no rhythm to their play so far. No rhythm indeed. I mean, they're unable to really get it into their star man on the edge of the, uh, on the, edge of the D. But, I mean, in general, you know, you need to be able to fit it into them positions to get your star men into the positions. You know, we've seen a few shots from outside the box from oh, different players. Ball. Mbappe is in here now. Could this be 4-0 to from Kylian Mbappe across? And it's just so well played from UT7. It's clinical every single time. They cannot stop scoring. Clinical from the UT7 boys. Venezia backs against the walls, 4-0 to zero down. First leg, it's not looking good at all. Great play there. You know, you mentioned it got into the Mbappe there, and you might think to yourself, actually, should I be shooting here? And no, they just did a simple ball roll, a pack across the box, and a simple tapping because the keeper was nowhere to be seen there. And it's interesting when you see the pause there, they're actually playing. 5-3-2, which means they've scored a couple of goals and they thought, you know what, let's sit back. But indeed, playing 5-3-2 sometimes doesn't mean that you're able to bring your wing backs forward. And we're seeing that, you know, it's still defensive when defending. But when they attack, they attack with players. And we've seen that here. Four goals in under 60 minutes in game time. Ronaldo now. Just playing this one round. There's no need for any risky passes like that from UT7, really. But they give the ball away. Ronaldo now, Ginola. Need a goal very, very quickly, Di Venezia. And the thing is, they are the ones who need to hit those risky passes now. They need to take those small percentage moments. And, well, I mean, to be honest with you, it's just going to play into the hands of UT7. Surely it is. 
I mean, it sure is, as you mentioned, they are the team losing Venezia. They are in a position where they need to score four goals to get back into this. And as yeah. you see them go forward here... They need to send it, don't they? They're going to win the ball back. Is that ball going to result in anything? No, it is not. Petr Cech gathers and will just slow this one down for UT7. Ball out wide to Lorente. Going to give it away, though, for Farnet. Pressure's on a little bit. Eusebio now. There's still plenty of FIFA left to be played here, but four goals, how quickly can you find them if you're Venezia? Renato Sanchez into Eusebio. Every chance that they have, they need to try and take it. Messi is back there if he does need some support just alongside him. Keeping a hold of the ball as best he can, but look at the defensive work coming in from UT7. Just so, so solid edge of the box. Renato Sanchez for Fana. It's not who you want there, but Eusebio is great save. Fantastic save from Petr Cech. Ball's going to be whipped in again on nine, gets in the way. UT7 defending well. Defending really well indeed as you get it to the edge of the box here and it falls back to Renato Sanchez. Not going to happen. Mendy will clear this one away. Neymar now to Messi. Look at the run here from R9. Could this be five if it finds its way through? I think that pass is locked to Mbappe. I think if that locks to R9, he's in on goal. And well, we usually know what that ends up being. Marquinhos. Fafana. This one's now going to be played away in Neymar Jr. Mendy. And UT7 just controlling this game. They have done all the way through. Millet's out. Laurent there now. This one's going to be played off to Atal. And I mean, look at even the pressure that's coming through from, you, uh, from the side of Venezia. UT7 can really do very, very little about it. That one's going to go out. and it Honestly, wouldn't surprise me to see UT7 find another hit. I mean, they are going forward very well. As you see, it get to the edge of the box here, and a great interception from Renato Sanchez. But to be honest with you, Venezia might feel, feel a little bit hard done by here. They've had quite a lot of chances, but they just haven't been able to take them. Czech has been outstanding for UT7. And I mean, to be honest with you, it could be around a score on a 4-2, to 4-3, to three, which obviously means they're more in a game. But going forward, UT7 are just... Insane. They played this so well. 83 minutes on the clock now. Militao will get this one away. Benetti need to find at least something out of this leg. You find, you find it's just going to be difficult. Four goals down, second leg. But Ginola inside the box could do with finding something. Finds Kylian Mbappe. Can he find the pass across? Oh! It's a clanger. You know it's not your day when your Sabio's not putting that one in the back of the net. Nothing. And I mean nothing has went right for Venezia here. You know it's like a day when you put it across the box in that position and you get it to your Sabio, your star man in your team, your icon that you're using outfield and he doesn't put it in the back of the net. I mean, you'll be so hard done by, especially as he is four-star skill and his five-star weak foot. Even if he shoots on his left or his right, he should be putting it in the back of the net, which would have definitely changed this game going into the next leg, knowing that you've actually scored. Ronaldo Sanchez now. Mbappe. Ginola is there as well. Caminetti are finding themselves a goal. It's just rushed, but that's the thing. They need to rush. They're four down. We're into the final moments now of this very first leg, UT7. We, we genuinely thought that this was going to be a very competitive game. Venezia have not brought that to the table. UT7 did their job. Venezia, it has to be said, they did have chances. They were unfortunate at times as well, but 4 to 0. Doesn't tell the full story, but it's definitely indicative of how well UT7 played there. Yeah, Venezia played really well there, in my opinion. You know, they had quite a lot of actually chances, but they didn't end up scoring, which is very unfortunate, especially that Eusebio chance. I mean, that should be going in the back of the net. Well, UT7 just take all their chances, don't they? That's the that's the difference, realistically. Fantastic stuff from them and fantastic work by the strikers on that side, but maybe not from Venezia. They'll be cursing their players right now. R9 not putting them away. Mbappe not putting them away. You're asking questions, but we do have a question for you. Go and get yourself a drink or something like that if you want to. You can go and do that because we're going to take a very quick break. We'll be back with the second leg in just a second. Welcome to my master class. Eh, mina san domo konnichiwa. Eh, Blue United EFC EFC 所属 eh, pro player no Agu desu. Eh, konkai wa eh formation no shoukai wo shiteikou kana to omoimasu. Eh, shoukai suru formation wa 4231. 
、えー、戦術と、えー、指示についても紹介できればなと思いますはい、使用しているフォーメーションは、えー、4 2ですこの4 2 3 1を紹介していければなと思います、えー、守備のスタイルはバランス、えー、幅55、えー、深さは75に設定しています、えー、4 2 3 1は、えー、非常にコンパクトなフォーメーションで、えー、幅は55であ,のあまり広げ,ず広げすぎず狭すぎずっていう風にしていますで深さ75にしている理由は、自分は結構プレッシャーに行く、えー、スタイルなので、75に、前から、えー、プレッシャーに行けるように、75に設定しています。で、このシーン、えー、自分が攻撃を仕掛けていて、相手にボールを取られました。で、相手はカウンターを仕掛けてきている最中です。で、このシーン、逆サイドに、えー、サイドチェンジで展開されたので、レーダーを見てもらうと分かるように結構あの間延びしているのが分かると思います。なのでここで、えー、ラインが下がってしまっているので、えー、オフサイドトラップを仕掛けてこのようにしっかりと、えー、コンパクトに、えー、1列目、2列目、3列目、4列目まで、えー、しっかりコンパクトに保つように、えー、しましょう。で、見てもらったら分かるようにこの時点で、えー、4、4、にえーまあ、守備時はちょっと442みたいな、えー、ブロック、まあ、44のブロックを形成して、えー、基本的にコンパクトにして戦うようにしましょうでこの時点で、えー、44のブロックはしっかり作れているので、えー、数的有利は、えー、作らせてない状況ですでこのシーン、えー、最後、えー、4枚しっかり、えー、44のブロックは壊れされて、ね、いないので、えー、シュートを打たれましたがシュートブロックにしっかり、えー、入っていて前作同様、今作も、えー、シュートブロックが強いのでしっかりカーソルを合わせてあげてシュートブロックをしてあげることにより、えー、守備することができましたはい、えー、以上が、えー、マイマスタークラステリになります、えー、皆さんもぜひ4231強いので、えー、試してみてください、えー、それでは皆さん、えー、ピッチでお会いいたしましょうバイバイ Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the FGS Open. We are here for the Milan Regional Qualifiers, and here we go into the second leg. Venezia well and truly behind, and it is really all to do for them. Not looking good against UT7, and that is just. It's hard, isn't it? How do you come back from this, Lisa? Well, you've got to regroup, you've got to talk to your coaches and work out what you didn't do right. But I mean, to be honest with you, they didn't really do too much wrong, maybe a few defensive errors, but they did have a few opportunities there, a lot of opportunities there to actually get a couple of goals back, which they just didn't end up getting, which was unfortunate. Eusebio missed, Ginola missed, and it could be, a, it could be at least 4-2 here, 4-3. Yeah, it really could. I, look, I think it's it's difficult though when your players aren't taking those chances. Where's their confidence going to come from in this in this second game? They need to go and play the same that they did, but they need to make sure these chances count. They were unfortunate a couple of times. I think they will take some positivity from that, of course, heading into this second game. But we are nearly ready to get into it. UT7 though, control from them. Do they change the, their game here or do they just play the exact same way? I mean, we saw UT7 there actually go to a five at the back when they started getting a couple of goals, and they actually ended up scoring another two goals from in that formation. So, to be honest with you, they don't need to score goals now. They just need to keep this lead, and they get to see themselves £15,000 richer. But for me, stay in a 5-3-2, a five, defend for your life. They did that really well in the last game. It's not what people want to be seeing sometimes, but it's just what you've got to do for that money and that spot in April. So, UT7 now to defend a 4-0 lead. Venezia Esports, it's all to do here. Mendy now moving this one forward. Venezia can just, they need to be the ones in control of the ball here. UT7 can just control it themselves. And you feel if there's a fifth going to be found, it may well just be GG. But in the end, Venezia will get this one away. Great Elastico there to try and get away from the defender, but just doesn't end up happening for them. And great defending, but. Like you mentioned, Venezia, they need to go forward, they need to keep the ball, they need to control the ball. 
Ronaldo. Good ball in the Ginola is offside. Seen the flag very, very quickly there in the bottom of your screen. Ginola does put it away, but offside, if only ever so slightly. UT7, just control mode from them now, isn't it? Just take your time, we don't need to do anything stupid, but to be honest, I think they'll be thinking to themselves, yeah, okay, 4-0, four, four zero. We're, we're good, right? We, we played that well, let's play that same way again. And then when maybe it gets towards that second half, expect them to shut up shop. I mean, in my opinion, they've just got to carry how they are. They don't want to be wasting time with the ball. They've just got to try and play as they, as they have been. They might even get a couple of more goals here. Pass possibly going to play to Ginola from Eusebio there. Not quite. For Fana and to Mbappe. Good ball out to Ginola, though. Can he find a little bit of space for the finesse? It's not timed and it is not on target. It's kind of a hallmark of basically what's happened for Venezia. It's kind of been there or thereabouts until whoever's had a shot has not put it in the back of the net. They're trying to rush it, but you do understand that they do have to score four goals. It's kind of like a mountain to climb here for them. They've just got to try and get that first opportunity, the first goal in the back of the net. We saw that they did have an opportunity there with Ginola, but offside. And the one time they actually it actually goes in, it's offside. Every time it's just been saved or off the post, which is quite unfortunate. But as you can see here, UT7 just keeping the ball. They don't need to go forward, they're winning. But however, in my opinion, they should try and go forward a little bit because then they might be able to get that fifth, which will definitely set the game because even four goals, you might look at it, you know, they're four goals, it's going to take a while to get that, but they could still happen and they could end up losing this game still. The pause is queued for Vettia. They need to try and change something. Maybe looking for that early goal before really going Sendy, but that send needs to happen and, well, here comes the changes. I mean, look, they're already in a pretty aggressive formation here, Lisa. Very aggressive formation indeed. It's interesting actually to see a tower in that right cam spot. Don't really expect him to be there, maybe a Messi to be there, but... He is good going forward and he's got good pace. But on the other side, UT7, five at the back. I mean, I did mention they would probably do that because they went into that last game when they were two goals up and they ended up getting another two from it. So defensively, it's very good for them. They're not really conceding anything from that. And then going forward, they're making opportunities. Change is still afoot here from the side of Venezia. And I'm curious what they are going to make a change of. It has to be just formation. You wouldn't be bringing a player off now, really, would you? Interesting to see a towel out there on the right as well. Thinking about his attacking potential, of course. 76 shooting, not necessarily the best, but that is brought down by the long shots. Finishing an attacking position is nice, but it's that shot power that you're lacking. But he will be able to supply balls into the box. That 81 passing on the on the face of the card, of course, brought down by that free kick character. You see, it's actually not that bad at all. But he's somebody who can defend as well. Not necessarily the most attacking player, you would say, though. It's very interesting to see them actually use them at that sort of right cam spot in a 4 triple 2 because you want someone that can actually shoot and as you see there Tao's shooting stats aren't the greatest maybe you can get a bit of pace going down the wing but you're definitely not going to be shooting with him because the chance of it going and you see them miss a couple of opportunities but Ginola and he's got insane shooting and five star five star so in, at the same time using a towel is very interesting maybe we might see him come off Neymar now spreads it out wide to Lorente the ball to Messi not quite good enough for UT7 there to find another Nelly give it away there to Venezia as well. Time is ticking though. Four goals. Need to find them very, very quickly. Ginola. Oh, the ball, ball was on out wide to Messi. You find that could have been the pass you would have thought. Eusebio in the middle though. Now Messi's been unleashed down the right-hand side. Look for the pass inside. Can he find anything? Goes with the shot. Second time of asking. Checks there again. Defender in the way in UT7. Just say no every single time. Very unfortunate there. We did mention that Taupin in that position. You're not really going to want him in that position. You're going to want to have the likes of Ginola and Papes or oh, nine Eusebios, but... He sort of was a bit cautious there to shoot, but he was in the position to shoot, but as you mentioned, shot power and just shooting in general isn't good on a towel. And we saw that there, that's why it didn't go in. A few good blocks as well and good saves. Opportunity here maybe for UT7, not going to come through. Pass out now from Militao. Venezia need to start doing something. But the more they push forward, the more likely it is UT7 will have their own opportunity to find another goal that will surely be the final nail in the coffin now. Mbappe, Tal's making the run down the right-hand side. That's who he's going to try and find. Easy header for Mendy now, and this one's played away to R9. And this is the thing. Look at the men that they have going forward here for UT7. Venetti just about get back in numbers, but 
They're, they're still playing quite passively here, Lisa. It has to be said, I was expecting the kitchen sink to be thrown, to be honest with you. In a sense, they are, but they, they don't want to go forward too quickly and then have a chance of conceding, which they seem to be losing the ball quite a lot as well. You see Seven now looking to try and find another goal. You'd imagine that they maybe just shut up shop a little bit very shortly. Mbappe to Atal. Ball now wide to Eusebio. What can he do? It's flicked on. And Czech will clear this one away. 38 minutes gone in this first half. Venezia need a goal, they may well find one now through a towel! It's chance after chance that goes begging for the side of Venezia and UT7. In fairness, they have converted their own chances, but my goodness me, Venezia, they need to stick the ball in the back of the net at some point. They're going to be absolutely gutted that it didn't go in. But yeah, again, we mentioned it. It's how in that position. Yep. Maybe we see them switch Ginola to that side because that's where they're getting a lot of their opportunities from. You have more of a chance of scoring with a five-star weak foot and a five-star skill move. Ginola, but so unfortunate for them. Oh, and Mbappe inside the box. Could this be the ultimate dagger? Oh, it may well be. Oh, you can't make those mistakes. But when the keeper makes those saves, he completely pulls you out of jail. Neymar now. Simple fake shot to get round. Last attack of the half tries to force his way through and will not have that opportunity. Venezia bailed out there. That could have been five, probably should have been. Probably should have been. You can't be making them type of mistakes in these type of games. It's the nerves, the pressure, and it's not really going their way as well. They could be a little bit frustrated as well. I know I would be if I had, you know, all these shot, five shots we're seeing and they haven't even had a goal in this game and that we're going to need to see a change. Something happen, maybe a formation change, constant pressure bit too early maybe for that press after possession loss everyone forward as much as possible maybe keep a couple of the center mid cdm sort of players one of them staying back one of them just going forward bombing forward but to be honest with you i think we need to see a towel coming off for a more of an attacking player it's questionable isn't it that right count position there's many players you'd probably rather have there than a towel does the business, has that five-star weak foot, but oh, I'll tell you what, Kylian Mbappe is in, this should be five, and it surely is. And that game, it has to be UT7. For all that they have had to defend, and it has been chances from Venezia, UT7 have been nothing but clinical with theirs every single time. Five to zero, that should be game. Nice little ball roll there as well with Mbappe, and then just finishes it into the top right-hand side of the goal and to be honest if you expected with Mbappe we mentioned his shooting his pace he's going to get into them positions and we might actually have a chance here great defending from UT7 which we have seen all game long and that's why they haven't conceded yet defensively they're just as a team they work so well together stopping passes going in behind they're cutting the passing lane and they're so clinical going forward as well that's how they've scored so many goals and UT7 may well find more here because Venezia need to throw absolutely everything at this Mendy will play this one out for Venezia now. Fofana finds Eusebio. A little run from Messi down that right-hand side, but it's the ball out to Mbappe. That is the choice. Czech will just chip this one away. Oh, nine can't keep it in to find that ball across. 55 minutes gone, the second leg. Feels like a formality now, doesn't it? It's kind of just, we're going through the motions, this one feels done and dusted and it may well be six here if Messi can be found oh it's the post off a deflection and that would have been UT7 finding another it would have just about been Venezia's luck in this game I think it's five to zero feels harsh on them Neymar back to Messi could this be six the little cancel to Mbappe they need to just send men forward another one here from Mbappe keeps a hold of the ball inside the box trying to twist and turn can't get it away Venezia will play it out Twisted and turning indeed there, but unfortunately it was great defending in my opinion and you mentioned the sort of opportunity that they had there, you know, they whipped it into the box. So they was actually looking for Messi back stick and if they didn't block it, it was a goal. So for it to hit off the crossbar, they'll actually be quite happy defending that as well. Neymar into Messi, back to Neymar. Oh, he looked for the pass back as well. They've attacked so well of UT7. They may well find a six tier as well. Good save. Every time they come forward, they look like scoring. They played it short. Neymar finding his way through, but the defensive work from Venezia is good.
Neymar now plays it forward. Lorente, big chance here for UT7. Mbappe in the box, there's six. It's just clinical every single time from UT7. Venezia have to send the men forward. And consolation goal is literally all that Venezia can play for now. Consolation indeed. I mean, six goals down. And to be honest with you, coming into this, Venezia, I expect them to actually get quite a lot of goals, especially with how their loser bracket game went. And as you see here, UT7 coming forward again and great defending. But I mean, I expected a little bit more coming from this. I mean, they have had a lot of opportunities to get goals and been a little bit unfortunate. But when you have the best of the best players in your team, for the likes of Mbappe, that we've seen a lot of goals coming from, you know, I know that a lot of it's been coming down the wing from Messi. Great cross back into the box to Mbappe, and we mentioned he's not going to miss from there, and that's why you need these key players. Venezia maybe have a chance here. They just can't string anything together in the, in the final third, can they? Mbappe now. Messi can't find the pass. It's been the story of it for Venezia. Can't hit the back of the net. They kind of do everything right up until that point. Forward, just well defending. UT7 have controlled this game though, all the way through. They may well find another here. Far nine can find the pass. He does so via deflection. Neymar now through on goal. I think he maybe wanted the right foot of Neymar to take that strike. And all nine find anything here on the edge. Mbappe now keeps a hold of it. Eventually going to be played out by Venezia, but 15 in games, uh, in game minutes remaining, and they need six goals. Lisa, it's just, it's just not possible. Some out into climb, and we're just seeing pressure after possession. They, they're just trying to go forward, but because they, they need so many goals, they're just they're fizzing it into positions where it might not actually make it. But they have to do these risky passes to try and get just a goal to get back into this. But six goals in 12 minutes plus a little bit, a couple of minutes at a time, in my opinion, it's, it's just not possible, especially with UT7 playing 5 3 2. There's so many players back, and although they are going forward really well, they're also defending really well in that formation. Ball chip forward. Not a rumor will just about get in the way. Ten minutes in game to go. Been a really good performance from UT7 though. As said, they've just taken their chances. They've defended so well. Venezia, when they did have their chances though, have they had as many as UT7 have in the end? I would say no. They haven't at all, but when they have got the opportunities, Venezia, they just haven't taken them as we see oh, a green time. Can't find it. And that's just every single time. It's just not wanting to go in for Venezia. Back into the middle. Can Atal find anything good save from Czech? Five minutes in, game remaining. Neymar will get this one away from UT7. This may well be another UT looking for number seven. Not quite. They'll get another opportunity, you would imagine. Mbappe chips it forward, Messi, oh, the first touch was good, but the defender was aware. Just nothing really come off for Nezia in this one. It's one of those six to zeros that you lose and you sort of say to yourself, right, okay, well, yeah, but we did have chances. If we'd kept it closer, would it have made it easier to potentially come back? That's the question they'll be asking. Venezia now to play this one out. And that really has been one of the more one-sided games that we have seen UT7 six to zero and they will be heading over to the team of the season cup in April here in London we're excited to see them because based on that they are going to be a dangerous opponent for anyone dangerous indeed UT7 what a performance from there then didn't concede a goal they ended up scoring so many goals and you sort of think to yourself what actually went wrong for Venezia I mean mm. They scored so many goals in the last game. The confidence would have been high. Is it the pressure getting into the final? Being able to win that 15,000? Maybe the chance of them getting that spot in April. But you know, there was a few things that didn't go their way. Maybe frustration came in and we sort of saw there with a few of the chances they had. They're just shooting from miles out. Yeah, it, when it gets to that point when you're so far behind, it does make it very difficult to come back. It's, it's one of those things, if it's three or four, that's where you, you need to press, but you aren't going to leave spaces. If you're only two behind, you can kind of play your game and see what you can do. But then, of course, when you are that three or four behind, it just becomes so, so difficult to actually do something because then you start conceding more and then it's game over. So there you go. Venezia will drop out. UT7 will be the team to find their way through and very good money they were for that performance. You think any of these Masters teams to be looking at that and thinking, oh, actually, that is a very good performance there. One to watch out for. Yeah, there's a few over the weekend that have done really well, yeah. especially yesterday and today. I mean, 
they didn't even concede a goal over two legs and they'll be a team to look out for indeed. Yeah, excellent performance from UT7. I'm sure the guys will have something to say about that. Throwing it back to Rachel, Mike and, of course, Brandon. Well, that was very one-sided, wasn't it? Clinical, dangerous UT7 just absolutely blazing their way through to the Team of the Season Cup in April and in such epic fashion as well. They never let off and I'm saying it's more surprising because actually these two teams match each other in day one as well. The result went the other way to Venezia. So, you know, doesn't always go to plan. If you've beaten a team once, doesn't mean you're going to beat them again, Brandon. No, I mean, that's what we've sort of come to learn, haven't we, from this FGS Open, is that teams may be on day one, go and win in Swiss, but Swiss is a very different kettle of fish to knock out FIFA, as we've come to expect. But a brilliant duo, UT7 Esports, um, with, with Danny Pitbull, who was the East Serie A champion last year, the first time that's ever ran in the Global Series, and, of course, his teammate in, uh, in Fabio. Deserved winners in Italy will have, uh, will have presence at the FGS uh, Team of the Season Cup. Yeah, well, this is what I was saying to you, Mike. Um, you know, Brandon obviously just said about Danny. He was saying how well the team felt they were doing in terms of chemistry, and that clearly works its way out on the pitch as well. 6-0, that final result. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And did you think it was going to be such a, a one-sided affair? I definitely didn't think the scoreline was going to look like that. And I do think it's maybe slightly harsh. Uh, to be fair, there were so many opportunities to score goals, but if you don't take your chances, you don't take your chances. And I think we need a rebrand. We got Danny the Pitbull, and we got Fabio the Rottweiler. He's got to have something that's going to match his teammate because goals were scored, offense was all over the place. Uh, th there were a couple rebounds here, but they were just all out pushing bodies forward and really, really looked strong. I'm looking forward to seeing them later on this year uh, as a tag team. I feel like this partnership works. I feel like they're very aligned. They're on the same page. Beautiful space created there from R9, pulls it back, looks for the extra pass. So much is about composure, being confident, of course, being clinical, and then also working together with your teammate, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, we can talk about them defensively as well, Mike. They switched, didn't they, to five at the back, which obviously worked in their favor as well uh, in that second leg, because obviously also wanted to keep that clean sheet, which says something about a team as well. They want to go forward and get the goals, but also want that scoreline to be very one-sided, Brandon, Mike. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you'll say, Mike, but look, they parked the bus there in that <laughs> second game. Got everyone back behind the ball and just defended for their lives. Hit the bar, I think you're rightly uh, in, in your point in terms of they probably could have scored a couple of goals, mm -hmm. the guys at Hex on eSports, but they just didn't have the rub of the green. Time green there off the bar once, twice. It's just not your day sometimes, is it, Mike? Absolutely not. That's why I started to say the scoreline might be a little harsh. I definitely think that the result with UT7 is deserved. But in terms of the chances that were missed, the posts that were hit, the saves that were made from the goalkeeper at time, even the, the triple, uh, I think it was the center back chasing back, the triple block that you saw there on the replays, that doesn't happen every day that you play FIFA. So it's just one of those games or those matchups where, uh, as you said, you didn't get the rub of the green or you didn't have that extra uh, bounce when you needed it. But sometimes I feel... If you're not as confident, it starts becoming one of those days. I think we've all experienced that throughout the weekend league or playing division rivals, even casually versus friends. I've had games before where I hit the post four or five, six times. And then I have a game after that where I just can't miss. Yeah, I mean, Mike, you said the scoreline doesn't really reflect what we saw in there, but that doesn't matter now. Teams who possibly, again, didn't watch that entire match will look at that and go, oh my goodness, 6 0. This is a force to be reckoned with here going forward. And that will po possibly send a few shockwaves through the community, especially going into April, and kind of say, oh, we have to be prepared for this team and actually watch some of their um, online tournaments back and see exactly how they play and their chemistry set up. Uh, okay, Mike, right now we're going to head over to some. Deep dive analysis with you. So brought to you by PlayStation Tournaments. Mike, where are you going with this one? Well, my favorite goal of the many goals that they scored here is just R9 and the way that he's able to bring all his attention. He gets triple teamed, and you're going to see the double tap through ball pass, which gives it a little bit of a lift. We see this used by the pro players constantly. And then the pullback, they're doing this so well where you're looking for the layoff. You're not going to just take the goalkeeper on for 1v1s, whether you're hitting the post or goalkeepers making saves, you're always trying to pass it in. And this deals with efficiency at the highest level and pro players do a wonderful job of, of doing this. And in a 2v2 in particular, because of having all these manual movements, they can find new spaces and new lanes in general where they're able to unlock spaces that maybe you wouldn't have in a 1v1.
Yeah, absolutely. Well, there we go. That's Mike Lavelle's analysis there. Brandon, finally from you, any final thoughts from that epic match that we just saw? Uh, I think that the bigger side of it is a team that's come through the winner's bracket that did not need to even think about a bracket reset, did they? 6-0, kept a clean sheet. Yes, they're the rubber the green, but to come through a winner's bracket and be that dominant is something we haven't really seen too much in this FGS Open. Yeah, well, two Opens already played so far today and both haven't gone to a bracket reset. It's something we haven't been seeing that often so far. We're usually getting these players going head to head and really fighting all the way for that reset. OK, well, that's two down, four still to go. Like I said, only four spots left for the team of the season Open in April. Come back and join us after this short break. We head to Madrid for our next Open. See you in a minute. day of this FGS Open presented by PS5. Rachel Stringer here alongside me is Brandon Smith. We thought we'd walk because this studio is so big, we thought we'd utilise the space here at the Twickenham studio. Brandon, though, what did we just see before the break? We just saw Milan conclude, didn't we? And it was UT7 with a 6-0 victory. The duo of Danny Pitbull and Fabio booking a spot in the team of the season cup. And safe to say, they absolutely dominated, didn't they? They absolutely dominated. Brandon, I might let you do the magic trick if you like. If you do this, you go click and go, where are we going next? Do you want to try it? I can't click, but 
Where are we going next? Paris. Here we go. I thought you were going to be magic, Brandon. I, I can't click, sorry. He, he's got no magic here, Mike Clavel. We thought we'd use the studio. If you were here, I know you'd he be taking up. He didn't own that. He didn't own that. It was a soft flick. Like, I need some like, extra emphasis. <laughs> Well, we'll, we'll work on it. We still have four more opens to go, of course, six on this third and final day. We are going to Paris, and I've been very excited about this one since I saw all the 16 regional qualifiers because, on paper, boys, this one looks something special. There are four names in this from the two duos who I think all of you will know in some capacity at home. So we're going to break these down firstly. Brandon, you're going to go with Levante, who have actually been in the winner's bracket the entire way yep. through. Uh, what do we know about these two? I mean, Maestro and Pap City, two awesome yeah. players. So what's great about this uh, regional final, we want to say firstly, Rachel, it's for, for, for French players, yeah. UK, Ireland and Scotland only. So it provides you an unbelievable bracket in all honesty. But Levante is a really interesting duo. It's a Spanish football team that play in the Ila Liga, a part of the FGS League. Last year, they brought in Maestro to their roster, which caused a little bit of a stir in the Spanish scene. He's French, that's yeah. why. This year, they've got a UK player as well. <laughs> so they've got Pap City, who's we must say he's played for Ajax, he's played for West Ham, now he's playing for Levante. They've part together. I don't know what the communication's like. I know Maestro speaks good English anyway, but I'd love to have a little listening at some point this year. But they've been unreal. Apparently the communication, they don't have much communication. That's what I read on Twitter. So clearly works at the moment because they've got the job done and they are on the winner's side. But like Brandon said, they will be a team to keep an eye on. But Mike, let's go with the second team, Footwiz. They've gone through their lower bracket and just defeated... Atlantide 4-1 there. They could have a second team in the final 16. We know Footways already have a team in there with Marco and Jamie. That would be something pretty special. But what have you made of Footways' performance? We'll call them Footways 2. Or Footways 1. I don't, I don't know. Whatever they'd like to be called. But, I mean, just getting by Atlantide is really impressive. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's with the Peixoto. And you, you don't want that movement. There's a lot of individual talent uh, in, the, in the previous 2v2 there. But... Uh, with Footwiz, and, th and this could be the second time that we've seen uh, a team, if they were to upset in the regional final here, where we see a team with two representatives locked in uh, for the, the team of the season uh, cup later on, I guess, next year. And when you're looking at Ethan, you're looking at Nick Snap, I feel like both these guys are, I don't know if I want to say peaking, but they're hungry. And I can't stress this enough. The fine margins in competitive FIFA often come down to who has more heart, who wants it more, because from an ability standpoint, these top competitors are so close, they're so similar. So the separations are mental and sometimes desire. And it's that simple, just pure desire of who's willing to take it to the extra step, the extra inch, the extra mile, the extra, we can insert some sort of metric. That, that's going to be an extra here. I, I, what, what, did, what did you say earlier? You said you were like spinning the kettle or something, Brandon. I, I heard there was a kettle reference. Brandon I'll put that in there. Kettle, put, Brandon's going to come hands, in on my misquotes right now. You're coming in, Brandon. I think that's a Buckley quote, that. Uh, but I'm commenting them today, so I, I don't know. Anyway, um, here's a look at the bracket, Brandon, <laughs> just quickly. Exactly how these two teams got to their final there. So foot was and Levante there. And obviously Footwood's team's a little bit younger as well. I'm going to say a bit less experienced. I know yeah. Ethan's been around a while, but Maestro and Pap City, they have been around the scene for years. Yeah, I just want to say a little word on, on what Mike was saying as well with Team Footwood's before we, we sort of throw over to the casters is that there's a lot of infrastructure behind the scenes going on there. Rowan and Dan that are involved in Team Footwiz, they've got a HQ for their players that yeah. they'll be playing in now. There's been money invested into that and they've had, you know, a great, sort of time out in the in the Oceania region. Now they're having their time in Europe. And I mean, it, it's been a long time coming for those guys. So they're hungry, they're young, but fair play. A landside wave or an insane duo. And that could be key, what you just said there. If they're actually in the same place playing, that could be the difference between going through or going home. OK, well, we're all excited for this one. It is the Paris Open. I'm sure you guys are really looking forward to it at home as well. So I'm going to throw it over to our casters for this one, Chris Tun and Richard Buckley. Thank you very much, Rachel. A few Mike Labellisms to cheer me up after what has been uh, maybe not the best break in between games I've ever had, I'll be honest. But we are into this one. I'm now excited about some FIFA. Paris is coming up. And when we were looking at things and seeing the schedule of the games, this is the one that really did stand out to us today. Paris seems to be where a lot of the big boys have been comp competing over the past week. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all the UK players, a lot of the real top tier French players as well are all in this particular region. Mm -hmm. A lot of name power in this region yep. as well. And I mean, look, 
chance to history for Footways to get in there as uh, sort of two teams, the Australian lads, Jamie and Marco, and then also having Nick Snebb and Ethan there as well at the Team of the Season Cup would be a huge sort of uh, statement, really, statement of intent from Footways alongside team makers also having two squads there. On the other side of it, 9-0. They've been flawless so far, yeah. Avlovante. Maestro and Pap City. I'm not too sure how this duo is working. I mean, I don't think it's a mutual language there. Maestro doesn't speak a lot of English. Pap City, I don't think, speaks a lot of French. I think there's very little communication, but they're getting the job done. Yeah, well, pass, shoot. I don't know. I mean, how, how far does it need to go? I, I mean, look, the, the, must, the communication must work because they've just been getting this far. Or well, they're just all playing their own game. I'm sure we're going to get to see an example of exactly why they are looking so good so far and have remained undefeated. They are no doubt the favourites going into this. Do we see the other team in footways have the potential to do something here, but do we expect it? Well, they've been on a great run in the losers bracket. I think six, now seven games, they've been unbeaten in that losers bracket, knocking out a lot of higher seeded teams as well in this run to the regional final here in Paris. It's going to be a tough ask. It's going to be a very tough ask whenever you've got to reset the bracket. We've not seen it today which is a rarity. Uh, a lot of the times we've seen a bracket reset uh, from the losers' side of the tournament. It, it's hard to tell. I mm. think it's going to come down to the start with Ethan and uh, Nick Sneb, that very much momentum plays. If they get going and they can get their confidence up, they are really hard to stop. We saw Nick Sneb qualify for the E-Champions League uh, very recently in the last week or so. So confidence and momentum is very key for these two. I don't think they are at the Footways HQ right now. They're both at home, uh, but I'm sure communication won't be an issue for them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's have a look at the highlights of how the Footways team did find themselves in this spot, though, from the losers' bracket final. Let's see how it did break down in the end. I know you were watching it, Richard. I was, uh, I was commentating myself, unfortunately, so I didn't get to see this, but my word, Mbappe. Footways just seem to have that little bit of electricity, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Atlantide Wave are a really good team oh. as well. That was LJR, Pashoto and Fuma to, I mean, when you look at their achievements last season, the playoff winner on the PlayStation and also a regional champion in Europe and a French E League un champion as well in Pashoto. Oh. But Footways just came, they saw and they conquered this loser's bracket. Counter-attack here, 3-1 up, final 10 minutes. You're not you know going to be stopping Vinny already, Jr. Don't you? Oh, oh, or do you? <laughs> yeah. Just about. <laughs> Just, Just about. about. <laughs> Just about it does put it into the back of the net. But that's a convincing performance. That'll give them a lot of confidence heading in. But they need to do it twice. That's the thing. And with Levante not even losing once so far, it is going to be a tall order, absolutely. But these are really at the peak of their powers when it does come to 2v2. Do you think, you know, from the loser's bracket, that momentum is going to make a difference? You know, they've played a couple of games already. But Levante, with that confidence of, of being unbeaten so far... They're surely going to be feeling confident heading into this themselves. Yeah, for me, it's one sort of very simple thing. Uh, you have to take even the first leg to Levante. If Levante can come out and start strong, and really the the cold sort of nature of when you... The cold open, I like to call yeah. it, when you've not played a game before, and this is your first game on the broadcast. If you're coming into that game and footways can sort of take advantage of the loser's bracket run that they've had, I think we might see potentially, a, I don't want to call it an upset, but a bracket reset happen. Whereas the favourites, they have to be called the favourites. They've Absolutely. come from the winner's bracket. They're unbeaten. Levante, if they can start strong, if they can get switched on early doors and sort of knock the stuffing out of that Footways team, it could be a long afternoon for Team Footways. It could be. We're nearly ready to get into this game. Many delays, unfortunately, from uh, the player side of things, but we should be able to get in in a moment to the Paris Open qualifiers here at the FGS Open. We're coming to kind of the close of things now. You know, there's only a few more to go, but we will all be here, of course, in London in April, and that's where these guys are hoping to get to. Although, yeah, I mean... I haven't been asked yet, but you know, I, I mean, we'll find out if I'm going to be there. But everybody, in terms of the players, will be there at least anyway. And that is where we're really looking forward towards the team this season. Come to be in person, have the players on land. Then 16 Masters teams as well. And this is an opportunity for another one of the big boys to join those Masters teams and the other 13 qualified teams. Am I right? 13? Three more after this? Two more after this. There's uh, a few. Three more. We got Buenos Aires, we got so this Frankfurt. Yeah, we so this will be the 30th. Portland, yeah. yeah. Good maths, good maths. Levante from left to right in the white, and well, they're going to have a chance immediately with Mbappe. Skips inside. Ooh. 
You expect the pass across there maybe, and that's maybe why he actually has the chance to get a shot away. And sell up to maybe whip this in the corner tactics being displayed in full here from Levande. Neymar now trying to find a little bit of room. Back inside to De Jong. Levande now playing around with this. I was enjoying the music. I really, was as actually. well. It gives <laughs> that a was different vibing. vibe. I was vibing. Something to calm me down. Oh, nine now, <laughs> bursting away down this left hand side. We'd get a hold of the ball. There's men over in the box as well. Chance for footways to maybe find something there. Now it's their turn for a corner. Seven minutes gone. All right, early chance for Levante. A couple of step overs inside the box shows the confidence that this squad are playing with. They've been untouchable. Sanchez always oh, looking for the pass in R9, finds the there, Renzi, oh! The Elastico is beautiful as well, but the chance does not find the back of the net. It will be another corner. And Konku now recycles this one back. Sanchez clipped in, good header! Oh! It's a stunning header from Cristiano Ronaldo! What a finish, we haven't seen him much at all, all weekend long. But it loops into the top right corner. And Footways have the lead. One of the only squads to use the team of the group stage, Cristiano Ronaldo. Same rate as his player of the month foot item. You're getting him in over maybe a Lionel Messi, and boy, does he deliver in that particular area of the pitch. Nobody better than him in the air, nobody better than him in those clutch scenarios. We saw it yesterday, 93rd minute header. He's done it in the 10th minute here for Footways. Messi here. For Levante, see it wasn't quite timed. So whether or not it would have found the top left corner or not is another thing, but that's a big moment. It's a start foot whiz, what I wanted, and can they continue? Can they add something else to this with R9? Good tackle from Marquinhos. And this one will now be played away. So how are they linking Ronaldo? Actually, it must just be through Ronaldo, and I haven't actually seen it in terms of who they've got. As far as icons go, they got Eusebio on that, I'm not too sure. So Ronaldo Cancelo, yeah, that makes sense. There you go. So Ronaldo Cancelo and then Ronaldo will do the job. And Konku, really good ball to Mbappe. Good defending, though. Yeah, they're actually going with the 88 and Kunku as well, team of the group stage foot item, who starts typically as a, as a right forward, a right sided player. He's getting in chemistry with Mbappe through the French link and also R9 Ronaldo, who gives the icon Ken. R9 now, twisting his way through, it's a wonderful ball, it's really good defending. R9's causing a lot of problems here, and well, I mean the whole of the Footwiz squad causing issue when they do get into the box, it seems like space is being afforded both teams, if anything. R9 now, bad pass and Footwiz will happily clean this one up, Ronaldo. That's back inside to Nkunku, Neymar, loads of room. In the preview of this game, we were talking about the start. We were talking about maybe coming in a little bit cold, Levante. I don't necessarily think they've come in cold. I just think Footways have come in really, really strong and really hot into this regional final. Neymar trying to get away there from Neymar on the other side of things just to release that pass. Oh, Sanchez now. Oh, can't find that. And I want to, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, it's the first time we've... Well, we have seen him before, I'll maybe come back to that. Uh, no, I will just continue. <laughs> well, what's the play then? It has to be for the heading ability, surely, doesn't it? From these corners, from those kind of moments. We know it can be powerful. It's the first player, the first time we've actually seen them utilise and use a player of that ilk, if you like, to try and find these kind of goals. Kind of replacing Ginola or Messi, yeah. as, as mentioned, but that's a really good ball into Mbappe. Looks for the pass, it's Kessie in the box. Who's it going to fall to? Eventually, it is Footways and they clear that one out. Had to be played across the box as soon as it fell into Kessie. Messi was in acres of room at the back post. He was the extra ball, he was the extra pass for a guaranteed goal almost. Oh, R9, is he going to be able to get a hold of this here himself? Oh, just about to skip through the ball roll. Scoop comes on through. So does some very, very good defending from Levande. 100% seems to be Footways. The one that are making those extra little passes. Maybe just looking a little bit more likely to find the next goal, which could be massive. Mbappe now. He's wriggled his way through the reverse elastico, ball roll, scoop, pass, not there. 
Seemed like a good opportunity, but maybe this is a good opportunity to counter-attack. They've left R9 at the back post. The defending not coordinated. The Brazilian running through on goal. Where does this end up? Good save from Van Sar. Just did enough defensively to show him out wide. Just allowing the defenders to get back. Oh, what's this? Variation. Marquinhos now, and he's not going to be able to find that pass. And that's someone else. I, I really like that tactic, but I tell you what, they may be able to break it. And Kunku is getting away. Maybe a professional foul could come through from De Jong. He slows him down just about enough. No free kick. I wonder if the FIA are making decisions in this game as well. We were just talking earlier about CR7, and it is the replacement for Genoa. The only problem is CR7 obviously above 89 rated and 90 rated, so he counts as one of those sort of premium players, whereas Genoa, you can get him in underneath the requirement as an 89. So it, it's who you, who you prefer, really. Messi and Dion exchanging passes. Two CDMs being controlled by the Footways boys, but they're not going to be able to do much about Messi in here. Oh, he twists and turns. Which way am I going? Onto the unfavoured right foot, but finds the back of the net. A very nicely timed shot. And Lionel Messi doesn't miss those. Very well worked, and that's one apiece. I think they just backed off him a little bit too far. They gave him too much room to go into. From what I understand, I think it's Maestro's account, so he will be the red icon, so that would have been Maestro taking the chance inside the box, green time, Lionel Messi, emphatic finish at the near post. Mbappe now, a little speed boost, gets away from the defender, can he find this one across? Not quite. Levante growing into this as the first half ends of this first leg of a potential bracket reset that could come on through. And I'm going to look at the stats, possession expected goals all with Levante, despite Footwiz's very quick start. Yeah, you can see, the possession, the XG, dominant, but when you consider Footways have maybe had a little bit more time to warm up, only 79% passing accuracy, one in five passes is going awry. Not ideal. No, not ideal. Maybe me, Mr. Eight, maybe on a good day, 12 wins on the weekend league. 79% possession, no oh, passing success, I should say. It's maybe not so bad. Professional players, though, you expect them to find their mark. R9, is he going to find the mark this time? Not quite. Chip through ball from Mbappe. Does not find its way through. Ball in now to Hernandez. Marquinhos back as well. Good switch of play. And they're getting this one going. You were talking about the communication, which being informed. There's very, a lack of communication at the moment for this Levante team. They just play the game as they see it. But they don't talk? Nope. <laughs> Very little. And they've got nine and oh. Maybe that's what that's what we were missing. Too much communication. Who'd have thunk it? Maybe we should just become a better commentary duo by not talking. Oh my word, Bappy's through. I'm gonna have to speak about this. Oh, great, great save from Van der The leg stretches out. Big moment there though. It was a good chance for Levante. And if the communication's not there, how oh, you know to pass that ball through? <laughs> Who knows? It's like telekinesis. Well, suppose at the end of the day, Pap City and Maestro don't need each other to tell them how to play FIFA. Yeah. You just play what you see, and it's working for them at the moment. My only thing would be in terms of the defensive side of things. Rather who's than pressing, attack. who's yeah, dropping exactly. off. Exactly, Mbappe trying to wriggle through. Footwears defend well. And these are two boys who will definitely be talking their way through this one. He would have said R9's on, on. He would have said maybe just go for it. Ooh. So it wasn't timed. It was a, a pretty decent effort. If that is green timed, maybe we see. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. The back of the net rippling. Huge opportunity for R9 to stick that one in. And again, that's a defensive talk that maybe would be able to help them. Somebody needs to maybe close R9 down in that scenario. We've seen it a couple of times this weekend. Pape will not find his way through. Neymar will play this one out. I think it would be a little bit hard done by, I thought there was a definite free kick. Just on the edge of the box. Quite an open game at the moment, even though it's only 1-1, yep. there's been chances going at either end. A few of the other games that we've watched over the last couple of days, they've either been blowouts or they've been sort of a little bit slower in their approach. Both teams just throwing each other <sighs> At each other. Oh, nine with a shot. Cancel left, right, right, left. Oh my god, it is absolutely sublime. Which way am I going? You don't know. And R9 says, Thank you very much. 
It's astonishing FIFA from the Footwiz boys. Look at this, there's one, there's two. Bang! Just dancing. Inside, outside. R9 Ronaldo. As Chris Tun does a tango next to me. That's what it was like, mate. Incredible movement. And again, the confidence to do that. The confidence in each other. Really well played R9 here on the other side from Levante oh, as well. What a save. Unbelievable save from Van der Sar. There wasn't much of a gap to find it. But now an opportunity for Levante. Can they find this tactic that they found last time? I, I doubt it. It's going to be difficult to find that pass once again. Footwears will be a, maybe a little bit more switched on by what they're trying to go for here. But Mbappe is turned far too easily. So much room to grab himself a way through. But Marquinhos wins it back, back to Mbappe. It would have been scrappy. But it is offside. Given far too much space there, Richard. Oh, no, absolutely. He came short for the corner. As soon as he turned around him, he had a straight ball into the box. It, it was uncontested. And that's where they're worried about the back post cross. Yeah. Oh, R9, it's been fizzed into his feet again. And Footwiz just seemed to have that small little extra step with Ronaldo there in the middle. R9 seems to be able to find these little cancels left and right, and it's just when they're in the box, he looks so dangerous under Footwiz's control. And I mean, look, I mean, the stats kind of speak for themselves, don't they? We know five star, five star, of course, on R9, the finishing shot power. I mean, he's the best to do it on this game, really, isn't it? No, absolutely. I mean, a couple of the stats there that are really jumping out to me. Reactions of 94, but the one weakness of that R9 foot item, 79 stamina. You might not be able to be as effective going into maybe extra time, in deep into the game. That's where you see Vinicius Jr. brought on there. Trying to get himself away. He's been brought on on both sides of things. And I think that also the advantage of having CR7, CR7 goes up top when R9 comes off and Vinicius Jr. then goes out wide. So you have a replacement as that central striker, maybe a bit more physicality over a, a, a Neymar or Mbappe that CR7 has. Vinicius Jr. just can't quite get past Cancelo there. CR7 will try to get this one away down the left-hand side. It's recycled back into the middle. Ronaldo Sanchez is onto it though. Mbappe skips by Marquinhos, who's at the back post. It's not anybody that's going to get the ball. Is Arnaud going to get there? Van der Sar comes flying out. Renato Sanchez is the one that finds the opportunity. They kind of baited out with R9 at the back post. And Renato can't make it count. Big, big opportunity squandered. In all honesty, they had options across the middle of the box. I'm just trying to figure out how stacked this Ethan team really is. Janola's just come off the bench. That's a lot of uh, that's a lot of coins just sitting on the uh, on the bench, isn't it? Well, let's have a look into the stats though. Has really been very level on the possession side of things. But Footwear's in the lead. Fafana now coming on for Levante. Two legs to play though, remember. We're nearing very much close to the end of this one. Possession lost from the boys on Levante. A third here for Footwear's. Be huge. Be massive. Give it away. Vinicius Junior now plays the ball forward. R R9 trying to get past. Vinicius Junior back inside. And Ronaldo is Mbappe on side. No, he is not. Chance for Levante to maybe find something there. I think at the same time, you know, they'll be 2 1 down if this is the way that it ends, of course. I don't think they'll be, you know, too disheartened from their performance. They have had chances. No, there's not a lot really that they can think we should have done this better. We should have defended in this way. Uh, more accurately, and it's I'm good, not too sure. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a good individual moment for our nine yeah. footways, wasn't it? Can they find a good individual moment here from themselves? Not quite. I mean, they'll probably not even discuss it anyway. Yeah. In between the two legs, it'll be emoji, thumbs up. Yep, yeah, let's go, race. <laughs> Cancelo gets it away down this left hand side. Vinicius Junior just trying to pace Hakimi. Oh, no, I mean, it kind of <laughs> it's one of those, isn't it? That second goal from Footways um, that Nick Snebb scored, such a nice goal when you th consider it, when we're going to watch it back. The, the shot cancels oh. to get away. Mbappe in the box here. Oh, the roulette as well doesn't quite find his way through. Marquinhos will not quite easily be able to play this one out, but does eventually get it away. 
That is looking like it will be that. Levante will get this final attack, but they need to get it forward very, very quickly. Ball in, doesn't find its way through. Footwiz heading into the second leg will find themselves with a 2-1 lead. And they deserve 2-1 lead, to be honest. They took their chances, the yep. opportunities came. Really good second goal. Uh, an individual piece of brilliance from R9 Ronaldo, and I'm pretty sure it was Nick's never have been seeing a lot of the goals that he's been scoring yeah. on social media recently. Just insane use of not only the left stick in and around the box, but also that uh, cancel mechanic as well. 2-1 lead, I mean, they'll be happy at the moment with oh, yeah. how the game's going. Levante also won't be upset with how the game's going. It's sort of, even though there's only a goal separating them, neither side's going to be thinking, okay, this is a done deal because it can go anyway. Absolutely way. not. Absolutely not. I think, you know, in any game of FIFA, you're one goal down. That can change very, very quickly. And with these pros, we know how easily they can find the back of the net sometimes. And just a little moment of magic, maybe, uh, that escaped Levante. We did see from Footways. It's that that goal from R9. You just spoke about it there. Absolutely sublime. But there you go. 2-1 to Footways. They are the ones that need that bracket reset. And they're on the way if they can hold on to this one goal lead. The second leg coming up after this. So, in the second variation of corner we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be using it when our opponent moves the keeper to the first post. Hola amigos, my name is Jaime Alvarez, also known as Gravesen, professional FIFA player for Team Dogs Gaming, and today I'm gonna be giving you a masterclass about uh, set pieces, uh, where we're gonna be talking about free kicks and corners, so I hope you enjoy it. Scoring a direct corner in FIFA 22, it's pretty difficult because almost every time the center backs uh, clear the ball. So we're gonna go with two different kind of options. We're gonna go with a creative form or a player lock to create a finesse situation. So the first thing to know is how to do this corner, this set piece. So first thing, we're gonna press R1 to go our second player to a short pass. Then we're gonna activate the player lock uh, pressing both sticks in then we are gonna pass the ball with an X to our player with uh, who we activated with the player lock and then we're gonna green time finesse it to the back post and the second option is gonna be a cross to the back post and an extra header to our strikers to create a good chance the first thing to do is press L1 until we select our player who is nearest to the penalty kick we're gonna select him and we're gonna just give it a bar of power so the ball can catch a lot of fight and the thing we have to do is do an extra header so another one of our strikers can uh, score the goal so in this second chance we're gonna extra header it and he's gonna miss it but we create a good chance if we were talking about free kicks, in my opinion, the best way to approach them is about confusing your opponent. The first thing we're gonna do is press R1 and L2 to call two more people to come over. Then, uh, as we have a situation from the left side of the box, with our main striker, we're gonna press uh, square and X for our player to create a run inside the box. Then, when we do that, uh, if our opponent doesn't defend uh, that run, we're gonna place R1 and X for a pass to Phil Foden and an extra pass to score the goal. So this was all for today. This was the masterclass about free kicks and corners. Hope this creates a lot of good chances for you to score more set pieces and we'll see you on the pitch. So see you guys. Ladies and gents, welcome back to the FGS Open. My name is Chris Dunn, joined by Richard Buckley, and we are into the second leg of what could be a bracket reset potential on the cards here for the Paris Regional Qualifier for the Team of the Season Cup in April. Currently 2-1 to Footwiz against Levante United, and it is Footwiz that have come from the loser's bracket. And a little moment of magic is what has found them in the lead, heading into game number two. It's poised quite nicely, Richard. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. I mean, we, we wanted 
for the neutral, we probably wanted that first leg to go to Footwiz to, to get them sort of going into the second leg. We're expecting now Levante to probably come out a little bit stronger. Mm. Um, they are unbeaten. They've not dropped a game in this entire tournament so far. They won nine back-to-back, -back, whether it was in the Swiss or then also in the bracket. So they've been flawless in their approach up to now. And maybe this is where potentially we might see the first chink in their armour, so to say, in this regional final. Yeah, footwear's looking really good, especially on the attacking front in that first leg. But to be fair, Levante did have their chances as well. Some good saves either side, it has to be said. But Levante will be looking at that, and I don't think they'll be too despondent. We were saying, you know, the communication isn't necessarily there between them, so they wouldn't have chatted about it. But I think had they both spoke the same language, they'd probably be saying, look, we just played our game. That's 2-1. That's just kind of how it is. That's fine. We didn't play badly. They scored a good goal. It's just one of those things. Yeah, and I also think when you consider they've been winning literally everything in this tournament so far, they're going to have so much self-belief in themselves. They're going to have so much confidence in themselves that they can just turn this game around. Footways need to step on the throat right now. They need to push this game to Levante. R9, looking for a chance immediately for Footwiz. Both these teams don't seem afraid to shoot, do they? Sometimes, you know, we, we think that pro players, sometimes it looks like they overdo it, where there's too many passes just to find that definite, finite chance. At times we've seen shots coming in from angles you wouldn't necessarily expect. Lionel Messi with one of them! Oh, and it's just so simple. From Messi, it's almost like the hit. We go on, just do it then. And he kills it in the top left corner. And all of a sudden, Levante have leveled it up. A skill move that you don't really see a lot. Lateral heel to heel. I love it personally. I absolutely love it. When I see that in this score, I'm like, right, I am doing the right thing by doing this in weekend league. And Mbappe now going to go again. Van der Sar makes the save. Maybe it looked like a simpler save to try and make. But sorry to cut you off. The, the, the lateral heel, the heel made me excited. Yeah, it just created the space on the edge of the box. And it also gives you that little bit of added elevation because it just pops it up after you've done the skill move. Really simple to execute. Green timed finesse from Lionel Messi. 95 rated, one to watch for Titan. He's got all the stats in the book, really. He, everything for that finesse shot he gives you. And when you talk about getting back into the game, when you talk about confidence, that is a perfect example of it right there. If they weren't thinking that they could get back into the game or they weren't thinking this is just a, another game for us that we can potentially take over here, they wouldn't be trying shots like that. Yeah. They'd be trying to work it into the box and to give a little driven pass here and there and pop a 1-2 off to get a 100% chance of a goal. Oh, nine can't quite get a hold of the ball there. This will be played out via and Kunku and now Mark gets us away down this right-hand side to pull a ball up. Footways maybe a little bit flustered from that one. It's one of those chances that you can't really do a great deal about. Not get beaten one-on-one -on -one is, is the only thing there, but Messi did very, very well. They won't be allowing that to happen once more. Good ball, maybe? No. De Jong was the pass potentially there, but he has now found himself out of position here, Richard. And now they've hit that and executed that finesse shot. It's going to be on the mind constantly. It might also give the footways side a little bit of uh, extra thought in the final third if they're struggling to play through to hit a finesse shot like that one we just saw. Now Sanchez isn't going to do that from there. Neymar, somebody who can bag a goal if needs be. Still hold of the ball. R9 inside the box. Can he find a little bit of space once again? Cancels left and right. Just twisting, turning, left stick, dribbling. Can't find a way through this time. Couldn't find that space. So close. This is probably one of the first duels where you can distinctively see who's which icon. The, the blue... I'm, I'm pretty sure is Ethan because every time I, I mean the red is Ethan every time that the blue icon gets the ball Nick Snev is looking for those little left stick dribbles he's looking for the cancels every single time he gets inside the box and in a dangerous area well we played around by Levante here in the lead in the second leg but things all tied up Kessie De Jong, oh, R9 can't Ooh. quite be found, but it's been given away to uh, Messi, goes for the shot. Or oh, does he? No, he does not. R9 doesn't. There's just too many defenders in the way. Mistakes creeping in now and then between both of these two teams, but it's a potential counter-attacking opportunity here for Footwiz. Ronaldo, good ball out wide to Neymar. He can go either way. Does he cut inside it? Fire a shot away. No, he doesn't. He finds the pass to R9, who just tries to run a straight line. Not going to get through that way. 
It's been given away, though. And, and those, those mistakes we're expecting to see more and more of as the tension and the intensity and the pressure, nerves, all starts coming to this final two-thirds of the game. It is going to get a lot more edgy. I feel like the next goal could be very, very crucial. Messi, room to move here. Oh. Okay, well back inside now, R9. Can't find his way through, and Matt Sanchez will get that one away. Oh, what's been given away, R9 now, into a bad bay, and the reverse Elastico is not quite there. The pass to Messi was maybe the one they wanted. Good pressure from the middle, though, for Levante. Big press in the midfield, R9, no foul. Still somehow got the ball, Levante. Ball into the box, is it going to find its way all the way what through? Oh, my word! The pressure coming in at times on this footwear squad from Levante is unrelenting. Well, there are three different players all pressing high up the pitch, Levante. R9 won it, I think it was uh, De Jong as well who stole the ball back. You can definitely see the intensity and the game plan is take this game right now. Again, Kessie, great win in the middle of the park and they can turn them over if that pass comes off. R9 now though. Edge of the box, looking for the clip ball through to Mbappe. Once again, you can just presume Nick Snev's just the one there. The cancel's all over the shop. You just really don't know where he's going to go, where the pass is going to come from. Messi now down this right-hand side. 40 minutes in. R9 plays the ball in. Frankie Offside. Diop inside the box. Offside. Misses the target anyway. Just, literally just offside. It would have counted if the ball had gone in. This Levante team looking really good oh, in this second leg. you can't leg. do that, you can't do that. R9 now free in the box. Straight at Van der Sar. Wasn't a lot of angles to play with there for the Brazilian. But Footwiz living very, very dangerously. It's a golden chance. It really is. When you win the ball on the edge of your opponent's box, you're just wanting a white shirt to be up there for a pass across. Ball in. Ronaldo here for Footwiz. It's going to fall to R9! <laughs> He's put his foot through that, hasn't he? Well, he takes the net off the floor. And it's been consistent pressure from Levante. It falls to R9 on the edge of the box and he just hits it. 1-1 one, one, all of a sudden and Footwiz retake the lead. He's screaming, Gerard! <laughs> As that's fallen to him just on the edge of the box. Great strike. Very rarely do you see people shoot like that first time. It's usually a touch and then a settle and then a, and a skill move. He's just hit it and he green timed it as it dropped down to him as well. A gift from above, the ball bouncing, R9, zero back lift. Kept it down, they might have only got a 0.3 x3, but they are in the lead. He's absolutely walloped that, hasn't he? <laughs> My word. Well, if you want that kind of opportunity to fall to anybody on the edge of the box, you want it to be R9. And you say somewhat, I don't want to say it's an undeserved goal, but Levante will be a little bit twisted about that, I would say. They really have been the team who put the press on. They've had their own opportunities, and then to concede a goal like that, there's got to be frustration there. No, absolutely. So many chances that you've had for Levante in this first half have gone awry. And look post. at CR7. Back post, CR7. He's going to climb above Hakimi. Surely not quite. Ball in wasn't the best. And Konku now. Sanchez into the feet of R9. Which way is he going? Good defending, but Sanchez on the edge. Foot whiz. They smell blood in the water here. Cancelo, R9, ball in, fantastic pass off sides. You saw the play though, you saw it building up. From deep, driven pass into R9, he had the simple ball. Onto Mbappe. And this game has just burst into life in the second half. Oh, here goes Mbappe for Levante, can't quite. Get past Marquinhos. Was Neymar going to get away here as well? They pulled him out. Now Nine finds the touch. Could this be the final moment that fit was need? So much composure. It's CR7. It's in the back of the net. The pass across is always going to come on through. As soon as R9 finds that touch pass to the defender, it screams goal. The footways have the lead, and they've got that two goal cushion. As soon as R9 gallops away from that last defender, it, it's, it's over. You may as well not run back because you know what's about to happen. Simple ball across, Mbappe could be in here straight from kickoff. 
great save from Van der Sar. Levante not out of this one yet. We've seen them had opportunities, they just haven't dispatched them. Messi whips it into the back post. This is not going to land for anybody, not quite. CR7 will get this one away for Footwiz. Who will just calm this one down that little bit now. Two goal cushions, a massive thing to have. It certainly is. There's only 30 minutes left to play as well. Three goal cushion would be, of course, even better. I think this has just been a difference of taking chances here, Richard. Yeah, it has. Every time that footers have gone into the box, they've got a shot away. They've looked dangerous. Levante have had a couple of chances where they've been in great positions, but they've not been able to get that shot or that final pass away to create a good opportunity. Also, what is so important, this would be the first loss of the tournament that Levante have suffered. How mentally would they be able to bounce back from losing? If they do lose, there's still time left. There's still time. Neymar into our nine. Can't quite get away from Nkunku. And the more they send forward, the more they become susceptible to attacks like this water ball, that is, to CR7. Turns it round very well, but the pass is wayward on nine. Nearly gets a hold of it, but this one will be played out by Levante. Oh, that's a poor pass, though. Ronaldo Sanchez on top of that one, and Neymar. For Footways now in the corner, he's done so well to turn him. Mbappe now looking for the pass across to our nine. Really good save by Van der Sar, pushes it away from danger. Levante live to fight another day. Could have been 5-6-2 here. Footways, couple of chances. It was inches away from CR7 at the back post. Oh, what a ball that was nearly to Mbappe. CR7 will head this one up, and he offers that as well, doesn't yeah. he? That physicality there, help you in a defensive way, if you like. R9 fizzes in to Mbappe. The reverse Elastico couldn't quite get out of his feet. It's one of those the defender interacts and. Great it's press. Kind of, yeah, really good press. Can't get a hold of it though, can't get it out their feet. Frankie de Jong has covered every single blade of grass here for this <laughs> Levante team. Messi now. Skips by Cancelo. Can he find a pass into R9? Fizzes it into his feet, lays it off to Kylian Mbappe. The reverse hey. Elastico and. It's got to be. Can Neymar convert this one for Levante to bring the deficit down to one? Yes, he can. Big, big moment as Levante now only one goal behind 4 3. Game well and truly back on. And who won the ball? Frank and Young in the middle of the park, hustling, getting the ball back. It was Messi out wide. He just pinged it into R9, laid it off to Mbappe. And as soon as he managed to get away from that defender, the contact came in. It's always going to be a penalty. As you can see, that road to the knockouts, UCL, Frankie de Jong foot item. Unbelievable across the board. He excels in all the right areas where you want a centre mid, a CDM. Passing, dribbling, defending, physicality and the pace as well. Immaculate foot item and a shame that he's not going to be further upgraded with Barcelona's exit from the Champions League. That is tough. Just to remind all the Barcelona fans whilst they're watching. Do you want to talk anything about Max Verstappen just to knock me as well? <laughs> Save that for later. Yeah, maybe. Please don't. Here we go then. Levande. 15 in-game minutes to find another. Dharma Traore is on. Ginola's on for footwiz though. And he's going to get going down the left hand side. Somebody just free in the back post. Outside of the foot, volley from Vinicius Jr. Yes, it is. And just like that, that two-goal deficit is restored. Just to work switched on from, from the kickoff. It looks so simple. It was three passes. Ginola had space out wide. What a substitution Ginola is, by the way, to have off the bench. That is ridiculous, firstly. Um, Vinicius Jr. had all the space on the pitch. R9 Ronaldo inside the box, looking to twist and turn, runs into a black and green shirt. Great game. Really good game. De Jong trying to feed this one in. Footwiz will get away. Mbappe, did he stay inside his own half? He did. He's been released. Is Marquinhos going to get there? Just about. Just about. And now, Levante, it's not out of the realms of possibility here. They've got to send the kitchen sink at this one. Neymar can't quite find that pass from R9. Van der Sar will launch this one, I presume, to CR7 or Ginola. <laughs> Hits off the back of the head of Hakimi. Time is now running out. Everything got to be sent here, Richard. Yeah, I don't think they're going to have enough time as well. That throw in, the ball turned over. Footers are going to pick it up, and it could be game over. Alfonso Davis in the box, looking to get it across. But with only five minutes left, Chris, I just don't think there's enough time on the clock. 
Needs to be a goal now. Adama not going to get the rub of the green there to get a hold of the ball. Cancelo will hold it. Janola now in for Footwiz. Just running this one at the corner if he needs to. He's going to lose possession. Time is just dwindling very, very quickly for Levante. Bracket looking like it's going to be reset. Mbappe can't squeeze through. And for all that, they've scored some fantastic goals here. Have foot with their defensive work has been fantastic as well. Levante just haven't been quite able to take those chances in the way they would have thought they could. Whereas foot with every single sniff of a goal that they had, they usually ended up in the back of the net. Here's Mbappe to maybe make it a nervy final moment, but it's a really good save. And it's just an example of exactly what's been happening to Levante. Yeah, absolutely. As the ball gets whipped into the box, does it fall to a white shirt? And Team Footways will reset the bracket. Thrilling, thrilling series here between these two sides. And the question that the only question that I have right now, we know exactly what to get from Footways in this second game. We know exactly what they're going to do. We know how they're going to play. They're going to look to score goals, be creative in the final third. The question that I have is how do Levante react? They have not lost a series in this entire tournament so far. What is the reaction going to be? Is it going to be positive? Are they going to get back into this? Are they going to rally? We've seen a few teams in this tournament. I don't want to throw shade, but R10 being one of them, when they have lost that first game, they've crumbled like a nice cheese. Like a nice cheese? Yes. Any specific kind of cheese? Wensleydale. Wensleydale. It is a crumbly cheese. I'll, I'll let you off with that one. So there you go. It is going to be Footwiz to send us to a bracket reset. Fantastic stuff from them. And, well, will Levante be able to answer back to their very first loss? Find out after this very short break. Don't go anywhere. Mental health and wellness is so important in the world of gaming. For me, mental health is the most underrated thing. It's important to take a break from that competition, to reset yourself. We're all kind of like a, an extended family. We have to look at each other like that could be my brother or my sister. I promote. I promote. I promote and practice positive mental health.
Ladies and gents, welcome back to the FGS Open. My name is Chris Tun, joined by Richard Buckley, of course. And we are in to the bracket reset of the Paris side of this Open qualifier. 5-3 in the end it was for Footwiz against Levante. And Levante, up until this point, had not lost a game. Footwiz kind of put them to the sword with a magnifique performance here in the Paris qualifier. Yeah, they absolutely did. And now, really, it's winner take all. There's no more advantage for being in the winner's or the loser's bracket. You win this game, you will go to the team of the season cup. It's very, very simple. We talked about it before the break. We, I had a little think during the break as well. And Maestro's been in this predicament a lot. He's been mm. in these tournaments. He's been in even huge finals at the E-World Cup and uh, in knockout games there. Perhaps a T has been in these games before. I was actually commentating in February 2020 when he was part of Ajax and he made it to the final with uh, Ajax Danny and they actually lost in that game. So you've got one player who's won huge tournaments. You've got one player in Papsity who has been there but not got over the line on the team of Footways. Ethan has, has been to huge tournaments before. He's been in massive games as well. Nick Snebb really has only been around during the sort of online season and online territory. So a lot to give, a lot to earn and a lot to lose. Into the bracket reset we go. Footwiz from right to left, of course, with Levante left to right. Mbappe maybe trying to get away here. Cover of the defender came across, but surely CR7 in the back post is going to be this one to zero. Fantastic defending. Hakimi controlled on the line as well. Levante living dangerously, but some good defending just about stops the goal. If you're wondering what this second leg's going to start like, incredible pace to this bracket reset. Second set of games. Should be a goal. Has to be a goal. It should be 1 0 to Footwiz right now. R9 in the box. Simple pass across to CR7. And a really good bit of defending on the line to keep it 0 0. Footwiz will be aggrieved with that themselves, no doubt. CR7 to R9 now and we'll go again. That switch ball from Nkunku was looking quite nice, but now it's going to actually leave. Footwear's a little bit bare at the back as Mbappe finds his way through. Can't quite get a shot away. And both teams seemingly wanting to go for this. Which as a commentator, as a fan, you absolutely love to see. Is Mbappe going to latch onto that one? He just has the pace over the defender. Skips inside. CR7 in the back post and Footwear's find the first goal. It's so well worked in Man United fans. Yeah, make the noise if you want. There you go. CR7 finds the lead. For Footwiz, 1-0. Cristiano Ronaldo inside the box is like a shark at a shipwreck. He is dangerous. He is brutal. And you don't expect any other result than the back of the net to be bulging. Mbappe's pace just got him away. And the composure there, the ball roll, scoop turn combination coming in. But Levante will be able to answer back immediately themselves. Mbappe inside the box turns it round on nine. Is he going to be able to wriggle free? Manches the four-touch turn, ball roll across. Can he get a hold of it the second time? I'm asking, not quite. Cancelo will get this one away. Footwiz survivor. Not quite an onslaught from Levante, but they try to answer back immediately. <laughs> Unbelievable work inside the box from R9. I don't know how he managed to keep hold of the ball. CR7 is open every single time at this back post. He's against Hakimi as well. The Moroccan man will not be wanting to defend this one, but you have to be very, very careful if you're Levante. They just about get away with that one. And now Neymar's away down this left-hand side. And now Sanchez back here and covering, covering an R9 will just about trip over. Marquinhos and Van der Sar will clip this one away. Ball from Atal to Neymar. Footways just settling this one down a little bit, maybe. Yeah, exactly what they need to do. <laughs> I mean, that's an incredible ball to Mbappe. CR7, he's free at the back post all the time. Can he put this two in R9? There it is. It's stunning, stunning FIFA once again from the Footways boys. And they're just striding away with it. Two to zero. The pass is everything. That ball into R9, it cut through about four different players. It was a driven ball. 
enable Sierra 7 to come in at the back post. A little bit of left stick dribbling, a little bit of sort of confusion caused from CR7, and R9 is always going to finish that. Mbappe couldn't quite get away there. Footways have been just so ruthless in their attacks, haven't they? Clinical every single time, and the defence is solid as well. There's very little wasted motion. Everything that they're doing has got a purpose. Everything is resulting to something. A lot of these Levante attacks, little balls over the top, little dribbles in and around the box, but it's not finishing with a shot or a chance created. I would say 85, 90% of all the footways build up and all the footways attacks, you're getting a good chance out of it. You're getting a corner, you're getting a shot. It's a good ball though, De Jong over the top to Neymar, can't get there. And you're right, you know, it's it's more direct from footways and they're finding that space and quickly getting something away. Levante, it seems to kind of be the similar story every time they come forward. And that were a perfect example as well of why CR7 is in the team. Just alleviates all the pressure. You get the ball with your goalkeeper, you see him on the left side, you just play a flat kick to him. He's always going to win the header. He's always going to bring it down and you can create, even if it's just three, four in-game minutes of possession that you wouldn't have been able to do previously. Who's going to beat Cristiano Ronaldo for a header on a fullback? Nobody. All right, you could. Some leap on you. Give him a little shoulder in there. <laughs> little elbow in as well. Here we go. Mbappe. Ball in to see our seven at the back post. Unmarked again, pass across. Not quite as precise as you would have liked to have seen from the Portuguese man. R9, though, is he going to skip away here for Levante? No, not quite. The other thing that I like about these footers attacks as well, you saw that ball put into the back post, a little bit hopeful for CR7. They had five players in the attack. It was only Nkunku who was the only person sort of sitting back. Renato Sanchez was in the box. You had both strikers in the box alongside who the crosser was, Neymar. R9 could win it at the back post, good lead. Oh, Renato Sanchez, edge of the box though, goes for the shot. Levante will defend. Just CR7 is always free on his own, is but it? I tell you what, R9 is just bundled himself away. Can he keep getting away from the defenders here? Cancelo's chasing them down, but it's R9 all the way from the halfway line. <laughs> Levante back into it from absolutely nothing, but a sublime goal from R9. A sublime goal from Levante in this game is on. When you need a hero, R9 Ronaldo steps up to the mark. He had no right to score that. He bundled his way through, he used his pace. That is Exactly what R9 is all about, the pace to get away, the strength, and then the delicate finish with the chip over the top of the goalkeeper. A diamond out of the mud right there for R9 Ronaldo and for Lice Levante team. You can see the stats here at half-time. Footways have been dominant in possession, 71 and 69% in the latter stages of the first half and 62% overall possession and a lot of that possession coming in the right hand side of the pitch and also in the attacking areas of the pitch as well. Look at that passing accuracy, what, 78% in the first game, it's now 92%. Yeah, much improved from the side of Footwiz. 2.1 expected goals, they are definitely the team that deserve the lead. Levante though, that little moment that they just had there was kind of initially only a half chance out of absolutely nothing and then R9 gets running gets away from the defenders and as you said it's a, a delicate delicate finish from well a man who's not necessarily known for his delicate finishes is he it's usually smash but this time around sticks in the back of the net here he is now for Levante once again and how big of a confidence builder I just say that they give the ball away in an unbelievably bad position it's been given to R9, four foot whiz. Back to Mbappe. Trying to find the clip ball through for Ronaldo. The red time, they may not well have found its way through, but the defender gets in the way, he's giving it away though. Can they find its way to R9? Not quite. Guess he will get this one away. Levante living dangerously, giving it away there. I thought about to give the ball away again then. Renato Sanchez looked to be in the passing lane. A goal just on the stroke of half time, seemingly out of nothing. For Levante, can they build off that? Can they create a little bit of momentum now? Let's just give the ball to R9, see what we can do. And Mbappe, there you go, out of absolute nothing. Too many times is R9 able to escape away from these defenders. He's punishing Jalo at the back every single time. He's just getting his shoulder in front and he's away. Fantastic goal, Levante two two. The, the Jalo just men against boys at the back there. He's stronger. He's more physical. He's quicker than the centre half. And as soon as R9 gets into that position, you've got a couple of options. You can shoot, you can maybe take an extra touch or just lay it into the path of Kylian Mbappe, who is always going to score. 
Bappe nearly gets a hold of the ball. It is recycled back to Nkunku. Ball in eventually to oh, and He waited for the moment to try and find his way past. Couldn't quite get through. And Neymar will get this one out for Levante. Great fight back as well, I've got to say, from Levante. Yeah, after losing the first set of games, being in this bracket reset right now, this is their first defeat that they've suffered in the entire tournament. A lot of character being shown by this Levante team. Huge bounce back, isn't it? I mean, as you said, they lose their first game and then 2-0 down. The composure is very much there from Levante. Can they go a step further against Footwiz? Can Footwiz start to turn it on again here? Neymar, edge of the box. Ball roll into feet. Mbappe on nine. It would have been a wonderful goal. They're so fast in the attack, but it's a sublime save from the Dutchman. Short to Nkunku. Renato Sanchez to whip it in. Eventually played all the way back. Unintentionally, you would imagine, from Footwiz, but keeping the finger on the button here. It's all one touch in the final third from Footwiz. As soon as he gets into the box, it's instinctive. FIFA from the pair of them. Oh, r nines bundled his way through again! Van der Sar makes the save once more. Levante starting to live dangerously once more. Ball's whipped in. Van der Sar will easily get a hold of that one. Couple of really big chances. The, the first chance was the one. That was the killer moment. Great play inside the box. Played it into R9 and just hit it first time. Instinctive reaction save from Edwin van der Sar. Mbappe now. R9 running He's on done it again. He's in again for Levante. A ball roll goal and it was the 2-0 down from Footwiz. But Levante come back again and again and again. And all of a sudden, they're in the lead. What a game of FIFA this has been. De Jalo has to be on fraud watch at this point. Three occasions, he's been spun by R9. He was in a good position then as well. He's just knocked it past him. Doesn't have the pace, doesn't have the, the physicality for me. He's got 95 strength, 84 aggression. I'm not sure what it is, but he's just not the man for the job right now. It was one of those cards that when it, when it came out, everyone went, oh, well, that's, that's something that looks... Unbelievable, perfect link into Ronaldo Sanchez. The pace, the defending, everything is there. But what's the one that's letting you down here? A little bit of defensive awareness lacking in the final, in the defensive third. A little bit of aggression lacking as well. 84, I want to see that a little bit higher. Cam Styles would bring it right up though, wouldn't it? Makes you wonder. No changes from Footwiz in that respect though. Just ones in the attacking third. A plethora of talent coming on. Janola, of course, Vinicius Jr. as well. Not done from the side of Footwiz just yet. They still have another leg in this one in. Of course, 15 minutes left in the first. After this bracket reset, they forced the second game. But I think if you're Footwiz, you're very frustrated with the goals you've conceded here because... They're all avoidable. It, yeah, they are. Every single one of them. R9 has just had his way with this back line time and time again. And then if you're Levante, well, if it keeps working, just keep giving them the ball and see what happens. That pass in from Vinicius is not quite there. Sometimes when we're commentating FIFA, we've, we've talked about it before we, many a times. R9 is such a premium player. He's so expensive. Oh, Mbappe. Absolutely Ooh. acres of space. And Levante are just walking away with this one. They were 2-0 down after 24 minutes. And out of... Absolutely nowhere, it's 4-2. What's just gone wrong at the back? There was so much space, you could stick a double-decker bus that between Winsley the centre-back and the left-back. That Winsley deal you were talking about, mate. Crumble is the footwiz defence right now, it's just not... I don't understand what's going on, Ginola can't find his way through. That little bit of like pizzazz that they had in that first, first game to reset this bracket. That solid defence as well has, has crumbled. It's been the R9 show, this game. Just before that chance was created, sometimes we say, what does R9 bring to you? Sometimes it's a little bit quiet. This game is a perfect example of why R9 not only has the price tag, but he's as desirable as he is. Ginola now, trying to find a bit of space. Footwear's not out of this one yet. Marquinhos gets in the way. There's still plenty of time here. Bear in mind, this is the first leg of this game. Levante may well have that lead, but Footwiz have a lot of time to find two goals back. It's not a complete disaster. 
This is still achievable. But I think they're, they're going to have to put it out of their mind the way that they conceded those goals. As Levante keep a hold of the ball to try and have that final attack. It, it has to be composure from Footways. They have to forget about this. Yeah, whether it's a coach getting in the ear now and just saying, guys, look, just forget about it. You, you've seen that you can score goals. You've scored loads of goals. scored five in the first game against this duo. One of the, the best traits of a FIFA eSports player is having short-term memory. Not remembering what happened, forgetting all about the previous game. If that pass would have been played a little bit more accurately, then they could have been in for five. Can Footways reduce this deficit, though? Final chance of the game. Ball will be whipped in. It's a good chance for Martins, and he's not the one you want on the end of that. 4-2 will be the score heading into this second leg. Levante take the advantage. They were 2-0 down. Footways were flying. And Levante come back with a vengeance. They will take a two-goal lead heading into the second leg. And it was the R9 show. Absolutely. That first leg right there. An incredible performance from Ronaldo Nazario. Creating, I think it was heavily involved in all four goals. Yep. Uh, Jallo were nightmares about R9 Ronaldo. <laughs> he just couldn't cope with him. The, the no. physicality, the strength, the pace, mm. the ability to shoot on either foot. R9 showed everybody why he is so good and especially when you put that in the hands of Maestro and Papsity who seem to have, have been clicking a little bit now yeah. maybe we we're talking about them being cold not playing a game so far it took them a little bit to warm up it took them that first set of games to get going and look inside that second half they were incredible in the final third yeah, their attacks just seem to always result in goals. And we have a very tantalizing second leg coming up now. It's a two-goal lead for Levante. Heading into that, though, winner takes all. We'll be seeing that right after this quick commercial break. Hey, guys, my name is Jackson, a professional field player. And today I'm going to show you guys some attacking and defensive tips to improve your game. The first thing I'm going to show you guys is how to do a driven cross and where to do it on the pitch. So here I have the ball with my striker. I see my winger is wide. I play him out wide. And then I see my striker and my winger are open. So I play a driven cross and uh, he goes in. Here I have the ball with my striker. Um, I don't want to play my other striker because he has two defenders on him. So I decide to play out wide. And then once I have my, my winger, um, I know my winger is pretty fast. So I take an extra touch. That extra touch sets me up for a perfect driven cross situation. So I double tap square and I see my striker, my winger are open and I want to play the ball in front of him. So that's why I do a driven cross and you guys can see the winger is open and scores. So here I have the ball with my winger. I see my striker is making a run. So I play him with the through ball and then I take an extra touch with my striker and I see my other striker is making a run and I don't want to play him with an art with the driven pass because it's probably going to go directly at him and the defend defender is too close. So I decided to do a driven cross so I can play in front of him. That sets it up for an easy goal. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is turning a defensive sequence into a counter attack. So I'm playing with the 4-4-2 with the CDM. So right there I have two of my CDMs in the middle. And uh, I don't want to be too aggressive because that's going to break the shape of my formation. So I kind of just wait with my CDMs and uh, my defenders, as, as you guys can see, like I'm not pressuring exactly the player on the ball. I'm just waiting. And uh, I see that he plays it wide. So I switch to my uh, my right back and um, I'm waiting for him to do a mistake. I'm not really rushing at him. So right there, I see that he makes the pass and I have my CDMs in the middle in the box. Um, so that's what you get with the 4-4-2, the second variation. So right there, I just make a tackle with my CDM. And as soon as I make that tackle, like I see that my players are, my wingers are pretty wide. And uh, so I just play down my winger. And as you guys can see, I have a lot of space. Um, I play to my striker. And then I do a driven pass to, a, to my other striker because, you know, driven passes are really good this year. Once I play the driven pass, I turn and I see that my other striker is making a run. I play him with the through ball and then I just do a ball roll with the keeper. Whenever you see the keeper rushing at you, you want to do a ball roll and you score. That was it for our masterclass. I hope these tips help you out and see you guys on the pitch.
Ladies and gents, so welcome back to the FGS Open. My name is Chris Tone, joined by Richard Buckley, and we have had an absolute cracker so far here in the Paris Regional Qualifier. It is currently Levante 4, Footwiz 2. After the bracket reset, after the first leg, and what was an inspired performance by the one and only R9. On both sides of the pitch, it has to be said, we were just uh, getting some information through. He was involved in every single goal that was scored in that game in some capacity. And, I mean, if you're Levante, you're feeling good about that. But into the second game we go. Footwiz will be not deterred. Biggest surprise for me, the Jello still on the pitch. <laughs> if yeah. it's real life, you'd be pulled off by now. No, it absolutely would have been, as you'll never walk alone, rings around. Footways fans all over the world will be cheering on Ethan and Nick Sneb right now. Good win in the middle there by Kessie. r nine's running again, and is it just nightmare after nightmare here for the side of Footways? Every time he breaks through, and Dijalo is the one defending, there's got to be a little bit of worry, but that's a really good ball into Mbappe. Look at the back post, Cristiano Ronaldo is arriving, and not can't quite get there. He's seen it a mile off, but he couldn't quite get his head to it. It was Sam Green as well, if it, if it had fallen to CR7. No, it doesn't take an expert to see where Levante saw the weakness was in that back four. They saw that R9 had the better of Dejalo, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them sticking it on him even more in this second leg now. Four footways, I want to see the bounce back. We, we showed real good heart desire in the first set of games. We need to see a replica of that performance oh. now. R9 is just working his magic again, but that last touch a little heavy. More play from Levante as well to sustain. And keep a hold of the ball under that pressure. The ball forward to Mbappe. Neymar's running and Neymar's off. He's got plenty of room here. He has R9 in the middle, maybe rushes that a little bit. Had a little bit more time, you think. Now we'll get it away here for Footwiz and Neymar skips by Kessie. Ball in now to Mbappe. Ball roll is that free kick. Somehow Marquinhos is Nelly winning the ball and somehow Mbappe and Nelly wins it back when he does here. You can't give it away there. Oh, the keeper movement from Levante. You're still going to see it hit the back of the net, but that's inspired. And that's the only thing stopping that from being a goal to Footwiz. And now they have to defend this counter attack. R9 on the other side can't find the pass. Mbappe finds it back, not quite. What an exchange there. Uh, had to be moved across the box for me. R9, unbelievable press high up the pitch. They won the ball back. A uh, huge shot. The goalkeeper move was very good, but there was a player to the left. It was Cristiano Ronaldo. Just move it across the box. Just keep the ball going across. Good ball. Kunku can't find the second one himself, though. Neymar will play this one away. Kylian Mbappe is in now, running away. Is it nightmares again? He's checked inside. Oh, and the deflection still saved. By Edwin van der Sar, goes out for a corner. Quickly taken towards the edge of the box, De Jong now to whip it in, R9 is free! We've had 21 minutes and we could have seen four goals already. This is how end-to-end -end this game has been. It's an unbelievable chance for the Brazilian. There will be more as well. So expansive at the moment. De Jong into Mbappe, he's got plenty of room. The goalkeepers are earning their money here. Another corner to Levante. Where does this one go? Does it go in the middle? Does it go short? It goes out to Frankie De Jong, finds the touch towards the back post. Neymar is there. Not going to happen this time. Another corner ball. You see what exactly what they're trying to do. As soon as they're switching to the next player, they play the corner instantly to fire it to the edge of the box. De Jong in again, Mbappe in the back post this time. That's two green time headers that have not found the target. Well, the first corner was the one that had to be a goal. It was out of nine. Similarly, free header inside the box. He put it wide in the end. Flurry of corners, flurry of chances for both sides in this game so far. Who will keep their composure in the final third? Neymar. To Marquinhos now, and Footwiz pressing for a goal. Plenty of time still. And Kunku now looking to fizz a ball in, taking his time far too long, though. And Messi will escape away. Mbappe, Jalo this time, gets the better of him just about. Gets it out his feet there as well. Atal will lose that ball, though, and eventually will get himself a throw-in. Neymar. 
pass was rushed, but he gets the ball back. Into Mbappe, is he going to fall to Neymar? Not quite. I think he thought he had control of the ball there, did the footwears player. This one will be played away. There's a lot of space on the pitch at the moment for both sides. That's a terrible switch of play. Just about got away with it, under hit, as he went to go from full-back to full-back. Expect a little bit more of this. Now Levante are leading. Possession will be their best friend. Ooh, plenty of room here for R9. Good ball into Mbappe. It's a good save. A really good chance, and Levante really have the better chances so far. It's a good ball out, though, to CR7. What can he do here for Footwiz? Back to Nkungu. That's another huge opportunity, Richard, for Levante. I feel a little dink, a little chip over the goalkeeper. I know you're asking a lot. I know it's really split-second decision-making. But a little dink over him there, it's a guaranteed goal. Oh, nine's off and running again. Messi not going to pull the trigger for the pass. Actually does, and only finds a footwiz player. Footwiz trying to ease themselves into this second leg. That pass from R9 finds its way through. Neymar at the back post now against the defender. One and one. He's gone down like a ton of bricks as Neymar inside the box. Ball roll scooped in. If, if that's me, I'm up. I'm appealing to the referee. Yeah. I'm screaming for it. If I'm defending that, he's gone down too easily. <laughs> Messi now, here for Levante. This game has really been everything we kind of promised, wasn't it? We knew that this triple header of European Opens is, is going to be interesting. This one's really been fantastic to kick things off, Neymar. Cross goal, he did look offside. That's why I try not to get too excited immediately. And indeed was called to have made his move too early by the assistant referee. See our seven, uh, touch was heavy. And there we go, that will be the end of the first half of the second leg. And Levante... Look at retain. that extreme. Ah, yeah, I know they've retained that two-goal lead, and you know what, they've been the ones looking for the goal that little bit more. 2.6 XG here in the first half. We can go over to the shooting tab and see where those five shots have come from in this first half. It's been one-way traffic for Levante. And really, they should have made a couple, at least, of those chances that they've had count. Is it worrying that they haven't put this game to bed? Yes, them? extremely. Because it's gave Footways a real big opportunity still in this game. If if they'd have put three of those goals away, two of those goals away, you're coming into the second half, five, six, two down, thinking... It's game. Because yeah. then Footways also have to change how they play. At the moment, Footways don't have to change anything. They can just keep on playing the way they feel comfortable, whether it's in a 4-4-2, with the tactics and instructions pretty similar. Two goals can be turned over very quickly. We've seen how sort of destructive they can be in the final third. Great second half incoming. Chance for Neymar to be destructive here. Ball in, back post, Cristiano Ronaldo headed back across the R9. Can't get there. De Jong's clearance is poor though, and Renato Sanchez will pick it up. R9 now. Back to Rodano Sanchez and Kunku's going to fizz it in. Oh, nice. Surely this is a goal. Oh, he's red timed it. The goal is staring him in the face. And R9, for one of the first times in this game, does not convert. Huge moment. Mbappe now. The attack just continues. Composure from Footwiz. Is it still there? And can Levante punish them? That's the question. Still, it's still real, nearly a goal. He red-timed it, R9, and still hit the post. That's one of those that you start thinking about. When this game goes into the 65th, 70th minute, if you're still trailing by two goals, that's playing in your mind on repeat. It won't be the last chance, though. No. With the way that this game has gone, it absolutely will not be. But this next goal, whoever scores it, it is so, so crucial for Footwiz that it is them. A Levante one. To make it three would really be interesting, but another opportunity here for Footways Mbappe in the box, can't get the ball out of his feet. The double tap pass is fantastic, but at times it just means the attacker has to take that extra touch and he didn't have time to. You've got to settle it before you can play the ball straight away. Down that right-hand side, they're certainly having a lot more success down the other side with Cristiano Ronaldo, and Ronaldo almost seems to be the player receiving the extra pass, the player receiving the, the cross to the back post. Almost playing like another striker, just off. Like a, a left forward yeah. sort of role. 
and it's working well for Footwiz, but they haven't been able to make a count so far. Mbappe, though, ball's fizzed in. R9's making the room, and he's finding the room. Oh, it's a good save once again. I wasn't expecting the shot to come, but Van der Sar was. Footwiz need to find a goal. 63 minutes, whipped in towards the back post. R9 this time, red times. Mbappe will continue this attack, though, and Kunku. Ball into CR7 isn't going to quite make it, and it will be Levante to play this one away. Footwiz are running out of time. Ball forward, Mbappe is not going to get there, and R9 is back doing his defensive work. They can definitely get back into this oh, game. Ball. We, we pass us like that over the top. They'll start creating a lot of danger and desperation in this Levante defence because the press is going to come. You can see the pause queued there. The tactics are going to be changed. There's going to be an intensity in this final 20 minutes from Footways. Neymar trying to wriggle for a good defending from Footways. And they will play this one away. 20 in game minutes to go. Two goals does it seem a lot. Mbappe bearing down on goal. Neymar's going to be played in now. He's got a little bit of space to play with here as well. And unfortunately cannot find the pass across. That will be a corner. And that will be a pause coming on through. And what changes will they make? That is the question. We'll go back to that in a second because we will now have to take the player's feed. It's still doable, this for Footways, oh. but they are running out of time. I, I think the press has to start coming now. What is it, 15, 20 minutes in game to go? They need to go very, very shortly. Yeah, the press has to come. They've got a corner in, in a good position. They're high up the pitch. They are still creating chances as well. It's not like they've been out of the game completely and they're trying to fight their way back into it. They've had opportunities. They've had big opportunities as well in this second leg to get back into the game. <sighs> I just don't know if they're not going to be able to not concede again. Footways now not quite throwing the kitchen sink, but there's people on. Ginola back post heads it across as well. Is this one going to get pulled away? And unfortunately, that is something we're going to have to figure out. But yeah, I think the, the score line was nil nil at the top, so we'll just get that reset. Uh, yeah. with the correct score underway but we'll play from the corner again we'll play from the 72nd minute and all will be resolved very shortly indeed just going back to what we were saying a bit more time now to sort of dissect where we're at in the game we've seen it a lot over the last couple of days where they have had the opportunity to go forward a team trailing in the last sort of 15 20 minutes and they go constant pressure they put all the players on get forward and sort of stay forward it means there's a lot of space in behind you there's a lot of space for R9, for Mbappe, for Delson Martins, Neres off the bench. These players who are insanely quick, who can create some do. So I think there's more sort of... If I, I would much rather be the team pressing because I've got a, I know what I'm doing rather than the team that's trying to hold on. As soon as a team starts to turtle up, typically you see goals conceded. So... Even if you are the, the team who's in front and you're getting pressed, you've still got to have some element of attacking intent in the final 15, 20 minutes. It's going to be fascinating, this final. It will be. We will get it underway as soon as we possibly can. But whilst we do sort it out, we are going to go for a quick break. Don't go anywhere. The resumption of this final will be coming just after this quick break. So, in the second variation of corner, we're going to be talking about we're gonna be using it when our opponent moves the keeper to the first post. Hola amigos, my name is Jaime Alvarez, also known as Gravesen, professional FIFA player for Team Dogs Gaming, and today I'm gonna be giving you a masterclass about uh, set pieces, uh, where we're gonna be talking about free kicks and corners, so I hope you enjoy it. Scoring a direct corner in FIFA 22, it's pretty difficult because almost every time the center backs uh, clear the ball. So we're gonna go with two different kind of options. We're gonna go with a creative run or a player lock to create a finesse situation. So the first thing to know is how to do this corner, this set piece. So first thing, we're gonna press R1 to call our second player to a short pass. Then we're gonna activate the player lock uh, pressing both sticks in then we are gonna pass the ball with an X to our player with uh, who we activated with the player lock and then we're gonna green time finesse it to the back post 
And the second option is gonna be a cross to the back post and an extra header to our strikers to create a good chance. The first thing to do is press L1 until we select our player who is nearest to the penalty kick. We're gonna select him and we're gonna just give it a bar of power so the ball can catch a lot of height. And the thing we have to do is do an extra header so another one of our strikers can uh, score the goal. So in this second chance, we're gonna extra header it and he's gonna miss it, but we create a good chance. If we were talking about free kicks, in my opinion, the best way to approach them is about confusing your opponent. The first thing we're gonna do is place R1 and L2 to call two more people to come over. Then, uh, as we have a situation from the left side of the box, with our main striker, we're gonna press uh, square and X for our player to create a run inside the box. Then, when we do that, uh, if our opponent doesn't defend uh, that run, we're gonna place R1 and X for a pass to Phil Foden and an extra pass to score the goal. So, this was all for today. This was the masterclass about free kicks and corners. Hope this creates a lot of good chances for you to score more set pieces and we'll see you on the pitch. So, see you guys. Ladies and gents, welcome back to the FGS Open, and we are still just awaiting the game, getting kicked up and ready to go, but what a game it has been so far. Levante still with that two-goal advantage in the second leg after the bracket reset as well. They haven't lost a game all day until they ran into the Footwears boys, who managed to put them to the sword the first time of asking, but we are into the second leg. If you did miss any of the goals, though, we have plenty from the first one after this bracket reset, and here we go. It Richard, there was some crazy goals in this one, and uh, Dejalo will be lucky to be wearing a footwear shirt after this weekend, I would say. Yeah, certainly. We started the sort of proceedings with a great finish there, and then Kylian Mbappe was at the heart of everything. Cristiano Ronaldo, a couple of touches inside the box. He played into R9 as he slotted into the back of the net. You see Dejalo trying to tug him back. In. Unfortunately, couldn't get anywhere near R9 Ronaldo. Dinked it over the goalkeeper. Levante doubled their goal scoring prowess with R9 Ronaldo ball roll into Kylian Mbappe Ronaldo at the I think at the back post was actually on as well uh, for the extra pass R9 Ronaldo once again causing the Jalo nightmares and three quickly became four through Kylian Mbappe and Cristiano Ronaldo partnering it was an excellent first leg to this bracket reset you know into this second game we talked about it already Levante had not lost a game up until that point foot was reset it now we find ourselves in the second leg and they were absolutely emphatic with Levante in that first leg nearly ready to go we're still getting the lobby rebuilt and we will be commencing into the game very very shortly but what's the route for footways here? We'll be getting it back to that point where it was with around 20 in-game minutes left to go. They had a corner as well at that same time. They were about to whip it in, and of course we had our issue. So what's the route back for them here? Is it a full send quite yet, or is it a case of, let's take this corner, then we'll get to our side where we were, etc., and then go from there after the corner? It has to be kind of full send at this point, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, You have to go for the game. If anything, it, look, it's, it's unfortunate what's happened here with sort of the stoppage in play, but it might actually help Footways because you, you get a couple of minutes to calm down. You get a couple yep. of minutes to talk about how you're going to approach this reset and this restart right now in this pivotal final 15 minutes in the game. You get to actually talk a little bit in depth. What tactics are we going to use? Do you want to make any substitutions? If we're going to be restarting the game with full stamina on the players, then we can press in a certain way you can pretty much go team press constant pressure for the rest of the game so, uh, with no yeah. real consequences so all these things will be getting discussed right now I'm sure uh, uh, numerous different people are going to be helping as well within footways um, what the decision is going to be 
after the end of the 20 minutes. We have to wait and see because Levante are in a dominant position still. Their goals still count. Nothing uh, has changed in that regard. There's still two goals up with 20 minutes yes. left to play. What are they going to... I mean, they're probably not talking about anything because they don't talk, uh, Maestro and Pap City. <laughs> so they're probably silent right now, listening to some music, waiting for the game to restart. But yeah, lots of if, buts and maybes in this final 20 minutes. It's just one of those un unfortunate things. But, you know, thankfully we do have the competitive side of things on FIFA where we can reset the game in the fairest way possible when these things do happen. So we will get that one back up and running shortly. That two-goal advantage is still very much there. It's still in Levante's hands, though, isn't it? Let let's be honest. that They don't really have long left to actually just hold on. And would you agree that they have definitely been worth their money for this win so far? Yeah. Yes and no. I think... When you come from the winner's bracket, you get the advantage, don't you? You get the ability to lose yeah. in the regional final. Footways were incredible in that first two sets of games. Have they run out of steam, potentially, in this game? Or is it Levante just getting going? Were they in gear two, mm. gear three in the first set of matches? And in this bracket reset, we've shown why they were unbeaten up to meeting Footways in the final. Another sort of element of this, maybe is there a little bit of pressure on Footways to matchmakers in being two teams at the Team of the Season Cup. For his already a Masters team with Jamie and Marco. Is there a little bit of pressure there from Ethan and Nick Sneb to say, you know what, we can do that as well. <laughs> they might have been chosen, but we, Possibly. We, we are going to be there as well. And look, is there a major tournament? Is it a major tournament without Maestro being there? He has been so influential <laughs> over the last couple of years in FIFA Esports. We all know the celebration. FIFA Nations Cup winner with France a couple of years ago with Dax. He's so, so charismatic. He's so sort of loved by not even just FIFA Esports scene, but a lot of France and the French media as well. Everyone gets behind him. So I think it, both teams deserve to be there. I, I wish we could give two spots out. <laughs> from this Paris region, but unfortunately, only one of them can be there. Will it be Levante? Will it be Footways? Time will tell. Yeah, it will tell indeed. But of course, it was Levante coming from the winner's bracket side of things. But for Footways, they had to get through a loser's bracket game and they were really showing off their skills. We've got some highlights to run through of that as they did advance on through. And it, it's kind of indicative of their performance. You know, when they have moved forward, it's quick, it's fast, it's pacey all the time. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, Seen a few highlights from an upcoming game that myself and Brendan Smith are going to be it's watching. Actually, see, I thought we watched <laughs> I, the miscommunication there from my point of view. I'm apologies. looking forward to this but, game as well. This will be a good one. Oh. Yeah, exactly. There's plenty of good games left to go as well. So that was the Highlights from the Lose Bracket Finals from the next game that we're going to be watching. Teasing. After this we're teasing. Yeah, I'm just, just letting you know what's going on over there as well. I can see that we're nearly just about getting there into this game. We should be good to go very, very shortly. Um, Let's go predictions then. I think this is it's an easy one to kind of side with, but it changes the second that footways find themselves a goal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if they were to get that goal, it, we've seen how good they are in the final third. We've seen how good they can press, how good they can attack. If they were to get that goal and make it 4-3, it starts getting a little bit nervy all of a sudden in the Levante camp. But we just don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. And that's the beauty of it. Um, we've seen so many different types of games here at the FGS Open. We've seen tight matches. We've seen unbelievable sort of end-to-end -end matches. I, I really don't know what's going to happen. And I'm excited to know what's going to happen. I feel like it's Christmas Eve all of a sudden. I early. know what's coming up. Early. I'm a little bit early. I know <laughs> what's coming up, but I'm excited to unwrap it. Yeah, not too long to go. Uh, I do believe we now have highlights from Footwiz's uh, loser's bracket final run, of course. They had to find themselves their way through. and This time, this is it, isn't it? It's a very snappy play. It's, it's about those quick passes that they always seem to find. Yeah, absolutely. And this was a really big performance as well, taking on Atlantide Wave. Two players in LJR Pashoto and Fuma, who have both won trophies. Uh, solo last year in FIFA 21. Coming into FIFA 22, they were a really, really formidable side. They went 2-1 uh, up, did Footways, Ethan and Nick Sneb. And as soon as that second leg got underway, it took them about an hour in the second leg. But as Atlantide Wave poured more players forward, they couldn't stop the black and green army flying forward. Pele 
into Vinicius Junior. And that was the game right there. That was our four. We've got to the regional final. The, I wouldn't say dismantled, but the dispatched of Levante in the first set of games. Now we are in the bracket reset with 20 minutes left to play. Yeah, we're now nearly ready to go out and see. I, I believe we may the well selection. be loading in. You see, you know what? It's quite handy that we've got that big LED screen over there. It is, yeah. You know, we can save. Usually there's mic on there, but this is a lot more useful than that. So here we are. We're nearly ready to load into this game. 20 minutes to go. I believe we should. Seconds well, we away. Should, I, I mean, we are literally moments away. I can see they are loading in, and we're going to get back into it now. Still do or die for Footways. Unfortunately, they can't reset back to the point where they did have that corner, but they will get themselves on the attack straight away. 20 in-game minutes to find something after this reset. What's the plan? Well, well, not, so concede. not, not conceding immediately, which they may well do here. After all that time, is Neymar going to punish them with Levante? Renato Sanchez just about gets back in. Footways push this one forward. Mbappe is through here, potentially, not quite. Back to Neymar, beats his defender. Mbappe is still there. Is he going to cover the pass? No, it's the ball whipped in. It's a poor one. And Levante will survive that attack. And even though oh. they're trailing by two goals, they've started the game with full stamina, meaning that they can press like they've never pressed before for the majority and the rest of this game. Team press, constant pressure will be applied here from Footways. It's going to be a rampant 13 minutes. Oh, nine. Pressing forward, ball into Mbappe. Is the deflection going to fall to Cristiano Ronaldo? Edge of the box with Ronaldo Sanchez. It's do or die now for Footwiz. Inside the box is Mbappe. The reverse, the last to go. And a great save. save. Van der Sar to the rescue. They still need to. They have 11 minutes. Mbappe now. Inside the box, whipped in towards oh, nine. They can't quite find it. And Kunku back to Marquinhos. Ronaldo Sanchez. Inside the box, does he just unleash one? Turn and left and right, it's not the player you want the Levante to survive. Incredible save from Edwin van der Sar. Maybe a regional final winning save from Edwin van der Sar. If that goes in with 10 minutes left to play, there is going to be non-stop traffic coming in the Levante side. Good ball. Oh, nine. Bad ball to CR7. Levante get the ball back in every second they have it. Footwiz maybe feel it slipping away. They're going to lose the ball hey, again. It. The pressure from Levante. Unrelenting. R9 now escaping away. He's got men inside the box as well. Surely the pass across comes, but really good defending by Footwiz. They need to get it out. They need to score from this opportunity. R9. Mbappe gets away and running. Fast and frantic from Footwiz. Back inside to R9. The pass is on if he needs it, but he escapes on through. The defender blocks him out the way. And the tackle from Militao is absolutely massive. They give it away again. Ball to R9 is absolutely superb, oh my goodness! Three in-game minutes plus added time to go, and Footwiz set up a dance with destiny in the final few moments. Two minutes remaining, we said they had to score. Edible Atau did excellent winning the ball back. He won the first tackle, he won the second tackle, and just passed it away. <laughs> He's playing right wing when that ball's going in. It's come down the other end, a driven pass into R9, Green time shot into the near post. Levante will have kickoff. They have to defeat the first and the second wave of pressure. If they can get past that first wave of pressure, they will find themselves to a team of the season cup. But Footways will throw everything at Levante. Kitchen sink, fridge, every single kitchen utility you can think of is going into the attack. But look at this for Levante. It's the bluff. Oh, he's not going to get the second chance. They're going to give it away. Nobody would have expected them to go forward, not least Footwiz. One final opportunity for Footwiz to send us to extra time. Neymar now into Mbappe's feet. Looks corner. for the pass, it's going to be a corner ball. And this will be the final moment. Which way do they go with this one? Neymar into the back post. This is going to be won by Footwiz player into the box. CR7 still there. Will Van der Sar beat him to it? He will. Surely this goes out. Is that going to be another corner ball? No. It is not. That is Ed Levante will secure the win and their place at the team of the season cup in April. What a game. Hectic final three minutes right there. If Levante would have conceded, why on earth have they not took that to the corner? Ooh. He's literally in on goal, R9. He had so much room, he could have dribbled to the corner, he could have just started doing kick-ups. 
I respect it so much, though, <laughs> at the same time. It's, it's ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous that they went for it. But I think that was it, though, wasn't it? The foot was, were like, right, okay, we've got to send everybody forward. And then Levante are like, Ping all right, you know what? Actually, we, we, we have the men to push forward here. We're going to have a quick look at it to see what happens. Look, we kick it off yet. R9 passed it out, and you just think, right, this is surely going backwards. Messi turns. R9 in control by one of the Levante <laughs> players. And he says, right, see you later. Let's put this one to bed. It's a poor finish. It is a poor it is, finish. It is a poor finish. And then that gives the opportunity for Footwiz to then go forward and have their final attack, which unfortunately did not result in anything for them. Yeah, if you just see the ball goes out wide here to Neymar, the ball all scooped in into Mbappe. I, I, I don't know if there was maybe room to get down the byline. The corner comes in. And in this particular right here, they've not switched the corners to the, the max notch. So they've only got like three players in the box, meaning that they don't have a lot to aim at. As Van der Sar comes out for this and he doesn't clear it, I fully thought we might have got a corner, we might have seen another chance. It got cleared out. It was a 100 mile an hour <laughs> final 20 minutes of the game. Oh. I mean, commiserations to Team Footwiz because they did everything in their power to potentially seal a spot at the Team of the Season Cup. But Levante just about <laughs> eked it out. Oh my word, what a fantastic game that was in the Paris opening. It's plenty to be broken down by Mike and Rachel. My goodness me, what a game. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and that's only the second time, Mike, isn't it, that that's happened at the winner's bracket. It's gone to a reset, and the winners have actually got the job done. We saw that happen yesterday, didn't we, with Casa and Movistar there. We thought Movistar, coming through that lower bracket, were going to take that open spot, but they didn't. So, Mike, let's just chat about that. Let's just chat exactly how Levante did that, because obviously it's Maestro. Pap City, we were speaking about the possible lack of communication and it seemed that that was the case, wasn't it? Before we entered that bracket reset in the first matchup, they're losing 5-3. What did you make first of the first matchup, the 5-3 one, and then we'll go into the reset? Well, first off, were you not entertained? Because we built the narrative. Everyone was looking forward to the <laughs> Paris region in particular. This lived up to the hype. It was yeah. back and forth. Even if they were converting or they weren't converting, it was end-to-end, -end, all out attack on both sides and a lot of really intricate skill combinations and cancellations. I was extremely impressed. There's a couple goals that I didn't even know were possible to score with levels of consistency really in FIFA 22. That was high level. Watch that back. Enjoy it. And they have a saying, Rachel, less is more. So they needed less of that communication. I was watching Maestro's stream because he had that up. There's not a lot of talking. He's jamming the music. He's replying to the chat. He's got uh, like another day in the office type of stream here. I was learning French. I, I, everything was going down. Very relaxed. He was comfortable. He's been here before. Uh, and I, I, actually, I hope to see more of uh, Footwiz, I guess the second Footwiz. I, I, I don't know how we but should second, classify because yeah. they have multiple teams. Yeah, but I, I want to see more of them. I was super impressed with their gameplay and, and how they attacked and how they defended and just everything that we had. It was on display. If you can't tell. I'm revved up a little bit. My energy, <laughs> ugh, uplifted. I and love what, when a final lives up to the hype. And Mike, you said you were watching Maestro's stream. Please tell me he did a celebration. Does Mbappe, where did he go? I mean, he, he didn't give us some of the classics, but you know, he, he was there. He was interacting. You know, I heard the Souvon play. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm about to get some French sayings. Watch out. My bonjour game is going way through the roof. I'm improving. I got a few different things now, but no, it was, um, it's not a lot of talking between uh, him and Paps. There isn't, but there's a little bit here and there. And I think Maestro's English has actually improved as well because uh, I heard Rich talking about that Maestro doesn't know a lot of English. I think he knows more than you're giving him credit, Rich. Well, that's going to come in handy, isn't it? Especially pairing up with Pap City um, for that April Team of the Season Cup, of course. But, Mike, let's get into some highlights now from that reset then to see how it unfolded. I think this is leg two. Here we go. Leg two. So this is when it was 4-2 to kick things off here. And we thought it looked quite decisively completed, didn't we, by Levante there. But Footwiz, they did come back and had a great last 15 minutes or so. If he didn't miss time that, it would have been a goal uh, for Footwiz much earlier. As you see that Elastico, you're seeing the traditional fantastic goalkeepers, which has been a theme of every broadcast green timed, kind of fakes towards the inside 
Uh, throws off the goalkeeper movement there. It's a beautiful goal. I'm telling you, if you want to get better at FIFA, uh, if you'd like to analyze some high-level gameplay, watch these matchups back. There's just so many different mind games. And something that I really appreciated from both teams is they took so much risk that we got to witness a lot of mistakes. Um, and with mistakes, of course, comes opportunity, and it was risk to reward. So it wasn't just random mistakes, but we did see them, whether it was defensive pressure or, or the press actually being on. Uh, and we haven't necessarily seen that as much with some of the 2v2 teams. A lot of them have been a little more passive and kind of picking their moments. Yeah, and finally, Mike, I want to ask you again a quick word on footwears. They came all the way through that lower bracket, didn't they? I think six times going through that. Obviously, they couldn't make one single loss there because we know it's double elimination and they'd already dropped down from that winner's bracket. So for them to bounce back in the way they did and take it all the way to Levante, which shows how strong this duo is. And it's just a shame that Footwiz obviously has such depth in their squad as well, already fielding, of course, a team in the, the last 16 in April. It's too bad we don't get two teams from some of these regions because uh, they, they came in, they forced the reset, and, and like I said, super entertaining FIFA. Uh, if you're a fan of the game and if you're watching this stream, I'm sure that you are, uh, you were definitely happy to, to watch those matches. You would have taken another set, I'm sure. I'm sure Ethan and Nick have got a couple more fans as well. But Mike, um, what are you going to break down for us in your analysis presented by PlayStation? I'm excited to see which goal you pick. Well, we talk about R9 constantly, and I just want to show the R9 effect. It's actually unbelievable. 1v4, catches them sleeping, very aggressive move here. And it's a mix of the speed, the strength, the explosion, but then having the touch, the finesse, the offensive awareness. Look at this finish. You thought he's going to bumble through, and then he has the chip, this gorgeous chip. Composure was not lost. My favorite goal throughout uh, both, both the matchups, and there were so many that you could take away, uh, but I really enjoyed that because I just felt as if, you took a moment and you went for it. It was kind of risky, but you caught people sleeping. The back line was a little bit flat. And then you were able to have that R9 body control and the beautiful finish. Mike, R9 doesn't bumble through anything. He's a class act over there. Anyway, he got the job done, of course. Mike, thank you so much for your insight as always. Another open ticked off. We are going to head to a break. And after the break, we have a very special guest joining us. And of course, we have the Frankfurt Open as well. Come back and join us in a second.
day of the FGS Open presented by PS5. My name is Rachel Stringer and next to me is Chris Tan. Oh, he's stopped the studio so big. I stopped, I thought, is it, I, I I stopped too early. Am I not in the right spot? Have you stopped too early? Who, I thought who he was walking, walking with me here. Um, <laughs> Chris, we've had an epic day so far. We're halfway through our third and final day. You just casted this one. This one lived up to expectation, didn't it? The Paris Open just remind everyone what happened. They, they weren't lucky enough to be here a few moments ago. What you what happened was a fantastic game, to be honest with you. Uh, it was a lot better than my walking, apparently. But at the same time, uh, what a performance it was from Levante, of course, for them. They hadn't lost a game up until that point. And to have the composure to not go through the, the loss against Footways initially, and then, of course, to go through the delays and still have the composure to hold on to that one goal lead in the end. It's fantastic for them, and I'm sure they'll be a threat when it does come to April. Absolutely. Your best one of casting so far? Yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. Well, let's leave Paris and let's go. Ta ding! Frankfurt. Oh, very nice. I'm there. really Didn't clever. Look? Yes. I mean, they were told, like, I wasn't sure what colour Frankfurt would have been, but of course, Germany. Yeah, yeah. makes a lot of there sense. There we go. We're going to German. Oh, Germany next. German next. We're going to Germany next for Frankfurt, of course. This one's going to be epic as well. Really looking forward to this one. So we've got Nom Esports taking on Borussia Esports. So, going to be a massive clash there. Uh, how excited, Chris, are you for this one? Very excited. It's the second of the three European games in a row. And we've all kind of been looking at these ones and sort of saying to ourselves, right, this is as the games that everyone will be looking at these teams and thinking these are the ones with a really good chance to go in against those Masters teams. We've got one out of three so far. The second one should be good as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys at home as well, I'm sure a lot of you are massive FIFA fans. And if you want to actually up your game and get a little bit better as well, this is a chance to do just that. You can join in with these PlayStation tournaments. They're putting them on weekly, our PlayStation. It's just a time for you to compete and get some prize money for yourself and some great in-game um, forms as well. So just head on over to compete.playstation.com, sign up. And yeah, you never know, that could be, I guess, the platform that boosts you to be a pro in the future. So yeah, check those out. Okie dokie, well, welcome back then. And I said before the break, I'm very excited that we have a special guest joining us ahead of this Frankfurt Open. And I believe, Chris, we can reveal him right now. Nick Luigi from Leno Esports. Mm. Welcome to the show. Very excited for you to be joining us here. I'm going to ask you first, where are you joining us from, Nick? And, and how are you doing? Hello and welcome. I'm really happy to be here in the, in the great show. And uh, I will join you from Germany, uh, south of, uh, in the south from Stuttgart. I think you know. Stuttgart, there you yes. go. Nick, um, how much have you been enjoying the last three days of this 2v2 competition? Because in the studio, we've been having so much fun. I'm sure you've kept your eye across a couple of matches as well. I, I really like the 2v2 and I watched a lot, um, a lot because I think 2v2 is really really great because the players can do more uh, themselves and uh, have to practice a lot uh, in the team and uh, for myself i really also like it to play 2v2 for me it's more exciting than one one versus one i really like it yeah it's a bit more fun isn't it nick as well we can see the players they really enjoy it as well i'm gonna put you on the spot nick if you could pair up with any fifa pro to go into a 2v2 battle, who would you have next to you competing alongside you? That's an interesting uh, question. I think not easy because <laughs> I, I have a lot of good friends in the, in the FIFA competitive uh, scene, especially in Germany. But uh, I will think I would uh, choose MOBA because you have really, really great uh, courses. And uh, I think that's really, really nice for two versus two. So, Nick, I, I mean, you know, when you're looking towards 2v2, for you, is there any change in the meta in terms of what players you want to be using, or is it still the same as 1v1? I think um, the meta is, is really um, close to 1v1. Uh, in my opinion, R9 is 
uh, the T is the best best player and best writer. Maybe you can use another tall player like uh, Cristiano Ronaldo because of the crosses and the headers. Um, that's maybe a, a, a bit different, but uh, the most uh, thing you have to recognize is that you have another player you can play uh, yourself, and that's why you have to practice uh, the 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 passes. Uh, the uh, you have to uh, practice a lot uh, that you uh, that you play good uh, in a team. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Nick, I want your thoughts now on this Frankfurt Open. I'm not sure if you've just seen the loser bracket final, but Borussia Esport absolutely demolished focus there. Obviously, we know that Mo Alba was in that focus team, still the reigning mm. champion. He still hasn't got that title taken away from him. 6-1 uh, overall. Uh, what were your thoughts on that matchup and how it unfolded? Uh, yes, I, I watched the game. Uh... Borussia Esports against Fortress and the uh, result was really clear but, but the matches was close I think um, and I hope uh, Borussia can uh, now win the first game and then we have uh, another exciting rematch I hope. Yeah, well, they're taking on Nom Esports now. Obviously, yes. they're ranked number 12th seed, so we wouldn't particularly have expected them to get all the way to the winner's bracket final. Borussia, number two seed. I'm going to put you on the spot for the second time uh, this afternoon, Nick. Which way do you think this one will play out? It's, it's a hard game, I think. Both, both the teams play really good and they are really prepared for the grand final now. Um, Norm Esports beat Borussia in the in the final of the winner bracket, but it was also very close. That's why for me there is no advantage for the both team. I think it will be close, and I'm I I want to have a, a have a nice game. Yeah, sit on the fence, Nick. That's a good idea. And that match you were just talking about, 3-2 to Nom in the last round of the Swiss, like you're saying, round five. Nick, you're going to stick with us. I hope you watch this match and really enjoy it as much as Chris and I are going to as well. I'm going to throw it over to the casters now to enjoy this Frankfurt Open. Richard and Brandon, enjoy it, boys. Thank you very much, Rachel, Chris, and of course, the legend that is Nikki Luji joining us on the broadcast. I mean, this is the last stop in Europe, Richard. That is the honest truth. It's the last stop in Europe. We're in the Frankfurt Regional Final, and as you can probably expect, there was a lot of German teams in there, but there's one team trying to spoil that German party, and they go by the name of Nom Esports. It's an unbelievable duo of Nom Nisa and Yuval Belly in there. This plans to be a great game because they've already matched before earlier on in the bracket. Yeah, they have. Uh, as Nick and Rachel were just alluding to there, it was a 3-2 win for Nom Esports. <sighs> Nom Esports in both Nisa and Yuvo Belly really broke out of the scene during the 2021 season where it was all remote. you got to think, now it's coming into FIFA 22 and there's LAN just around the corner. They're going to be biting at every single opportunity and hoping to get to that Team of the Season Cup. And the team they're playing against, let's just say, are feeling very confident right now. They've just beat Focus Clan six goals to one. And we'll talk about this right now because that team, Richard, is not just made up of the current world champion still with Moalba, but also Sakul. They didn't just beat them. They absolutely demolished them. Six goals to one. Leg one concluded at four goals to one. And in the second leg, they just continue to just keep moving forward with that momentum, Richard. So they've been really, really impressive, even with a, a small drop down to lose a bracket they've only conceded seven goals across knockout FIFA action have this team of Borussia Esports well they've only lost one team in the knockout bracket and that was Norm Esports as well uh, Borussia you can see a number of goals here that have been scored that was the fourth we went to leg number two it took them into the second half to get the first on the score sheet killing Mbappe from a throwing uh, making sure that this game was wrapped up as we go into the final 20 minutes. Love a bit of interchange play from Ronaldo, Mbappe, all linking up. Dicked over the goalkeeper from killing Mbappe. R9 wasn't needed for the pass across the box and a comfortable victory for Borussia Esports. Well, we are ready to jump into this game now. We are happy to say so as well. It's a rematch, as we said, from earlier in the bracket. 
and potentially so. This could be another bracket reset, but for that to happen, Borussia have to win this first two-legged game, Richard. It plans to be a really exciting affair, this one, and, and what's more exciting is that Nom Nisat is fresh off the plane. He's just arrived in Hamburg. He's actually just flown to Germany for the next couple of days. You've got uh, obviously, Elias' Christmas Cup, if you don't know those online tournaments that he has been running pretty much every single day for pro players to practice in a 2v2 or a 1v1 format. as a 30,000 euro tournament he's running in a few days' time, and there's 32 players that will be there. If you're playing all those games on sort of connecting to the Frankfurt server from Israel, and they were super successful, imagine what he can do now while he's in Germany. Nom Nisa, expect a very, very good performance from Nom Esports. We've just had a bracket reset in Paris. Will we get another one right here? It's going to be Borussia from right to left in the white top and green shorts and in the dark blue and black strip from left to right. It's going to be not. And just a word as well, Richard, on Borussia Esports. They have been making some noise across the last couple of years in the FIFA scene, especially in team competitions. E-Club World Cup comes to mind, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. A uh, really good performance from Borussia in Milan last February uh, 2020, where they actually finished top four, beating Fnatic in the quarterfinals. That, that was there. a great performance. It was uh, it was Jeffrey and the Gaccio. Of course, the Gaccio no longer part of Borussia. It was fresh blood, fresh German blood in terms of BMG Lefty, who uh, came and joined the team. He was the qualifier one champion back last year in the Global Series and one of those other German names that popped onto the scene. Here comes Nomi Sports now with our nine. What's a save from Pejek to keep the Israelis out. From going one goal to the good. They have been a formidable duo. Have the two non-players, Yuval Belli and Nom Nisat, they're coming forward looking for that chance still and it's another brilliant save. They were teammates last year, Richard, for Israel in the E-Nations Cup. Remember rightly they were in England's group, I believe, in the sort of build-up to that E-Nations. So they were putting up some unbelievable performances and there's no wonder why they're doing well in another team competition, Richard. They have just got that experience of being in a team, working together, pulling their weight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you consider what they've done and the, the progress that they've made, there's no surprise that they're here in a regional final. Corner played short. Sanchez whips it in. Oh, he did well there, but Quinos did even better in the air to stop the oncoming run, which actually was from Mark Quinos, who came all the way up the field to be involved in that attack. Just going back to that chance that Nom created in the first 10 minutes, it has to be a goal. It was an incredible save from Petr Cech, but it's a golden opportunity. You see a little bit of a shape here from Nom as well. Lots of bodies behind the ball, a hopeful cross into the box, not going to fall to anybody of note. Fafana, to build up with Renato Sanchez and Mbappe all involved. And has really been an exciting time for Sort of the Israel FIFA scene over the last couple of years. Roe Feldman, the real sort of man behind it all. Chance Sanchez of all people somehow squeezes it in. Keeper looked like he got a hand on that, but he put it into his own net. It was a really nice play to actually get into the position, but as soon as Renato Sanchez picked it up, I didn't know what the final result was going to be. Somehow just pushing it past the goalkeeper into the near post. And Borussia Esports 1-0 up. With one of the most unlikely goal scorers, to be completely honest. It was Renato Sanchez who remains ever popular in so many of the teams with a strong link he'll give you. He's Portuguese too, and he's an unbelievable box-to-box -box midfielder. He's a prime example of someone that can go forward and can get involved in attacks. On the flip side, Frankie de Jong potentially showing also why he is in that midfield. But that's the first breakthrough of a goal in this one. And it will fall the way of Borussia Esports with their duo of Lefty and Jeffrey. Hakimi runs that one out of play. And remember, they have to win this to force the bracket reset and we'll play it all again. But Lefty and Jeffrey was just too good of a, a duo name to not be a duo. 
Don't get me wrong. In terms of German teams, there was quite a few in this bracket. <laughs> Look at Focus Clan. Focus Clan were there. You had RB Leipzig that was Umit and Dagaccio, who was the former player of Borussia Esports. That's a team that Nomi Esports brushed past in the earlier rounds of the tournament. If there's one region which just develops esports FIFA talent, it is Germany. When you go back the last three, four, five years, the amount of talent to come out of Germany has been incredible. Brugia on for two, it's R9, maybe so, defended well by Renato Sanchez. But just leading on from that point, it all stems from just leagues such as the virtual Bundesliga, you know, helping produce that talent, helping to feed that talent through with the club championship or the individual 1v1 championship. Another FGS partnered league, but you've had the, the yearly German championships that used to run a lot more. And there's just an understanding in Germany of FIFA Esports as Nom Nisak comes through! It hasn't taken long for Nom to reply with that one. Elasta going to the space, it's R9 and it's all square after just 40 in-game minutes. This is going to be a really competitive game and we're only just getting started. It was Nisak who actually scored that goal. He was the red icon, beautiful work with the Elastico inside the box. Great in the space, and then R9. Powerful, driven, direct finish into the back of the net. No messing about from Nisa as he levels up the game. One apiece going into the second half. No surprise, it's R9 and Mbappe. Berners are on, he's running through. Kundi standing in the way, the severe man. Still Mbappe, cut back. Half time will do us a question for you, Rich, at the half time break. We'll have a look at R9 if we can. It always seems in Europe that he's involved, especially. We've seen loads of different regions across this weekend. But why is it in Europe that there is just always an R9 presence? Well, not only his stats are unbelievable, but it's almost that fact of if, if you're not using him, are you missing out? It's the it's the FOMO it's the FOMO effect on R9. If you've not got him in your team, are you at a disadvantage? Whereas it seems across the rest of the regions, South America, North America, uh, into Western East Asia. I mean Singapore this morning we saw Eusebio. Eusebio Pele. We've seen Rio Ferdinand used at the back. Whereas it seems all the European regions specifically use R9 Ronaldo or no icon. But then you go with. Uh, another high-rated item in the team. But also, here in Europe, from what we've seen so far, David Ginola is also nowhere to true, be seen. True, true, that is true. Um, it certainly seems like Ginola was more used in the other regions here. From what we've seen so far, Paris and also Frankfurt, no David Ginola unless he's coming off the bench for footways, which he did. If you are wondering why we have such a divide in terms of these different regions, it's to do, of course, with different regional breakups in the world with the servers. And you might be thinking, who actually features in this region? Chance for R9 now for Nom Esports, defended well by Kunde, who comes in. It was actually, uh, in terms of countries that are eligible to play in this, you've got, you've got Belgium, uh, Bulgaria, the Netherlands, Romania, Serbia, the list goes on. But in terms of the nations that were involved in this bracket, Richard, it was mainly Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany and of course cannot forget Israel who are in this regional final and I mean there was a couple of runs from the Netherlands you can't forget that they've got the Eredivisie over there the Edivisie there's loads of teams Ajax are a, a Masters, Masters team. teams already but teams like PSV would have been vying for a spot I think I saw Utrecht were involved too and um, on the Belgium side Genk were involved it was, yes. a, it was a stacked region it was really stacked and there were so many German teams on top of that too yeah absolutely I would potentially say the most stacked region alongside Paris uh, across the entire 16 regions who were competing. Great ball whipped in for Fafana, good save. And he's still alive for Fafana, not for too long, Addison off his line. So collect that one and a really, really big save. But do you like the regional break coverage that we're seeing here? Because in that last one especially, what, it was France, UK, Scotland, Ireland only. And it sort of does give you a really wide taste of all of the FIFA esports landscape. Yeah, absolutely. I think having the, the regions broken down in this fact, not only do you get a lot more talent 
across the world and you get to see more people competing, but breaking them down into the specific regions where teams are competing from in terms of connection as well, Chance. it helps. Nearly. For R9. The ball was bouncing around. Frankie de Jong was trying to find the space. They'll win it again. Here comes Nomi Esports and Bappe. Just could not brush past the defender there. Which you must speak about for a second. Kunde coming into this team, Richard. It's uh, the reason for that is with the La Liga links that are needed. Not a player we've seen too much, though, across the board in general in this FGS Open. Yeah, absolutely. It more than likely would be the brand new uh, Kunde that's just been released in the last 48 hours uh, that is in the team. Messi into Mbappe, just offside and a little bit too keen off the mark was the man there. Paul's coming in from the set. Part of the, the versus promo was that Jules Kunde. Big, big improvements in sort of the, the dribbling stats. Reactions, 97 reactions Kunde has. It's a stat that a lot of people enjoy in their centre-backs, that being higher rather than lower. It does lack a little bit in strength and aggression. Only 81 strength, 77 aggression. So maybe you'll see what we saw earlier with foot with, with the Jalo sort of getting outpowered maybe by R9 Ronaldo. But as of right now, Kunde seems a real viable pick in a lot of these squads. Yeah, and he's again one of those players from that new promo. We said we might see a few feature today. We have seen a few. Final 15 minutes in this first game. The pause will come in now. We'll have a little chance to break down that player a little bit more in terms of how good he is, Richard. Obviously, I saw you just looking for a couple of his in-game stats. He is a usable player. He is linkable. Are we going to see him potentially a little bit more? Well, I think the only reason that you maybe wouldn't see him right away, it's a little bit of a risk. You don't have a, a warm-up period with him. You don't have a grace period where you can try him in 20, 30 games of rivals. It just goes straight into the squad. You see a few substitutions coming on there. Chong, who we've seen a couple of times in and around different regions. Alfonso Davis, Fellaini, and Vinicius Jr. all entering the pitch here in the final 17, I should say 13 minutes. Here's a towel. Just gets the bounce with De Jong. Chong and the provider on nine. So composed and nearly got it pickpocketed. He deserved a goal. It was incredible dribbling inside the box. The close control to open up the space past the goalkeeper. But the defender on the line said, no, not today. Let's keep this game. What a piece. Talk about instant impact off the bench from the young Dutchman in Chong as well. It's a brilliant ball into our nine. The skill move was pretty much perfect too. If it wasn't for Kundi at the back, that would have been two goals to one and it would have been the Israeli duo, Nisa and Yuval Belli. Up by two goals to one. Remember, they're on the winner's bracket side. They have already beaten Borussia earlier on in the tournament by three goals to two. They actually sent them down to the loser bracket, which, if anything, fueled Borussia up because they won six goals to one against the Focus Clan, which is not an easy game by any means. Moving and grooving Mbappe. Not for too long, though. Just talking about previous results there as well. Nom actually beat the Focus Clan, sent them down to the loser's bracket, six goals to two. So, a little bit in common there. Both teams beating Focus Clan and scoring six goals against their back post. Cross, great save from Allison. It's up in the air and away. Big opportunity. Well, on the rebound there for a split second, I thought there was going to be a chance for potentially an easy tap-in. And I think that will pretty much do us for this first leg between the two. We'll have about a minute of added time, if that, if we're lucky. Will there be a last roll of the dice, though? from Nom Esports. I think they'll get a chance, actually. Neymar into R9 from distance, maybe. R9 still timed it red, but it was still on target. Corner played short, but quickly. Renato Sanchez out swings that. Chong could have been fouled and nearly was. Get that ball clear and get us into that second leg. Just bobbling around the box there. If that's a better shot that is executed there from R9, you've got to say it's going to be a guaranteed goal. It was red time. The goalkeeper just about got something to it. If that's green timed or even not timed at all, potentially we could be going in with a nom at 2-1 lead here at the break. Have to remember, if you are just joining us, that it is nom from the winner's bracket, meaning that they just need to win 
the second leg and they will be going to the Team of the Season Cup if it's Borussia Esports who pick up the victory. A bracket reset is inevitable. Uh, and just a word on that Israeli duo, Nom Esports have been a big sort of pusher of Esports. Rabbi Feldman back at the organisation. Used to play for them when he had a playoff run, I think, back in... It might have been even FIFA FIFA 20 now, yep. a long time ago when Nicholas won that PlayStation side of the console. Why are we seeing more players from Israel come through and, all, and also good runs? There's not many of them, but there's unbelievable runs they're having in tournaments. I think Nomnisat was sixth in Europe last year on an online season. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a few different reasons. I think uh, some of it can be with uh, the remote factor of it. Um, it. It could have been in the previous harder to qualify from Europe and when it's remote, potentially all, all that sort of world of it could aid the Israeli players. But also when you've got someone like Roy Feldman who goes to a LAN event, who gets a significant result, that inspires people as well. We saw it with Sweden when you get people like Boras and Oli Lito and Oli Boli, Optoli are growing up watching Boras. They want to be the next Ivan Lapanya. That has a really big knock-on effect to all the talent coming up who are 15, 16, 17 years old. Yeah, well, we're going to talk more about that when we get back from the break. When we return, we'll have your second leg of this Frankfurt Regional Final. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few minutes' time. FGS Open presented by PlayStation 5. You join myself, Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley for the Frankfurt Regional Final. And where we left it, we left it in quite an even place, Richard, because if the score was 1-1, if Nomi Sports win this, they will be in that team of the season cup. However, for the bracket to reset and for this match to happen again, Bruce Esports need to win 
and the need to bring a big performance. Yeah, certainly. There was chance at either end as well. It wasn't like it was a 1-1 one -one stalemate. Opportunities came for both sides. The final chance of the game actually fell to Nom Esports. They had a big chance with R9 Ronaldo. He fluffed his lines, and now we go into leg number two. Nom Esports probably thinking, let's get this wrapped up. Let's get this done. Yeah. We've seen a lot of games go to bracket resets over the last three days. We do not want to be one of those teams because typically the stats have showed when it's gone to the bracket reset, the team who's come from the loser's bracket who have won that first set of games have been winning the second leg. I can see the game's just about to get underway. Big second leg underway now. Yeah, well, here we go then. The stage is set for these two. Who fancies travelling to London in April next year? to be a part of the 32 duos that will battle it out across three days for a $500,000 prize pool. Will Norm Esports write themselves into the history books or will we see another German team joining Neo, who one of our SGS teams, the duo of Hensu and Dula Mike, already in there, back to goal, Mbappe. Thought he was going to go on for a finesse on his own there for a split second. It is Norm from right to left in this one in that blue strip. And it's the duo of Lefty and Jeffrey from left to right of Borussia Esports in this one. Who had a very unlikely goal score in the last game, Richard. Renato Sanchez, of all people, popped up and, and scored. Words that I didn't think I'd be saying in this game. Well, he can get forward. He can offer you that attacking inspiration from centre mid. Not in the same vein as uh, Kevin De Bruyne can. Bit of aggressive ball for Farner. Does well to latch that one down. You'd think he's the centre forward. He's actually the centre mid there. He was... Quite adventurous with his run that he made forward. Looked to try and tee it down to Mbappe on the edge of the box. Couldn't find the cleanest of connections that he was looking for. And possession will change hands with Nomi Esports on the attack for this one. Back to go Mbappe. He's on side. Quick feet of the box from the Frenchman. Does well. Cheeky chip. What a oh, goal. Oh, wow. Wants to remember and wants to clip up and save. Really well done from Mbappe. The cheekiest of chips. Finds R9. And they find a one goal lead in this one. He just served it up to him. Just served it up to R9, did Mbappe. Great individual skill in around the box. And say, go and attack it. Go and get yourself a goal, Ronaldo. Good start to the game. End-to-end -end FIFA being shown already from both of these two sides. However, first blood will fall to Nom Esports. As we said, they played earlier on in the bracket. It was a 3-2 win to Nom. Who knocked down Borussia. Chance, go on R9, he's going on his own, it's R9! Oh, he's done that it. a few times across these last couple of days. Nothing fancy about it, just a case of getting his head down and just running and running and running. We saw it in the Levante game. Great composure from Maestro or Papsty, whoever was controlling the player at that moment. And they did really well just to showcase R9's pace, in all honesty, and to have the composure to finish it. Yeah, on that occasion, just slightly overrun it, showed too much of it to Allison. And he will eat that up all day long, will the Brazilian goalkeeper. Not a keeper that we've seen too much of has been Alisson, but when he is deployed between the sticks, he always seems to do a, a relatively good job. Oh, he's been superb, hasn't he, in times, the Brazilian shot stopper. Messi tries to force that into the feet of R9. That one's not on the cards. Or unable to work on that occasion. Of course, with the La Liga links that Borussia are trying to find, they have to lean in too far on Mendy. Mr. Alive was ever in at fullback. Well, the entire back four can be all sort of under 90 rated. Players like Jao Cancelo, we've seen used. Hakimi Marquinhos also are the two big ones. Um, Kunde has been involved as well. Typically, It's, it's Marquinhos and one more. Marquinhos plus one usually, isn't it, in terms of a, a foot hero maybe in there. We saw Cordoba a few times for that Syria link that some were trying to get with Hernandez, Kessi. Teams have got restrictions to follow, one of those being one icon outfield, which you'll Great always turn. see. She's all with the goal that went in from R9. Mbappe, reverse Elastico, does well, tries to disguise the pass into Neymar. Renato Sanchez does get pickpocketed and numbers will come forward. Massive win at the bat there. And a big win. Mbappe's got the legs to run forward. It's quite a tight angle though. 
tried to ball roll his way back into the box. And in the end, it was quite easy to read from the Borussia eSports duo. Oh, no, he put the burners on. What's that back post? He custom controls the player. Neymar back inside. Neymar is on. Brilliant save. And the quickest of reactions from Alisson to get back up, latch up and pick the ball. And Norm eSports very happy to play in these areas. He wanted to play it across the box when it floated into Neymar. The first touch that he took just sort of set it up for himself. Lovely half volley. Allison just about made two very quick saves to make sure Norm still retained their lead. But that counter-attack is definitely on for the big Borussia win. Esports. Watch that run of Mbappe. Try to dig the ball into the... Rizian forward, not able to do that. Messi, back to Fafana. Again, they try and look for that ball just to punch into the forward. Mbappe, I thought he'd be offside. He's on. You saw the idea. The defending matched up the tackle. Mbappe could be through if he finds him. Petr Cech off his line. Oh, that was close. Risky business. They've nearly won it back again. And they will win it back. Neymar. Looking to cause havoc. Ball roll, scoop turn. Combination of a few of them just to try and find a bit of space. Sanchez does even better. Brilliant feel. Lovely roulette. Cuts back inside. Mbappe trying to speed up. It's a tap reverse. Elastico. He looked for the one more pass into the feet of R9. And I think he was just sort of bodied off the ball anyway. But in those moments, they've been really impressive, Nom Esports. You can say what you want about this Nom Esports team, but you have to respect them. Especially in the final third. They look slick. They look really sort of driven in their approach. They're skillful. <laughs> they look like the real deal at the moment. Well, that will take us into half-time. Let's have a look at the, the possession of that game so far, Richard. Where has most of the ball been for both teams in terms of the heat maps? We should be able to see. Yeah, you can see it there. The first sort of 15 minutes was dominated by Borussia Esports, and as the half came to its conclusion, Nom got control of the game. They started bossing the ball, and it resulted in a goal as well. M mainly Neymar in that sort of area as well. Neymar and Bappo looking for those little interchanges you could just see in sort of the left top corner of the pitch. And that's where their goal came from too. It was a dink ball into R9, and that's the only thing that separates these two at the moment. They're 45 minutes away, Richard, from sending themselves to London in April next year to be part of the 32 in the Team of the Season Cup. But they have to hold on. And the, the question is now, do they slightly change their approach? Are they still going forward with intensity? Are they still going forward with the conviction to score more goals, or is it going to be slightly more on the possession side? Are they going to want to keep the ball around the back for a little bit? And I mean, this shows exactly what their intentions are. Oh, so close from R9. It's the same sort of method every time in, in terms of get the ball into the box, find that little skill move, that change of pace, direction, and then try and get away a shot of goal. Watch this back post now. Frankie Dion will look to try and tee it into the box. Instead, tries to camouflage a little dink ball into Lionel Messi. And there could be a chance to break. Messi's on the far-hand side, and he has got the legs on him. And that's what Mendy's in the team for. Sure, too much of it to fill, and Mendy, this could be a big chance here. Killing Mbappe. Oh, ball brilliant away. thing. Mbappe, he looked for the one more ball, which, to be fair, was probably the right decision. And it was a training leg from the defender that just about kept that chance from potentially being dangerous. A big win from Norm, not for too long. Renato does well. Is he onside? Mbappe, a little bit too keen off the mark. Doesn't feel like Borussia have, have completely been in this one, to be honest, Richard. As you said, they started off well in the first 15, and as possession told us, and as the half time score told us, it was sort of falling more into the side of Norm. But uh, the stats can tell one thing, but it's only 1 0. There's only one goal separating the two sides, so the stats could be. 100% in the favour of Nom Esports, but until they can get another goal and solidify a lead, it's a topsy-turvy game. Mendy, back to Sanchez, surely not from that far out. De Jong, oh, no! And it's party time for Nom Esports! This is a two-goal cushion, and they are 30 minutes away from land. Land 2v2 FIFA 
in this new FGS season, where at the moment they look to be on for a spot, Richard, in London in April. Yeah, the pass was everything. Uh, the finish was very simple from R9 in reality, but it was that lovely weighted ball into the striker's path. Give him all the time in the world to take a touch and just rattle it into the back of the net. You can see the passing distribution there from Nom Esports. Oh, the thick green line is down the left-hand side of the pitch, and that's been going from Neymar into the two strikers on the left-hand side, Mbappe and R9 Ronaldo, and so, some of the most sort of uh, active passes that Borussia have been playing is from left centre back to right back. I feel, I feel, I feel bad for the left back of Borussia. He's not a single pass. Oh, there he goes. His first one. I he's just, he's just come on. He's fresh. He's on the pitch. And it's also going to be Fellaini of all players that is brought onto the fray of things to try to change this scoreline around. It's a two-goal cushion for Nom Esports, Nisa and Yuval Belli. A duo that we said we have heard about. They were dominant individually last year in the FGS season. They've played at a national level in a duo. Although it may have been 1v1 with an aggregate scoreline implicating a lot of the results, they've still had time to be a team. They've still had time together as a duo. And right now, they look like another dangerous team, Richard, to come from a European region. Yeah, they certainly do. I mean, they've shown everything in the final third. They've defended well. They've suffocated the play when Borussia have tried to come forward. And a lot of Borussia's attacks have been sort of these crosses into the box, the back post potential there, but they've not been able to play through this non Esports team in a game and two-thirds of FIFA. What's been even more impressive, Richard, they are one of the few teams from Israel that have made it even into the winner's bracket through Swiss. And they didn't even have a perfect Swiss, to be completely honest with you, Richard. They went four and two in Swiss. They did drop a couple of games. But it's a case that they got through Swiss, they came into the winner's bracket, and they just kept Game on over. moving. As R9 went in the box. Moving and grooving as always is that man. Ronaldo Lazaro makes it three. It's a four-one aggregate scoreline. And I think we can say a huge congratulations to spot number 30 out of the 32 spots available in that team of the season cup in April. And they've just come out flying, haven't they? Yeah, you can see where the goals have come from here from Nom Esports. All of the goals, you can throw a towel over them. They're in that close proximity of each other. They've been getting it into those areas. I mean, getting it in and around the edge of the box, in just in between sort of 10 to 12 yards out. And it's so easy to score when you're that far out, or that close in, I should say. Making it look really simple at the moment at Nom Esports. It's and I can just, tell you yeah. it's not because there's been thousands of duos who haven't been able to make this look easy. Absolutely. There is game plan behind this. They have had training camps. I've seen it on social media. Nomi Sports have really stepped up as an organisation in the last couple of years. The 2v2 change brought back Rui Felber back to his old organisation. And I think they're just having a really good season last year in general with those individual performances from Yuval Belly and Nom Nisa, it has encouraged more investment, it has encouraged them to have a boot camp and to have training re a regime, sorry. Well, they also got the bit between the teeth because they wanted to show people that it wasn't a one-off, it wasn't because of X, Y and Z, you might have got a favourable connection here or it's remote, etc. They have been exquisite in this tournament and they are deserved winners of the Frankfurt region, 5-1 lead. This is getting ugly as Nom Nisa and Yuval Belly wheel away in celebration. Well, they came into the Frankfurt region to spoil the party and that's exactly what they've done. There will not be a German duo qualifying from this Frankfurt region. All Netherlands based, all from Malta, the list goes on. It will be the Israeli duo of Nom Esports and they have 100% deserved it. They have been incredible and they're not done yet <laughs> the party tricks are out the champagne is flowing for nom esports right now great performance very few teams i think the only other team maybe 
uh, was Kalen and uh, Beast Bianchi have gone through into the winner's bracket, gone into the regional final of their particular uh, sort of tournament and dominated. There's been very few dominant performances across the board as he wins a penalty here at NOM Esports. They made this look really, really simple. They haven't, and you wouldn't believe that they're just about to bag $15,000 behind. Up steps Neymar to make it 5-6 on aggregate. And they are having the time of their lives. Nisat's just touched down in Hamburg for a tournament in two days' time. And he will be on flames at that one. Because he's got $15,000 in his back pocket. They are guaranteed a tournament next year. And Israel will be there. Nomi Sports will be there. And as it stands, there'll only be one German team that will be there too. Came into his second leg at 1-1. It was 1-1 coming to the second leg. We were talking about how Borussia Esports might be able to turn this game around. It was 1-0 at half-time. Yeah. The second half has been... so dominant from Nom Esports. Four goals is what they've scored. Yes, at two or three. Borussia have had to come more attacking, but that's left gaps to exploit. And Nom have just been able to manage everything that has been thrown at them. It's a great story. And it's more history for Israel, FIFA Esports, that's been created, they're not done yet. Neymar into Chong! It doesn't matter who's on the score sheet, they're having the time of their lives. And all that is left to say is congratulations, you will be in the Team of the Season Cup in April as part of the 32 duos. 7-1. What a statement from Norm Esports. Incredible. And they will be your deserved winners. They beat them in the winner's bracket. They sent them down into the loser's bracket. They've had an unbelievable winner's bracket run. They've beaten teams like RB Leipzig, Umit and Gacho. They've beaten Focus Clan, Sakul and Moalba, just to name a few of these big, heavy hitters that are in this Frankfurt region. And they've just dispatched all of them. They've just kept the momentum rolling. They've kept it going from game to game to game. And they've peaked at the perfect time as well. Some of the other teams might have peaked earlier in the tournament. They might have had their best performance. That was their best performance of this entire region, and they saved it for the final. That's what good teams do. That is what the best teams do. And they'll be mixing it up with all of those master teams and all of the other teams that we've seen qualify from this FGS Open in April at the Team of the Season Cup. They are a team to watch for sure. They are indeed. I mean, I said spot number 30 that has been awarded. We've got two more spots uh, available to give out today. We're off to South America. And last but not least, we'll be back to North America a little bit later on today. Really impressive, Richard, how they've been able to play there. A really big result. And I think you said rightly, there's not been that many teams that have dominated in a final from the winner's bracket side. We saw Milan earlier today with UT7, Danny Pitbull and Fabio. They dominated their game, won six goals to nil. But other than that, you don't often expect to see that, especially in Europe. No, especially when the team from the loser's bracket have already played today. They've already had that winning feeling. They've already got the confidence rolling. And it was the first leg sort of a feeling out process for NOM Esports. In the second leg, they absolutely dismantled Borussia Esports. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that is concluded from uh, from Europe, I should say, for the last time across this FGS Open. It's been an absolute ball. Three back-to-back -back, uh, European regional finals concluded. But NOM Esports will be there in April for the Team of the Season Cup. And it's back over to you, Rachel, who is joined by a special guest. Yeah, thanks, boys. We said we are excited, didn't we, for those European Opens, and they absolutely delivered. I still have my special guest joining me right now. Nick, and you actually said, I can call you Nick Luigi as well. Nick, thanks for sticking by. Um, come on then, did you expect what we just saw there? I mean, we didn't possibly predict it to be such a one-sided affair, but NOM Esports absolutely awesome out there over Borussia, weren't they? First of all, I would like to say uh, that it was really deserved from Nom Esports. That's a huge statement to beat all the all the big German teams. I think all the strong German teams really, really well played. And in the first first leg, in the first game, I think we saw a really close um, game, uh, as I expected. But uh, in the second game, uh, Nom was the, the was the better team, and I think that's why it's it's deserved. And and they. They threw, uh, they threw to the offline event. 
Yeah, Nick, why do you think they were so dominant in that second leg there? Six goals in that second one. What do you think they changed to make them so efficient in that second leg? For me, uh, you can saw it in the in the uh, second half of the first game. They are norm came better and better uh, into the game and have a, they had a really, really good chance in the 19th minute. Um, and then they go in late with one one two zero. And I think then was a really, really uh, important game situation. Uh, Borussia has a big chance, but uh, Alisson uh, catched the ball and that's that was maybe the break, the, uh, the break even point for Borussia and then uh, non played really, really strong. They did uh, really good. Yeah, we, we keep speaking, don't we, about how great the goalkeepers are, um, especially in this tournament and especially in 2v2. Uh, Nick, I actually want to ask you, do you have Bernard Leno in your team? Does he make you put him in goal? I ha had to ask you that one. <laughs> Yes, uh, Ben Leno is a, is a great uh, goalkeeper. He's really, really good and uh, also in the German national team. But uh, in my team, I, I used uh, the icon uh, Peter Schmeichel. For me, this year, he's, he's the best goalkeeper and that's why I use him. An absolute legend as well. Well, Nick, I believe you're going to do some analysis for us as well. Presented by PlayStation from both of the second legs as well. We're going to have leg one and leg two from that re... The second leg, of course. Get my words in. Rach, yes. Nick, take it away. That was a good chance. And you see, always, Nom always play to R9 and they want to shoot with him. I think it's really clever. Uh, absolutely, and once they started and scoring, Nick, they just took it away, didn't they? Tell us what's happening right now. Uh, here you uh, saw Renato Sanchez with a, a little bit lucky goal, I think. He's not the best writer, but the goalkeeper can't uh, catch. And uh, one, uh, the, the one uh, to one, the, the, the second uh, goal of the game was really good by Norm. They drew Elastico as one of the most effective uh, skills in FIFA 20, uh, 22, I think, and that's it's a, and that, this goal for me, it was the best because this chip, this uh, slow, uh, slow cross was really, really well played. You have to practice this a lot because you have, you really have to know when your teammate starts and makes the creative run, and then you have to play in a in a really uh, a mile of seconds, I think. Yeah, well, this is that penalty as well mm. to make it yes, six it, for Norm. It, it, it's really hard because if you are two or three uh, goals you have to score, you, you have to make a decision, okay, now I, I want to play with uh, constant uh, pressing and a lot of pressure to the to the other team, but you, all, you, you can't defend uh, like before. And I think after the, the third, Goal, the, the game was closed and uh, Nom uh, won, won the game. Yeah, well, if you're Brissier in that moment, you had to put everything on the line, mm. didn't you, to try and get a result in some form. Nick, final question. You still have one German team in that Masters event. Nia, of course, Dylan Mike and <laughs> Hensu. What do you make of their chances? I think uh, both are really good players, especially uh, Dylan Mike. I, I know him good um, also. Uh, and... I think they will practice a lot, and uh, they they always they, they have the chance to play a good role. But we we saw uh, how good the other teams are also, and it's not easy to win to win this tournament. But um, yes, I think they can. They will play a good uh, tournament, well, and I'm they want to represent Germany. I think now they have yes uh, a bit uh, a bit uh, exercise. Yeah, absolutely. We know who you'll be backing then in April in that April Cup, Nick. It will be obviously Dullen, Mike and Hensu from Neo. Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good luck with the rest of your season as well. And we hope you'll come back on one of these shows and be some, have some analysis for us soon. Thanks, Nick. Thank you very much. I really enjoy and hope we will see us at the offline event. Very absolutely. Nice. Love thank, to see you. Nick. In person, of course. Right, there we go. So three European Opens done and dusted. After the break, we head to Buenos Aires for their Open. We'll see you soon.
guys, it's Tom here. I'm a professional FIFA player for XL and I'm here today to teach you how to attack in the 4-4-2. So tip number one is going to be the player lock. We can see in this clip here, I have the ball with my left midfielder and I press L1 to trigger his run. However, I'm not happy with where he's running. So I use the player lock effectively to control my striker. You press the left and right analog stick in at the same time and then press the right stick to who you want to receive the ball with. So now what I want to do with my striker is bend my run round the centre back. So when I receive the through ball, I'm going to be bearing down on goal, which is exactly what we do here. It now means I'm in a very dangerous position and we apply the finishing touch using a chipped finish. So tip number two is how to effectively use the driven pass. So as we can see in this clip, I pick the ball up out wide my left midfielder and I'm looking to create the angle of passing to one of my two strikers. So I managed to recycle the ball. I go back to my midfielder. And as we can see, I've triggered my striker's run and I have two strikers to hit now, which I want to hit with the driven pass. To perform the driven pass, we use R1 and X at the same time. And we can see here, as I use it, it comes perfectly into the space and I get my shot off before the centre back can get there. Possession in attack. So what does this actually mean? Well, I've noticed from all my years playing FIFA that a lot of people are in a rush to get to the goal and try and score as quickly as possible. Sometimes that means we don't pick the right passes. As we can see in this clip here, I'm going to recycle the ball. I have the ball with my striker and I'm looking for my other striker or my midfielder that's making an advanced run. I noticed very quickly that he's got both of these passes covered and this is when I make the decision that it's best to recycle the ball and be patient in attack. Here, I pass the ball backwards, and I notice that the area of the pitch is very, very congested in the middle. As a result of this, I go out wide to my left back. He's got the space to attack, and my aim here is to try and bring out a couple of them players in the middle area. It's way too congested to create a chance, so my aim is to try and attack the space as much as possible to start pulling these players out of position. I drive forward. And we can see a couple of midfielders have now come out to engage with the ball. And it means that I can rotate the ball around the area and try and find the right pass. So I go back to my midfielder, who goes into my striker. And now we're in a very, very dangerous position. We can see that recycle has helped me get to this spot here. As I get the ball, the pass opens up to my striker. And that's where we get the goal. I've been Tom. I hope you've all enjoyed my 4-4-2 masterclass. And I'll see you all on the pitch. Twickenham Stadium for the third and final day of the FGS Open presented by PS5. Richard Buckley is joining me right now because we're going to talk all things Masters, Rich, aren't we? Because we spoke about them a little bit yesterday. We didn't really go into detail about a couple of teams who we think are standing out. I'm going to say that because I think the couple of teams we're going to focus on right now have got some absolute superstars in their roster and we're going to start off Rich aren't we with you're even pointing at them going like, like this <laughs> XL Team XL Gorilla and Tom aren't they just a class act? Yeah I feel like Gorilla's pointing at me so I thought I'd return <laughs> the favour and point back at him. <laughs> no this team is is unbelievable they got announced earlier on in the summer sort of before FIFA 22 came out two serial winners in their own right Gorilla <laughs> He's been there, he's got the t-shirt, he's got the trophy to go with it as well. And look, what Tom's journey has been like from footwiz to hashtag now to XL has been remarkable. He's leveled up every single time, not only in sort of his presence within the community, but his achievements as well. And these two are going to be a really, really tough team. I can see the practicing already, the scrimming, they're getting the games in, and we're going to see them in April. 
and maybe a bit of pressure on Tom as well, moving from hashtag to Excel and documenting that transfer fee um, that doesn't usually get that much attention in FIFA Esports, which was big, possibly putting some pressure on him. This obviously was when he won his first trophy. We're talking about him, Rich, weren't we? Being the bridesmaid, obviously won the EPL trophy as well, but doing it in a Foot Champions Cup made it a little bit more special. Yeah, he'd done it in the UK, and we wanted to see it done in Europe. Gorilla did it in the world. He won the <laughs> FIWC in 2017, beating Dito in the final. I was actually there sat in the audience watching this as Rude Hullet passed over the trophy. And it was a culmination of that entire year. He was the runner-up in Madrid earlier on in the season and lifted the trophy aloft. His crowning achievement, and hopefully can get back there in 2022. I was going to say that. That's five years ago, 2017. How has he, if he has, managed to maintain that level and still be able to lift a, lift a trophy with Tom come April? Well, I spoke to him probably six, seven months ago. I had the opportunity to commentate with him uh, and he was joining us on a broadcast. And when we were just chatting off air, I was talking to him like, what, are you, what still is motivating you? Because you've earned a ridiculous amount of money from FIFA Esports. You're a successful content creator, but he just wants to be the best. And I think both of them as two players, Tom and Gorilla, just want to achieve. They want to go down as some of the best players to have ever played. And this team, hopefully, we see them provide for all the XL fans out there. Well, I talk um, to a lot of sports stars about that. Once they've done it, they know exactly how it feels to win. They just want that feeling time and time again. So I get what Gorilla is talking about there. Let's move on, though, Rich, to another team that we're going to profile as well. So Team Hullet, they've partnered up, haven't they, with Ninjas in Pyjamas. Did you expect that? I mean, this... No, firstly, nope. I didn't. Um, but Levy de Weed needed Olilito and Olilito needed Levy de Weed. Uh, when you think about it, these two dominated their own individual consoles last year with the move all coming over to PlayStation 5. It sort of made sense that we were going to see teams partnering up. We were going to see collaborations. And Levy and Olilito, they've both done it individually. My question is going to be, how can they mesh as a team together? Because you said they need each other. What do you mean by that? Explain why. If they've done it individually, OK, they're coming together. Surely that will just mesh easily. Well, yes, but also they need a player who is at that same, not only level as each other, but has the same aspirations. Very similar to Tom and Gorilla. These two just want to win. I mean, we saw Olilito with Leeds in the E-Premier League. He will go anywhere across the planet to compete in a tournament. And Levy de Weed, he's only just starting his career. He's only just turned 17. He's won back-to-back -back European titles. This team will do it. Would you say they're fearless as yeah. well as a duo? Yeah, they're fearless. They're unbelievable at FIFA. But when you make collaborations like this, pressure comes with it. And will the pressure pay off? That's the question. Well, we'll have to wait and find out in April, of course. And obviously, these guys are absolute pros. And if you want to learn from them, well, you know what to do. Scan this QR code on the screen right now and you can see some masterclasses from some of our top FIFA pros and watch some great competitive FIFA matchups as well. That is a place to learn on youtube.com forward slash EA FIFA Esports. Rich, I'm sure, will be on there a bit later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move on because we're going to Buenos Aires next for our next Open. And we're going to be joined by another guest now. Oh, who's it going to be? Mike LaBelle is back in the house. He's going to join us for this one. Mike, we just previewed those two Masters teams, XL there and Ninjas in Pajamas and Team Hullet. Pretty tasty duos. No doubt about it, man, and uh, especially, well, I guess not man towards you, Rachel, but uh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> both, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just feeling casual today. Um, but uh, both of those teams include not only players that have the success in terms of their results and achievements, but also all of them are some of the most followed uh, pro FIFA players we have. They're content creators uh, in their own right. And with that comes, like you were saying, with expectation, people want results, but a big following. And there's mm -hmm. anticipation. I want to see them play. It's like you took the two best individuals, but can they partner up and really align proper? Yeah, it's going to be exciting, that's for sure. Well, we've still got a couple of teams waiting to see if they can book their spots in that April event. And Buenos Aires is next, of course, Mike. It's Crew Esports and Essential Gaming. We just saw Essential Gaming come through that lower bracket. They now face Crew, who actually matched up with, again, as most of these teams have throughout the course of the last couple of days. And it went 
for a piece and had to go to penalties, which makes this tie, both of you, Rich and Mike, very exciting. Yeah, it, it really does. I mean, when you look at it on paper, there's no real favorite for it. For me, I think Crew just edge it on the fact that they've got that little bit more experience and I, it wouldn't be right if I didn't come here and stand on this stage when I'm not oh, yeah. commentating and not talk about Matthias Bernardo because <laughs> he used to play at Crew Esports. He's a perfect segue. The big, big shoes <laughs> to fill. Um, I, I'm hoping that potentially they can do it, but it's going to be a great game. The bromance continues, but let's talk about maybe a current teammate. There's Yago, someone that we know, Mike, really well from the, the FIFA community, the FIFA scene. He's in that squad. He knows what it means to be successful. Do you think having a player like that in your duo is really going to help them out today? I just hope that he's on the face cam. He's one of the most <laughs> emotional and yes, reactive players we've ever seen in the, the FIFA uh, competitive scene up to this point. I, uh, <laughs> I'll never forget him winning a match and crying during the win. So as the match was going on, he was so overwhelmed with emotion from getting this result and knowing that he had clinched that result, which is pretty amazing and kind of shows uh, to the audience and everybody that's watching that what this means to a lot of the pros because you have to dedicate so much time of, of your life to get these fine margins. And when it all comes together at an event, you just feel as, as if the, the, the FIFA gods have spoken <laughs> to you and all your hard work is, has been for this. And he's partnered up with Valen, who's pretty good in South America as well, the best Argentine. So that pairing looks great. And they've actually won each of their matchups, bar the first one, by two goals or more. So they're on a bit of a roll. So I'm excited to see if they can continue this. Right, I think we should stop the chat and shall we see how they get on, guys? Because we're heading to Buenos Aires. We've, you know, left Europe behind now and we are going Buenos Aires, here we go. Look at that skyline. It's virtual, but then it's going to transfer to the real thing. I mean, the lights there of that city looks absolutely delightful. I mean, that's a bit of a, a suspect um, statue, but you know, we, we roll with it and we move. Uh, and it's going to be Chris Dunn and Lisa Manley taking you through this open crew sports, taking on Essentials Gaming. Did you like that statue there, Chris? You're giggling. Rachel, the producer in my ears just said it looks a little bit like me. Oh, that's why you were giggling. Yeah, he's done me over a couple of times already today. So you know what? We'll just ignore that completely and we will get into this game. It is the Buenos Aires game and it is myself and Lisa bringing you the action. Very excited to get into this one. The second to last game of the weekend. The last game for ourselves as well. We're glad to have you alongside us. This should be a very, very good game. Of course, both teams feeling pretty good about essentials coming from the loser's bracket after an undefeated Swiss performance as well. The only team they have lost to, of course, are Crew who will have that confidence coming from the winner's bracket final, but there's some big names on these teams and the pressure is really on. And there's something we're going to talk about very, very quickly. We've already had a look at their teams and there's one icon in here, which we have, to my knowledge, not seen at all over the weekend, who's on both sides of things, Rude Hullet in both teams, instead of R9, which has been the typical choice. We kind of had this conversation a little bit previously. We were kind of thinking R9 is the more obvious choice, but Rude Hullet, it's not a bad option either, is it? I mean, he was really shocked, wasn't we, going into it? I mean, all weekend we've literally seen R9 after R9, maybe a few Yasebios, Pele's as well, but Hullet, it's an interesting choice because you've got players like De Jong, Sanchez that can come in. Who not are not rude, though. <laughs> true. That, I mean, Hullet is a very good icon to use. Strong. Mm -hmm. He's just he's tall as well. I was able to win them aerial balls, but it's got to be R9. You've got to use him in your team. Well, we will see. I think the thing is, is that you have Hullet and you have those midfielders around him as well. But the attacking options outside of R9, I would say, are greater than the CM options that you possibly have as well. I think it's, it's a bit of a 50-50. It's choosing which way you want to go. But Hullet is the direction for both of these two teams, as I have been informed, at least anyway. So we're going to see Hullet somewhere along the line. And I'm very, very curious how he works out in 2v2. Of course, when it comes to having a hold of an unlocked account, you have both. <laughs> you have online, you have Hullet, as long as it doesn't breach the regulations that we are down. But of course, those limitations on the team are, are quite strict to just try and bring the fairness back into it. But Hullet there. Still, the rest of the team's pretty good. It has to be said, it's kind of your, your typical info name or info Mbappe, et cetera, et cetera, is pretty much the way that we're going to go with this one. And well, we are going to go with this one into the game. And there you can see him very, very easily in game on both sides of things. Root Hullet here to join the party late on 
in the weekend. But interested to see him alongside well, Mini Root in Ronaldo Sanchez, of course, from left to right for Crew Esports, who are going to have an attack straight away and can come out to anything. But, I mean, who is the favourite in this one? It, it's a, a difficult one to answer, uh, if I'm honest with you, because Yago on Crew, such a. <laughs> An enigmatic player, as Richard was kind of mentioned there before, he's been about for so long, and, and this guy is such a high-level player, but essentials have looked so good, albeit from their winner's bracket loss, which was on penalties against Crew. This should be a very close game. Pull it now on the edge, going to give it to Janola. Looking to try and find his way through here for essentials. First opportunity of the game. Tonorimo will find the save. Which way does this corner go? And this is where he will be a threat. Corner to be whipped in. Hullet not going to get anywhere near that wasted opportunity. Lisa, based on this game, what we've seen so far, what are we thinking? Essentials have started really well in this game so far. And, you know, they had the opportunity there from a corner and we saw what they were trying to do. They were trying to get onto Hullet. He's the main man. It's like bringing on Fellaini in the 70th minute. You know, you're able to get <laughs> right, him into the hold box. Hold on, right. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> it's like bringing on Fellaini, having Rude Hullet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a disservice to Rude Hullet, but somebody. Controlling him well there on the side of Essentials, getting in the way of a Vinicius Jr. attack. And it's a shame for me that we've got it on both sides of things because it kind of cancels each other out a little bit, doesn't it? That's the thing. And here we are. Davies now moving forward. And Mbappe. Look at all the players in the middle here. Ginola is going to get a bad touch under that. Marquinhos will get this one away. Great start from Essentials. Both teams defending really well, trying to get that ball forward and just not trying to lose the ball in certain situations you don't want to go forward and do a risky pass and yeah. end up losing it because then it, then you're getting pressured all the time and so far both teams doing well i'm not really sure which way it's going to go like you mentioned before went to penalties it just means that they're just both on the same level playing field and like you mentioned they both got hullet so they can cancel each other out in the box stop them from the other hullet from winning the ball as such cristiano ronaldo on the side of crew esports as well that's something to note Ginola on the other side though for essentials here is Hullet now, switches on towards Neymar. We'll use Hakimi to get it there. Neymar now going to have a chance to run at his defender. A little bit of space, the change of player doesn't quite come in as soon as he would have liked. Hullet trying to close down the angle. Hakimi back to Hullet. Essentials looking for a goal here. Mbappe, there it is. You could see it coming a mile off. And the Frenchman's the one who finishes it. But as soon as that room's created by Neymar on that right-hand side, pass, pass, pass. Mbappe's in. Not quite acres of space, but he finds the space to find the shot. Gets it away, 1-0. Great start for them there. We mentioned it, and I mean, a great shot as well. A great scoop turn there to get into the better position to shoot. And it's actually interesting to see gold Mbappe, not an inform Mbappe. Is that because of them not having enough coins and putting it all into Hullet? You don't really know, but as you see there, Hullet sort of started that as well. And since seeing him in both teams, it's great to see him. I've, I've missed him, especially from last year, him being so great to use. Vinicius Junior now back to the edge of Tal. Oh, he is going to go for the finesse, and I think many would have questioned that one. Well, just about getting there ahead of Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the only ones who will be able to stop these crosses coming in and also be a threat at the other side. And Tal back to Hull, just recycling this one around. It's a really good pass into Mbappe, though, and here we go for Curry Spots. Can't quite squeeze it through, and Essentials will break away. Calm from Essentials here. Didn't wilter to the press so much. Just about kept a hold of it. We're going to try and turn it round. Is Ronaldo going to be able to keep that in? No, he is not. That will be a throw in no, now to Crew. Crew, uh, would you be disappointed with this start? They really haven't offered a great deal, but at the same time, for Essentials, they've had that one decent chance. They've taken it. Still plenty of FIFA left to be played, right? A lot of time to be played in this game. And as you mentioned, I mean, Crew have got sort of the more experienced players, but prior to this it's mainly been 1v1 tournaments and 2v2 is a completely different style of play you know you've got to work together you've got to press together if one person presses and the other person doesn't press it means that there's gaps in behind and they're playing some risky football here you know they could have lost the ball there which therefore there was a chance of their opponents having a chance of getting a shot and we're seeing this here but the centrals are playing really well yeah Bappe away here with the centrals and yeah they were under pressure but very well dealt with by Rude Hullet Essentials get this one away. It's just so hard to get the ball off as well, and he'll creep up in the attacking line. I don't need to tell you guys at home that he is a threat. Mbappe now. 
to Alfonso Davies. LinkedIn there with Klosterman at centre back actually, and Hullard's going to give it away. And now Sanchez just about getting in the way, and now they can play this one out. Mbappe trying to turn, look at that left wing. Vinicius Jr. making the run forward. It's a really well thought out pass, and that's got to surely be a foul. Referee agrees. And this one will be held. And then maybe be dinked in as this one played short. I imagine it will be the short one. Nobody in the box yet from this free kick, so it will just be a retention of possession for Crew Esports. This one now going to be laid off. Back to Ronaldo Sanchez. Tries to play it wide. The advantage does not continue. And now Neymar can't keep it in. Crew getting a little bit of possession now here, Lisa. That's what they need. They need to try and keep the ball and just wait for that perfect opportunity. You know, they've got a lot of in-game time left. They don't need to rush it because if they do, there's a chance of getting counted. Just play football, try and find them gaps in behind. Don't rush it, though. Hull it. Edge of the box now to Renato Sanchez. Back to Hull it. A little bit of room to find the pass to Mbappe. Back to Hull it now. Finds the ball into Cristiano Ronaldo. And Renato Sanchez can't quite get away. Too many defenders in the way now, and it's going to be a corner to Crew Esports. Putting the pressure on that little bit more. Sometimes taking a little bit of time for some of these teams who are sitting waiting in that winner's bracket to get themselves involved. Cristiano Ronaldo trying to find the break. Can't quite get it. It's a very calm pass. Now to Rude Hullet. Essentials will get this one away. Potential counter-attacking opportunity. Look at the switch on the other side to Neymar. That's why Mbappe is running. You can see his PSG teammate all the way, completely unmarked still. And nobody's found the pass. Ginola from the edge. It's the defender in the face. It's going to break to Kylian Mbappe now. To CR7 trying to turn around back to Ginola. And Crew will just about survive. But it feels like that ball was on for a long, long time to Neymar, but nobody fancied the switch. It seemed interesting for him actually not to do that switch. I mean, he was open, so open, but I mean, they tried to just play it around and, and keep the ball, I guess. They are in a winning position, but as you see here by the shots, three shots each. I mean, could they both have a couple of goals each? We've only seen one goal, 0 0.9 expected. Pass accuracy on 92 and 93, so they're both similar. Chances in the box for both teams. Of course, one of them converted. Essentials in the lead. But Crew have had their chances. I don't think they'll be too despondent by being 1-0 down. They'll be all right. They'll be heading into this next one, feeling confident still. As we're about to head into the second half of the first leg. Of course, if Crew cannot dispatch of Essentials, we will see a bracket reset. Currently, that's on the cards as it's 1-0 to zero to Essentials as we go into the second half. Let's see if anything's going to change in this next 45. You might see a change coming into the 60th minute into this game, but you don't really want to be changing things to constant pressure or press off the possession loss because you still do have another 90 minutes to play. And that is a lot of in-game time to score a couple of goals. You could even get four or five goals in that time. Double tap, not going to find its way to Ronaldo, and it's going to be an opportunity for Crew to attack for the first time here in the second half. It's taking their time, keeping a hold of the ball. Cancelo now to Marquinhos. A high line coming out from Crew, putting the pressure on as best as they can. Is the switch potentially on? Who knows? Hullet and Renato Sanchez running this one forward. Willing the ball into the final third, and that pass is a sloppy one. The player was way, way offside. But we'll go back to essentials. They can build an attack of their own. Essentials would be happy with a 1-0 lead heading into the second leg, but you always want more goals. I mean, it's a must-win situation for them. They've got a win, as you see, a chance here into Hullet, and he that's heads it on. Oh, that's why you get Hullet in those positions. Couldn't find it to get to Ginola quite in time. And now an opportunity for Crew to try and counter-attack. Bodies flooding forward, Mbappe. Look at the defence here from Essentials. Plenty of people managed to get back. Cancelling the four-touch turn. Can't quite get away with it, though. And now Essentials can actually break back. Ronaldo. Seven trying to get away now. This one will be recycled back, you'd think. And then Hullet's trying to close him down. Ronaldo gets passed back inside to Hullet here for Essentials. Neymar. Elastico to Ginola. A little bit of space to play with here. Which way is he going to go? Tries for the pass to, to Hullet. And it felt forced. And Crew will get away with it. A little bit forced. They didn't really need to go forward in a position of 1 0. Some, and sometimes in these moments, you can just try and recycle the ball. As you see here, Crew going forward really well. There could potentially be a chance. Neymar not going to quite get that. 
Sancho is not going to be able to get out there on half either, although Renato Sanchez will just about pick up the pieces. Ball played forward. Alfonso Davies stretching his legs. Nice to see you change up in the defence, though. I was going to talk about it a little bit more, but I believe we had a chance. Clost him in at the back. That rule breakers can't. I've used it myself. Not too bad. I, I don't think he's necessarily at the top of my list of players that I'd be going for. I think there is better centre backs out there, but nonetheless, very solid option. I've seen in a couple of competitive games. Renato Sanchez, fortunate enough to give the ball away there, but what's your opinions? Klosterman on the essential side? I mean, you don't really see Klosterman in many people's defences. The only way you see it is if there's like a trio of Bundesliga, for example. It's you just see. Davies, yeah. Yeah, you mainly see Davies, but. I mean, he's, he's decent, he's, he's obviously tall, which means he can win the aerial balls. It's quite strong, pacey, 80 plus pace, but might he have a chance can't here. can't deal with this though, Ronaldo inside the box. Kostman just got caught out there, if anything. Quite convenient what we're talking about now, but here we go. Crew trying to get a goal back, switching it up, just trying to get that optimum corner. It's going to be whipped to Cristiano Ronaldo! Have you seen a goal like that this weekend? The answer is absolutely not! It's an overhead kick, green time from Crew, And that is absolutely exquisite from Ronaldo. What a way to score. I mean, especially when you're one goal down in them positions, you just want to hit it in the back of the net or have a chance of scoring. But he just bicycle kicks it into the back of the net. And as you can see, his stats are on the screen. Not You don't really see too many teams using him, but I mean... 88 pace, 94 shooting, 96 attack positioning, 95 shot power, and that's why he's able to get that much power from that position, even from a overhead kick. I mean, I don't even know what to say. 1-1 one, one to get back into the game, and what a goal. What a way to do it. Best goal of the weekend we've seen so far. From a pure striking standpoint, Cristiano Ronaldo, he is inevitable. And that... We've seen some corner tactics this weekend that, you know, a couple of people will be like, oh, you know, they'll have a little whinge about, but that was stunning. Crew get themselves back into this game through one of the goals of the weekend, if not the goal of the weekend so far. There is still time for the teams to try and beat that, but they'll do well. Neymar now. And gaming essentials looking for some sort of reply. What do you say to that, though? I think it's one of those things, though. It's whipped in from a corner. It's not like, you know, they've, you know, it's it's a set piece. But from the, the pure player perspective, how fantastic was that finish? You love to see it. You hate to see it if you're an Essentials fan, though. For eSports now, moving this one forward. They smell blood in the water. Out wide now to Martins. That's out. Pull it. Great pass in to Neres here, actually, on the edge. Five star skills, you've got to be careful for him. It's going to be into Cristiano Ronaldo once again. The green time, Kostaman in the way. And it just feels like Crew Esports are warming into this game. Essentials are not quite floundering, but the creeks are starting to show. Crew definitely started better this second half. Essentials was sort of dominating a little bit with the ball and going forward, but second half it's definitely been Crew since they've got that goal. Maybe a boost of confidence to think they actually can do it. Ball forward now, CR7. Oh, the ball was on to hold it at the back post, you know. It's a good job, Klosterman got in the way. Ball now wide to Hakimi. Nine minutes, well, eight minutes, I should say, of in-game time remaining. I think Essentials probably want to keep a hold of this ball, just stop the issues <laughs> appearing. Good ball from Hullet, though. Ronaldo, scooped and tries to find Neymar. Couldn't quite get it there, and it's a ball across the, the box that was somewhat dangerous, but now crew will maybe have a chance for that final attack. 85 minutes gone. Keep a hold of it for now and go for the last attack. That's got to be the plan, surely. Yeah, if I was in this situation, I'd keep the ball, wait for that 90th minute, 91st minute, depending on how many minutes are added, and then just swamp forward, all the players forward, trying to get into them dangerous areas, as we see here. Trying to do it now, Neres. Oh, he goes for... A reverse Elastico, and it may well just give that opportunity to Essentials. Gaza Martins chasing back. Good ball forward. Cristiano Ronaldo down the wing. Can Diallo get back? It's an absolutely sensational tackle. And one more time. Crew will get a chance to take a lead into the second leg. 
It's essentials that need the win. The time ticks over to 90. Natal now. Looking for the pass inside, can't quite find it. Is that going to be the final moment? Yes, it is now as Hullet gives the ball away. One apiece after the first leg. And I think on reflection, that is probably a fair result. But the talk will be of the goal from Cristiano Ronaldo that got crew back into this game. And that is one that any of you at home score. That's been shared on Twitter, and it will be shared on Twitter, I'd imagine, from the EA Sports account. Oh, my goodness me. But let's talk about it in the grand scheme of things. So, yes, okay, fantastical, brilliant stuff. But in general, would you say crew, they definitely grew into the game, I would say that. Would you say that they deserved that to be 1-1, one, one, or do you think it was maybe a little bit more deserved from them? Essentials seem to drop off a little bit. I think it was deserved for Crew. I mean, I mean, what a way to score, can we just mention again? And to be honest with you, it was interesting to see him in the position so open. Um, mm -hmm. We do see quite a lot of corners being scored from going short and then whipping it into the box. But maybe that's the reason maybe they thought they were going to go short and then we just see that happen. But I think, yeah, I think they deserved it. I think they had a few extra opportunities. They kept the ball really well, defended really well. And we saw that there, 1-1, one, one, it's a really tight game. We could see how it went to penalties beforehand. And what can we, maybe we'll see penalties here. <laughs> Maybe, maybe we will. There's, there's plenty of time to go before we do get there. But let's have another look at that goal because it would just be rude not to, wouldn't it? Let's have a, another spy. So he's, he's just completely unmarked. Kosterman gets there late, thinks he's got it covered. That is sensational, you know. Absolutely brilliant. And that's why you kind of, you, that's what you pay your coins for. That's when you get a hold of some of the top tier cards. This is some of the things that they can do in the right hands at least anyway. Of course, you've still got to get the corner in the right place, but my goodness, mate, we're going to take a breather after that one because what a goal to set us up for the second leg. Korea Sports and Essentials, one apiece, heading into that one, coming at the other side of this break.
Ladies and gents, welcome back to the FGS Open. My name is Chris Tun, joined by Lisa Manley, and of course, we are in to the second leg of the first, hopefully, possibly, of games between these two teams for the Buenos Aires Regional Qualifier. Of course, we may well get that bracket reset if Essentials can get the win, but Crew Esports looking decent. After a shaky start, they definitely warmed into the game and scored one of the great goals of this weekend. Cristiano Ronaldo. I will keep harping on about it. I do apologize. How can you not, though? Ridiculous. Anyway, crew. They're the ones that have another chance. If they lose, then yeah, okay. They do have another pop at it, but Essentials must win this game. Must win indeed. And as we see here, I mean, crew esports into the first game. I mean, they went into it a lot better the second leg and for me they could go on to win this because of how dominant they was in that second half let's see if they can keep it up Neymar now for essentials they will be wanting to answer back for what was a ridiculous goal Hull it's done so well to squeeze by just the big frame oh he finds the pass to Janola can he get in is that going to be a foul by the keeper oh my goodness me how have crew got away with that Cancelo now for crew to put that one forward. That is a contentious decision. What do you think, penalty? Uh, I mean, uh, it could definitely have gone down as a penalty, but did he go down too easily? What's your opinion? W, yeah, that's what you're here, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here we are. Jalou now. Career Sports. Getting away with that one, I feel. That's my, that's my opinion. Cancelo into Neymar. A little bit of space in the middle for Killian Mbappe. The reverse Elastico makes the room. And he doesn't miss from that. Mbappe makes it 2 1 in aggregate. 1 to 0 in the second leg. And all the crew esports boys will be dancing around that one. They definitely will. And what a great goal you saw there as well. They ended up. Reverse Elastic coming into a great position away from the defender, and as you saw, Mbappe from there is not missing. Can Essentials answer back immediately? Renato Sanchez out to hold it, back to Sanchez. An opportunity now for Mbappe. A little bit of space, Ginola in front of him, trying to burst through, Renato Sanchez shuts the door. Clean in his face, and now crew will get away. Next goal is huge for both teams. Well, it's going to send it all the way over the top. The keeper will just about get there, and Van Sant will be putting it out for a throw. Still plenty of time, only 17 minutes gone in the second leg, of course. As mentioned, Essentials are the one that need the win. They need to reset the bracket. If crew win, they will be going to London in April. Essentials started really well in the last leg, but this leg, they just haven't really had the ball to be able to work something. As they win the ball here, they're going to have to try and make something, because otherwise they could potentially sit going out of this tournament, and a lot is on the line. So hopefully we can see something go on, but at the moment they're not really getting anywhere around the edge of the box where they need to be. Oh, Neymar. A little bit of room. Back to Ronaldo. A little bit of room for Neymar. It's just opened up a lot of room for everybody else. And Mbappe in the box. Oh, the deflection off the post. How was that goal? Not went in. Oh my goodness. And then we talk about how Essentials have done absolutely nothing. It's a touch of fortune, then unfortune to not go in. Yeah, it was quite lucky that it obviously went to Mbappe there, but he did a great fake shot to sort of get oh. away from the defender. And we have a chance here. A great, great defender there, although they sort of gave away the ball in a really bad position, but maybe nerves get into them. But as we mentioned, a great fake shot from Mbappe. and. It's just quite unfortunate they bounce off the post. Neymar, oh, he tries to clip it into Mbappe, and this one will be cleared away by Essentials. Hull it now. Just going to pull this one away. Fantastic stuff from the side of crew, though, to push themselves forward, get a hold of this ball once more. 28 minutes gone. Next goal is huge, absolutely massive. Good ball from Renato Sanchez, and Mbappe will turn it back around, was running into trouble. Pull it now. All the way back out to Atal. We've seen more and more Atal as the weekends went on, I feel. Yeah, we sure have, of course. I mean, Atal, at first he was coming on as a sub, and then we see a finesse from there, and it's not really a place you 
should be for that in front, but you have got Hulley, and especially if you're green time, it, it could potentially go in. We did see that earlier with De Bruyne. He, uh, De Bruyne, he's shot from about 30 yards out, green timed it, and it smashed into the back of the net. But in general, eh, it's a bit risky doing that, because especially as you lose the ball, but they're in a winning position. They're trying to get that extra lead to have a two-goal cushion. Oh, Mbappe, as he bundled his way through. Oh, if he could find the pass out to Vinicius Junior. Next slide challenge coming in from Ronaldo. It's going to leave a little bit of room in the middle. He is able to recover now. Well, it was there. It feels like crew play a little bit. Oh, I actually will come back to it because Cristiano Ronaldo is in. And that is the chance that he needs for essentials. He's been the man in the moment in this game. And he is the one that will level things up. Two goals down for him in this game and great through ball as well. Across the floor and... He's, he's the star man and he, he puts it into the back of the net. I don't even think it was even green timed, but it's interesting to see him using a 91 rated version of Ronaldo when there's so many you know, other options that you can have. And obviously it's probably just coin wise, reasoning why you're using him, not being able to afford the likes of Ginola or inform Ronaldo. Yeah, if you were, if you were what, going, because the inform Ronaldo is very, very expensive and maybe doesn't allow you to afford Ginola and people like that. And that's very right there. The standard uh, still does the job. Pull it now, trying to press forward. Normally, you know, crew will be disappointed with that. They definitely seem to have had the better of essentials in this game so far. But we don't really have much to show for it. Still all tied here. It was a very close game between these two in the winners' bracket final, and while I wonder if Hollett could change that, Ronaldo not quite locking onto that pass, it will go all the way through to Van der Sar. Davies now. Trying to run this one up the pitch. We're getting towards the end of that first half. And that will be the end of the first half. They don't recycle it forward quick enough. 1-1 one, one in the second leg. The same scoreline as what we ended with in the first. Expected goals are low. Chances have been a few. But so far, a very, very tight game. Possession definitely on the side of Crew Esports, even though just about. But if anything, you know, the expected goals there with essentials, they have, well, according to the game, had the better chances. Yeah, I mean, they both also had two shots as well, which therefore you could say that if they was a little bit more clinical, maybe they could have had two goals apiece. But I mean, as you can see, their pass accuracy on both sides, 94. And these type of games, it's really essential to have high pass accuracy because you don't want to be giving away the ball so sillily because it's a chance that you give away a ball in a stupid position and your opponents go and counter-attack you and score. You'll be punished at this highest level, very much so. So here we go, crew from left to right now. As we get into the final half of this two-legged affair between these two teams. We'll be walking away as the regional qualifier from Buenos Aires. Hola tries to find the pass inside now to Cristiano Ronaldo. Can't quite get it there. A little bit forced, but will now allow Essentials to play out with their own half. Oh, you can see crew very high. Line to push up as much as they can. Good ball from Hakimi, though. Renato Sanchez now a bit of room, and that's alleviated that pressure. Crew can go forward as much as they want. I think they don't really want that bracket reset so that they can go forward if they want to because they can rely back on the reset that they have. But you don't want to have to go to the bracket reset because it means you're going to have pressure on you. Uh, whereas at the moment, it's not essential to try and get this win. Absolutely. Sanchez out. This is a nice build from essentials, but 11 men behind the ball for Crew Esports now. Klosterman. Is this ball forward, really good ball to Mbappe actually, and it's going to be actually exchanged back and forth. It's not the ball for Ginola though, and this one will be played away by Crew. Well defended, plenty of men back to hold on. Realistically, they're now going to have to recycle this one forward. Vinicius Junior gets himself away from Renato Sanchez, and he's the kind of man who can just get that little speed boost and find himself in that little bit of space. Hull it now. Back across to Italian, Vinicius Jr. on the ball once more. A little bit of room he actually found himself in. Now back to Ronaldo. Plenty of room for the Portuguese man trying to wriggle through. Ball rolls galore. But Hullet gets in the way. Corner ball. You know how this has resulted on previous occasion. 
Pollock will whip it into Cristiano Ronaldo once again. Klosterman just about gets in the way. Cristiano Ronaldo will actually break here for essentials. Neymar also going to be set off on his bike. Running away, the Brazilian. Is he going to be able to get away, get a shot away on his left or his right? He's right, and it's good save from the keeper. Twisting and turning that five-star weak foot so difficult to deal with. And from a corner on one side, it's a corner on the other. Ginola now to whip this one in. Hull it front post as well. Donnarumma always gathering that. They're trying to whip that ball from the corner into the likes of Ronaldo and Hulley. At the moment, they're trying to whip it into Ronaldo. But at the moment, they're doing it too close to the goalkeeper. We know Donnarumma's a giant, six foot five, six foot six. Not too sure exactly what he is, but he's, he's going to be big. catching that all day long. Exactly. Big indeed. Oh, Vinicius is in. Does he find the pass to Ronaldo? Has to go backwards. Didn't feel like there was an option on there, so rather keep a hold of the ball. Mbappe twisting, turning. Pass to Neymar was nearly on. There was a little bit of room for Mbappe there to maybe get the shot away, but chose to go for the pass. That higher percentage chance. Couldn't keep a hold of the ball, though. Hollett will recycle this one back. 65 minutes gone here in this second leg. Essentials playing a much better game in this second half, I feel. Yeah, they might have had a chance to talk to their coach in the, at the end of the first leg to tell them what they're not doing right, what they need to do better. They could have potentially said to maybe use your wings a little bit more. You've got the likes of... Hull it where you can pass back to, which can create chances for you. And at the moment, they're doing really well. And as you can see, 2-2, two, 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 it's anyone's game. Good football by Crew to get themselves out. Hull it. He's got Vinicius Jr. in front of him. It's Neymar coming in with the challenge. That's the kind of challenge that comes in when you've got Hull it. You're like, right, okay. Is Neymar dispossessing me there? Apparently so. Just lingered on the ball maybe a little bit too much. Hull it. Took a ball out, you know. Hakimi's found Neymar, really good ball. Cristiano Ronaldo is there. If Neymar can square it across, not quite. Still in possession of the ball. Is Neymar back to Ginola? And there is Essentials taking the lead. Really well worked from Neymar. Keeps a hold of the ball and scrambles it across to the Frenchman. And Ginola gives Essentials the route to that bracket reset. And that's why you have Ginola in your team. Five star, five star. He's the man that you want. And that's why he's so expensive. 1.7 million, as you can see here from his stats. 90 pace, 87 finishing. And it doesn't even matter if you have good finishing in that position. You're expecting to just tap it in. I but was going to say, I could have scored that, Lisa. <laughs> 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 you could have got, got Callum Wilson to put that one away. 800 coins. <laughs> it was just really well worked by Neymar, wasn't it? Fantastic stuff from him. And, of course, Essentials, who, for me, you know, I, I felt as if Crew had been the better team uh, for the majority of that first half, especially. They just haven't been able to make a count. The chances haven't necessarily been there. The possession has. But they haven't been able to do a great deal with it. Now they must do something with it. Or Essentials will force the bracket reset. Good ball now to Neres. Back to Renato Sanchez. Pull it now, looking to try and create. Ronaldo, a little bit of room in front of him as well, but there's the pass on here, potentially to Draxler. Goes for the finesse there. Always a, a bit of a risky player. They will lose the ball, and that will be a throw in to Essentials. Exactly that, and as you can see, it's such a close game here, and going into it, we potentially have expected Crew maybe to just edit, edge it, but going forward they're doing really well but they're not really doing anything with the ball as we mentioned it takes one chance to get a goal and essentials did that really well oh, what a ball that is Neres is going to be able to burst past Davies not quite maybe try just a little bit too much but Renato Sanchez now going to get this one away the longer this time goes on the better it is for essentials and in 11 minutes time if nobody scores another goal that's exactly where we're heading towards the bracket reset Mbappe inside the box the shot cancel to try and find the room for Renato Sanchez well it gets in the way Ten minutes to go, still time for Crew to level this one up. Draxler switches the play beautifully to Cancelo. Moving this one forward, there's support as well. Crew are going to have to go for this shortly. Draxler can't find the pass, just a little bit slow off the bench, to be honest with you. Doesn't benefit from those chemistry styles, if anything, at all. With that five chemistry off the bench and Mbappe, it's broke for him. He's got men over inside the box as well. Look at the back post. It's Cristiano Ronaldo. Is he going to get there ahead of Cancelo? Not quite. Ronaldo Sanchez will win it. And Hullet will keep a hold of it. CR7 now to Hullet. Offside. Ball given away. Five minutes to go. Very interesting to see Draxler coming on as a, as a sub. I mean, 
He is a great player. He's four-star skill his five-star weak for so you can shoot on the left or the right, and he has got the finesse shot trait, but do you expect to bring in the likes that of someone that's more, maybe a Finicius Junior, for instance, someone that is good at dribbling, he's got pace, but Jackson doesn't really have pace. And lost the ball here, Janola has men over, and this would kill the game when he keep hold of it, they've lost it. That was an opportunity for Crew to put this one to bed. Or for Essentials to put this one to bed, I should say, sorry. Now it's an opportunity for Crew to get back into this and to force extra time and maybe even penalties. Final chance of the game is going to come here and it needs to work out for them. Look at the men coming forward. Ronaldo is trying to feed Draxler in. It's not going to happen. And that one will be cleared away and the bracket is reset. Essentials get the job done. And we will go to another game between these two. Great play there by Essentials, to be honest with you. Obviously, probably coming into this, they weren't the favourites at all, but they did really well. I mean, Ronaldo, star man, we haven't really seen him in too many teams this weekend, but, I mean, let's talk about probably the goal of the weekend and, of course, just scoring so counter, many goals. Counter for nothing now, though, did it? It was from Crew, and they are the ones that lose that game. The bracket is re now reset, and it will be one more game to decide who goes through from Buenos Aires to the Team of the Season Cup, of course, in April. Very excited to see who gets out the other end of this one. What's the feeling, though? If you're Crew, you're disappointed. There's your advantage that you did have. It is now gone. I felt like they played some decent FIFA, especially in that second leg, but it was not quite enough to get past Essentials. If you were to go one way now, who do you think's taking this tie away? I mean, coming into it, I'd have said Crew because they went on, up, you know, they went in a winner bracket, they were unbeaten, but I mean, Essentials now are going to have the confidence. They just beat them. They know that they just got to beat them well over two legs one more time, and I think they, they might have this. Yeah, they might. I think for Essentials as well. You know, they came from Swiss. They were unbeaten as well until they ran into Crew previously. Uh, Crew had already lost in Swiss as well. So maybe that loss is just going to bring back some nerves for Crew. Although they do have the experience. They have the players on that roster who have been in these positions before. They can get this done. The advantage that they did have is now gone. And I wonder if they can kind of play some of the FIFA that they were playing at the first half of that second leg, then they're in a good spot to maybe do something. But Essentials have fought back. The bracket is reset. Rachel and Mike to break that one down. Yeah, thanks, guys. Bracket reset. Here we go, Mike Labelle. We knew it was going to be a tight and cagey affair, didn't we? After what happened previously between these two teams, four all went to penalties, and obviously it was Crew who had the advantage there. Mike Labelle, three two there. Nothing really to separate these two teams. Obviously, Essentials does have the advantage, but yeah, tell us what you thought of that one. Uh, when the matchups are this close, it comes down to maybe a piece of luck, some good fortune, taking an opportunity a little bit better than your opposition, being a little more clinical. Always going to be a fine detail. Uh, a good read defensively, a poor read defensively, a little bit nervous, not as nervous, a knockdown. I can keep going all day, <laughs> all night. Just let me know when to stop. I'm good to go. Well, let's keep uh, going all I, day, I all night, because we're going to have highlights for you to talk we'll over. <laughs> <laughs> we got you the asked highlights. for it, Mike. If you missed, if you missed any of the action then you missed out on some really good gameplay, a lot of back and forth. And as always, goalkeepers have been pretty spectacular in terms of different saves they're making and where they, they're able to get a, a foot here, a leg there, an arm there, you name it, a parry, a rebound. We also had that beautiful overhead kick. Maybe a little bit of a spoiler there, some foreshadowing. Have not seen one of those. And what makes that most impressive as uh, defensively they switch off on the corner is really this time green. Uh, you don't see that happen too frequently. Uh, outside of the foot elastico, we thought crew might have been pulling away here. Just beautiful goal, very reactive, smart read in the box, but not so fast. As you see Mbappe starting to work, there's some of that uh, bouncing around, called a bit of a, a ping pong in the box. You got the equalizer. And then on the break here, Neymar, which you got for us, Neymar, quick ball roll, wiggle work, not quite enough. And they're doing a lot of pump faking and double guessing. And you're trying to throw off your opponent, and sometimes you can get a little too cute with it. This is a little bit of uh, some good fortune, but it's well worked. You get a bounce back, goes to Neymar, Neymar's quick feet, very reactive, able to take advantage of the end line. And then, of course, that layoff to Rude Hullet. And as mentioned previously, both these guys using Rude Hullet hasn't necessarily been a staple. Uh, within some of the squads of being built, but I expect more of the same heading into the final stage, we should say, because it's going to be win or go home here for now either side because we've had the reset. But I don't think that anyone will have negative 
mentality attached to this. It doesn't feel as if, uh, even though they were in the winner's bracket pr- pre- before they got into this matchup with Crew, I don't, I don't think they should be down with that result. It's just more of mentally that reset, and now let's get back into it. Yeah, it was only one goal to separate those teams, wasn't it? In that first match, we go to a reset, like Mike Labelle just said, to finally find our winner here and who will be our Buenos Aires champion and joining the rest of the teams in April at the Copper Box Arena in London as well. OK, well, we'll find out the answer to that question right after this short break. Come back to watch it. Welcome to my master class. えー、皆さんどうもこんにちは。えー、ブルーユナイテッド EFC 所属、えー、プロプレイヤーのアグです。えー、今回は、えー、フォーメーションの紹介をしていこうかなと思います。えー、紹介するフォーメーションは4231。で、戦術と、えー、指示についても紹介できればなと思います。はい、使用しているフォーメーションは、えー、4231です。この4231を紹介していければなと思います。えー、守備のスタイルはバランス、えー、幅55、えー、深さは75に設定しています、えー、4231は、えー、非常にコンパクトなフォーメーションで、えー、幅は55であ,のあまり広げ,ず広げすぎず狭すぎずっていう風にしていますで深さ75にしている理由は自分は結構プレッシャーに行く、えー、スタイルなので75に前から、えー、プレッシャーに行けるように75に設定していますで、このシーン、えー、自分が攻撃を仕掛けていて、相手にボールを取られました。で、相手はカウンターを仕掛けてきている最中です。で、このシーン、逆サイドに、えー、サイドチェンジで展開されたので、レーダーを見てもらうと分かるように、結構、あの、間延びしているのが分かると思います。なので、ここで、えー、ラインが下がってしまっているので、えー、オフサイドトラップを仕掛けて、このように、しっかりと、えー、コンパクトに、えー、1列目、2列目、3列目、4列目まで、えー、しっかりコンパクトに保つように、えー、しましょう。で、見てもらったら分かるように、この時点で、えー、4、4、えー、まあ守備時はちょっと4、4、2みたいな、えー、ブロック、まあ、4、4のブロックを形成して、えー、基本的にコンパクトにして戦うようにしましょう。で、この時点で、えー、4、4のブロックはしっかり作れているので、えー、数的有利は、えー、作らせてない状況です。で、このシーン、えー、最後、えー、4枚しっかり、えー、44のブロックは壊れされて、ね、いないので、えー、シュートを打たれましたが、シュートブロックにしっかり、えー、入っていて、えー、前作同様、今作も、えー、シュートブロックが強いので、しっかりカーソルを合わせてあげて、シュートブロックをしてあげることにより、えー、守備することができました。はい、えー、以上が、えー、マイマスタークラスになります。えー、皆さんもぜひ4231強いので、えー、試してみてください。えー、それでは皆さん、えー、ピッチでお会いいたしましょう。バイバイ。Well, welcome back then. You join us as we go to a reset for our Buenos Aires Open here. Before the break, we had a 3 2 result between Crew Esports and Essentials. Essentials coming through that lower bracket, which means we go to a reset. We get to do it all again. Mike Clavel, two more awesome legs of FIFA coming our way. Mike, I want to chat a little bit about the players because surely. All the players, all these four players, will know each other quite well. They're all South American players, all really big on the scene, all taken their own respective titles. Does that make things more difficult or a little bit easier to break down their gameplay? This is still a new dynamic. And I'm not looking to sit on a fence or, or be in the middle here, but we haven't seen a lot of 2v2. This is brand new to FIFA 22. There's a lot of twos that I'm talking about. I could throw out the four triple two. That's a four two two two.、Uh, I could just keep going with twos. I'll stop. But、uh, the, the point I'm making is that we're going to also see players that are really talented individually that maybe don't connect that well in a partnership. 
So we're seeing something shift right now. We're seeing a transition. Uh, and Graveson talked about it yesterday that he's super excited for it. He feels like this was a natural progression. And I agree with him. I've always wanted to see more team aspects to playing FIFA. So now adding the 2v2, hey, maybe we'll even see a 5v5 at some point. I wouldn't hate that. I like that it, it, there is this collective. It just changes the way that you play the game. Yeah, well, I think that's how the game is played a lot of the time, isn't it? For these guys, when they're just playing at home, they get a friend and they join and have a lot of fun. And I think we saw that a lot during the pandemic as well. So it's great that we're actually going to get to see it competitively as well. Obviously, we've had these great tournaments like FIFA E-Club World Cup, and we've had these awesome sellout arenas as well. And it would be great if we could get back to where we were in the future. I'm crossing my fingers, Mike. You maybe want to do that as well, just so we're all crossed. Might get back to Atlanta. Well, we're going to the Copper Box Arena, aren't we, in London? But, Mike, I hear that we are ready to go with this reset. We're excited for this one. It is Crew Esports taking on Essential Gaming. Chris Tun, Lisa Manley, are you as excited as I am for this one? I've got my fingers crossed as well, Rachel. They're crossed. We're hoping to be there, of course, and we're very, very excited to be there come April, the Team of the Season Cup. And that's what these guys are trying to find themselves getting there. And it goes to the bracket reset. We go again between these two teams. I'm not sure which way this one's going to go now, because to be honest, I thought Crew seemed to be growing into Essentials, seemed to start hot air as some of the losers bracket teams often do. But then from there, Crew grew into it a little bit more, but Essentials nabbed the goal, they find the win. We kind of had a little bit of discussion beforehand. We've now had a moment to sit on it. I'm going to put you on the spot for the first time. Give me a winner. I mean, it's interesting, really, because Essentials, they started off really well. They got the goal, didn't they? And then yep. Crew got back into it. Next leg, it was sort of... Both sides, they both played really well, defended you really well, attacked defense, really well. You can't sit on the fence, by the way. I'm not going to let you I'll go for it, then. I'm going to go for it. <laughs> I think Crew just about edge it, for me, anyway. What about you? Close game. I'm the one that asked the questions around here, though. <laughs> I think we're going to have a close game. I, I think it'll go down to extra time, potentially. I think we may see a goal nabbed. I'm, it's very hard to call. I just think that Crew seemed to not take their chances as well, but then Essentials didn't necessarily, it didn't feel like they had as much of the ball or as much possession or as many of those chances. We should be jumping into the game momentarily though, where we will eventually find out. But if we have any more Cristiano Ronaldo goals, like the one we had in the first game, then my goodness, I, I, I'm I not going to be able to contain myself, I don't think, Lisa, to be honest with you. Hopefully we'll be jumping in in just a second. What did we think of the impact of Hullet, though? We talked about before the game, both teams having a hold of him, though, kind of cancels our observations out, if you like. I think it's interesting to see him. We don't really see him this year. Last mm. year, last few years, he's been really vital in people's teams, but with the restrictions, you're only allowed one icon. So we're mainly seeing R9 and Yosebios and Pele's and stuff like that. But I think it was great to see him. You know, people were working balls through him and him to pass it off to Renato Sanchez and Bappe's on the wing. Ginola's up front. So I think it's great to see him in play. Obviously, he really does help in the air as well. We're seeing quite a lot of corners come into him. So... Yeah. It's, it's one of those, it's like Ronaldo, isn't it? Where you want to have the option from a corner of somebody like Cristiano Ronaldo for this reason, of course, if you did miss it in the first leg. Whip this in, and I'll tell you what. Oos, unbelievable. Times are green as well. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Probably the best goal we've seen so far from a, a pure finish standpoint this weekend. I'd imagine, you know, we've seen some better team goals, obviously, at the same time, but just whipped in and the finish is unbelievable, of course, from Cristiano Ronaldo. Hopefully we're going to be jumping in very, very shortly. Uh, I'll, I'll join you in the prediction then. I, I'm going to say crew as well. I think if I was to lean in any direction, they have lost that game, though. And the majority of the time when whoever wins that first reset, whether that be the team in the winner's bracket, they would obviously go on to win, but whoever wins that usually... Usually that means that the loser's bracket team will go through and win again. The confidence is there with them. The momentum is there with them. I can see the Nelly ready to load into the game. Just waiting on a couple of players getting in there. We should get this underway. But let's have a look at the loser's bracket. I believe from the next side of things, if I'm correct. Oh, no, this is actually from the uh, Buenos Aires side. So this is obviously from the side of Essentials and how they found themselves here. Seemed like a good game, but for Essentials and... and and for um, the boys on the other side, it has been mostly plain sailing. But for crew, you know, they, they've been watching this. They'll have seen the goals that were conceded, a couple of them by the looks of things, here from Essentials. Defensive frailties may be there, but in leg two is where Essentials turned it on in this game. Cancel from Hullet there, finds him a bit of room. Lovely pass inside. Ronaldo never missing from that very well-worked goal. This one comes only minutes later. Look at the run from Cristiano Ronaldo, played on by the defender at the back post. 
Is that Amaldini in there or is that Ginola just all the way back? Looks like Ginola at the back. Anyway, Ginola here now for essentials. They really put this one to bed though, didn't they? Ronaldo, scoop turn usually means a goal. Plenty here. We said has to be said. And they will just about concede towards the end here by the looks of things, but oh my word. How, oh, that, that's uh, why, why do we have to see that? What a horrible goal. <laughs> Back into the real game though and into the one that matters. Essentials may have gotten it done in the losers bracket final. They may have got it done to reset it, but can they do it again to send themselves to London in April? Depends if they play like they did in the first half. I mean, Crew played really well on the, in the end of the last few get, few legs we had, and if they start like that in this game, they could see themselves going one and up. But Essentials on the other, and they played really well on both legs, defended really well, attacked really well, and so here we see Essentials starting off really well going forward, trying to work something. Started hot in the previous game. Can they do it again? Pull it down the line. Is he going to get there in time? No, he is not. Be a goal kick to crew who can finally get their leg underway. Vinicius Junior now trying to find that pass. I haven't seen many uh, player of the month Vinicius Junior, but I tell you what, I believe this is the second in form and he still gets going. It may well be the Champions League, but nonetheless, still a fast player. Mbappe now, another one of those. Oh, it's the back heel pass to Mbappe inside the box now, twisting, turning, trying to find some room. Cristiano Ronaldo now. Tries to find the space, it will be blocked. Van der Sar may well have been there to cover. But the back heel pass in there, causing issue. Pull it, whips it in, the keeper will get in the way. Davies will he get this one away for essentials, it looks that way. And they will survive just about to fight another day. I mean, as you mentioned, uh, Vinicius Jr., you haven't really been seeing many of the new player of the month, Vinicius Junior, but it may be because it's so expensive and he, when you commit to doing him, there's 800,000 coins gone and you can't buy a tradable player with that because it's completely gone and that's why we might be seeing the informed version of him because you can buy and sell him on the market and not lose as much coins. Mbappe, Ginola. Looking to try and pass it across, well defended by Crew. Get this one away. Neymar now has Mbappe down this right-hand side, he can get running. Kosterman, somebody who can keep up with them. Neymar now, look at the pass over towards Vinicius Junior, and the header back across. Can't quite find it. Davies will pull this one away. Central's living a little bit dangerously. It feels like crew have started the game better. Really nice link up play though between Alfonso Davies and Kylian Mbappe. Renato Sanchez, can he keep hold of it? No, he can't. Vinicius now. Releasing Cristiano Ronaldo, it's got to be the switch to Neymar, that's got to be the pass that comes on, but it's actually the ball in towards Mbappe! The finish is poor, but he gets a second chance, no he doesn't! Just took his time that little bit too much. And Van der Sar says thank you very much. Crew have very much been on the front foot here. Just haven't been able to make essentials pay yet. That was a great opportunity there, great ball over the top, and you actually expect Mbappe with 87 shot power to put a little bit more power on that to actually make the keeper oh, have a chance. Ginola in the box, here. Mbappe on the second time, and the deflection comes through and works out for Kylian Mbappe and for essentials. They haven't been quite pinned in their box so far, but the chances are full the crew, but essentials, they do what they have to do and they bury the chance they find. All it takes is one opportunity, and we saw that here. I mean, Crew had a couple of opportunities. It's probably against the wrong of play, but Mbappe gets into that position where there's no really defenders around him with the deflection, and he's got to score from there, as we mentioned, with his 87 shot power. He just buries it past the goalkeeper. Cristiano Ronaldo just going to run into Holetier's crew, trying to answer back very, very quickly. Essentials will be counting their lucky stars. Crew will really have started the hotter. Just takes one chance though. It's not how FIFA works. It only matters when the ball goes in the back of the net. Neymar now. He's going to lose out to Hullet. Mbappe here. Is he going to send Ronaldo on his way? Ronaldo Sanchez all over him. Essentials play that one well. Now Mbappe. Stretching his legs down this left hand side. Looks for the pass inside the Ginola. Will get a corner. How is that, this one going to work? They've always went front post to Hullet, but it hasn't really been working. It's the short pass now. Yes, it is. 
tackle they're not going to try and beat the defender back to him now though poor pass inside to Neymar really good pass out though to Hullet to try and get this one away a sliding challenge comes in and Neymar will now send a towel on his way great counter attacking opportunity now for the side of crew Mbappe cross in towards the back post it's Cristiano Ronaldo and somehow it doesn't go in off the line from Davies attack continues Neymar on the edge looking for the ball or can't get by how have crew not scored how have they not scored indeed, especially when they had Ronaldo was in so much space and they green timed it. I was like, let's go in the end, and then Davies just at the last minute just clears it off the line. Vicious Junior back to Neymar. Oh, he's looking to find a little bit of space. He found it momentarily. Hold it now. Back to Vinny Junior to save it from Van der Sar. Crew are really putting the pressure on. The one to zero down. We're only 37 minutes into the first leg of this bracket reset. It's going to be played short to Mbappe. Whipped in towards the back post. Vinicius Junior is never going to get there. Second time of asking, nobody does either. And Essentials can maybe break. Ginola. He's the pass, he finds it. Back towards Mbappe. Is there going to be an opportunity here? Cristiano Ronaldo is waiting in the middle, which is the Jalo. Just about getting in the way. Now, counter attacking opportunity here. This game is wide open. It's also very interesting to see how these two teams are playing. We're seeing quite a lot of wing play, but we're also seeing them cross quite a lot because of the two tall men in the box. Neymar, can he find that crossing opportunity? Can he find the head of Ronaldo or Hullet? Ronaldo Sanchez into the feet of Hullet. Can he find a pass? Pai, no, can't, can't quite find it. Look at the run from Ronaldo, though. That's what Mbappe is going to try and find. It's a wayward pass. You know, will sweep this one up. Approaching half time now. One minute added. Will be an opportunity for Essentials to maybe have a stab at it here. Hakimi. Ball inside, doesn't find anything, and that will be the half. One to zero lead for Essentials is somehow the score. But the expected goals are, are there the same. That 1.3 expected from the two shots. It's more than actually on the side of crew, but crew. Definitely the ones that have had the better chances. There was one clear cut chance coming from Essentials that they are managing to bury. But look at that four shots in the box from Crew. Three on target, none have went in. Also, what was interesting on the stats there was the, the passing for both of them. Normally, we're seeing anywhere between 93 and 94, but for both the teams here, we're seeing around 85, 86, which means, as you can see, an 86 for Crew and 82 for the other team and as you can see that that's not normally what you see normally you're around 8 95 96 that means a lot of wayward passes are going around is that because they're nervous may well be may well be so there's potentially well there's a minimum of 135 minutes of in-game time to go between these two teams and it is a lead for essentials who have the attack from kickoff shooting from left to right crew sports defending and shooting from right to left Kimi now, run from Ronaldo Sanchez, may well trigger a play to run out of position. Neymar to Hullet, just pressing. That's not going to get through Hullet on the other side though, and this may well be a kind of attacking opportunity. That's very, very dangerous. Ronaldo now, CR7, has Vinicius Jr. there. Vinicius Jr., plenty of time off. The pass backwards is poor. It's really not the option. Ginola will get this one away for essentials. He's actually going to get much get by Dijalo. Look at all the men around Ginola. You don't want this ball to go in the box, and it will not. Crew will just about survive the counter-attack there. That looked promising for Crew on the attack there, but again, that final decision just about eluding them. Yeah, terrible pass as well. We mentioned that the passing of both teams and a terrible pass. They did try and actually work something from it with the extra pass, but just a terrible pass and ended up almost getting countered from it. And we mentioned that before with being countered from a bad pass and it almost happened there. Crew Esports will not be worrying yet, though. They haven't managed to score. They are 1-0 down. But the opportunities are coming. The goal surely will follow. Hullet getting in the way again. He has been present in that defensive role so much. And this may well be a break as Hullet gets going on the attack as well. He's got Ginola on the inside. They're actually just about 4v4 at the back yet. Ginola into his feet now. Back over to Ronaldo to Mbappe. A crucial, crucial block from Marquinhos. And this one will be played away from Crew. Essentials counter-attacking football is so, so hard to deal with. Mbappe now will switch it wide to Cancelo. Is he going to get there? Not quite. 
and unfortunately for Crew, that attack ends. But as I said, there's still plenty of time. They won't be worrying about it too much yet. They nearly win it back in a really dangerous area, but Essentials will be able to play this one out. Janola, Davies, plenty of pace to get going down this left-hand side. He's just going to keep running. He's going to go for the cross to Ronaldo. Takes a touch. That one will be run out, but by the defender, corner ball. He's covering Hollett. Klosterman's also a threat. It's going to be whipped in by Janola. Hollett is there, but so is the keeper. Donnarumma getting in the way. So hard when the keeper's in that position. We know in FIFA 22 it's very, very difficult to get there ahead of him. It's very good play actually from Crew Esports, bringing out the keeper in that position because they want to minimise, uh, maximise, sorry, the chance of getting the ball off Hullet because he's so tall. If you're in that position, you have an extra few yards to get onto Hullet. But there also is an element of if you do end up bringing him out too far, could they just shoot? from the corner, which we sometimes do see. And also, they could just end up going short and whipping it into the back stick where Donnarumma would be in no man's land because he'd be in the middle of the middle of the goal. Yeah, it's a risky play. Finishes Junior now. A little bit of room being created. They're not too concerned about his shooting ability. They're concerned about the speed. They're concerned about the passing. It doesn't quite fall for crew this time. And Ronaldo will be blocked for the counter-attack from Essentials. Changes a foot. No surprises to see that. See crew. Going with the 4 1 2 1 2, which has obviously gained, uh, sorry, this 4 3 1 2, but it's very similar to the 1 2 1 2, isn't it? In terms of how it plays, it's quite narrow. It does have a lot of players through the middle, good defensive formation as well. But 4 3 1 2 coming in there. On the other side, I believe it's either 4 4 2 or 4 triple 2 on the side of Essentials. Looking at the possession, though, mostly in the first half, of course, going over towards Essentials. But in the last few minutes, it really has been all about crew putting that pressure on. And seeing where the ball is as well, as you can see from the mini-maps here on both sides, it's mainly on the left-hand side of the pitch. One obviously having Neymar and one having Vinicius Jr. I'm pretty sure. And on the other hand, most of the times we're seeing Messi, but a couple of changes here. And it's interesting to see, you know, different players and different teams. Some people are having Hakimi at right back for the extra pace. And on the other hand, in my opinion, the towel's a little bit better for going there's forward. Over. There's been over at the back post of Cristiano and Ronaldo can get this one in. Marquinhos just about recovers, that's a dangerous pass out from Donnarumma, but Crew will get away with it. Shallow outs now to Ronaldo Sanchez. Essentials have looked a threat, especially on the counter-attack. That's a wayward ball, Draxler on the pitch now for Crew. What's the thought with Draxler then? I'm not 100% I'm not sure on it to be honest with you, I'm, I'm curious. What other options would have been there? Neres is on the pitch too, but Essentials are the ones coming forward. Second goal would be huge for them. Akimi now just forcing the pass into Gelson Martins' feet. Neymar will get this one back. I mean, there's so many options that you can bring on from the bench. Like we mentioned, it's very interesting to see Traxler come on the pitch. I mean, he's a great player in general. He's got four star, five star, but. Is it the option that you want to come on if you're in a losing position? You want to be able to bring on fast players? What a ball that is. CR7, not going to get any further, but I agree with you. Is Draxler that impact that you want? I'm not quite sure. That's a tremendous, tremendous ball over to Neymar. Cristiano Ronaldo, chipped ball forward. Neymar, acres of space. Has he got an option in the middle? It's going to be Hullet, but Marquinhos will be the first one there. Potential opportunity here, nine minutes to go. In this first leg, it's the ball over the top. Is Neres going to be the one to get the chest down? And the header across from Hakimi was so, so important. Well, we didn't get a touch on there. There's a chance that Neres was through. And we mentioned earlier about chances of having Hakimi in a towel with the team. And in my opinion, probably Hakimi brings the more defensive side of it, whereas a towel going forward, the pace is a lot better. We sometimes even see him coming on as a right winger, so just shows you going forward he's a lot better. But if you want to stay back a little bit more, have your left backs and right back on, stay back, here's the man to have. And here we see him in the team and doing such a great job. Cristiano Ronaldo looking at the pass maybe to Neymar. Well worked on the defence, on the side of crew. They're now going to get this one forward. 87 minutes. Do they want that final attack? Ronaldo Sanchez. Keeping a hold of the ball, everyone behind that ball for essentials. Hullet now. Just dribbling his way through with the left stick. Hullet 
to Draxler and then to Neymar. It was Cristiano Ronaldo, I'm sorry. Potential opportunity goes begging. And Essentials may well have an opportunity of their own with Ginola. Twist this one round, it's away towards the back post to Neymar. It will be headed away and it will be a lead for Essentials heading into the second leg. Crew Esports, they're the ones that are sitting in that winner's bracket final. Haven't lost for a long time until they met Essentials once more. We're in the bracket reset. Essentials have the lead heading into the second leg. I mean, yeah, it was against what we thought was going to happen. Essentials came out and got that goal, but yeah, we, we both thought that crew would do it. But well, there's still time. There is still time. And you know what? They played that really, really well. For the most part, they were the team who seemed on top of Essentials on the counter-attack is a dangerous, dangerous prospect. But we have 90 more minutes and maybe more of FIFA to come between these two teams to decide who is going to be going to London in April. You'll find out after this quick break. Ladies and gents, welcome back to the FGS Open. And we have a game on our hands into the second leg of this game between Essentials and Crew Esports. The bracket has already been reset. Essentials get it done in game number one. You can see the players now loading in for game number two in this bracket reset. And it is a 1 0 lead for Essentials. We're very excited to get into it. Lisa, this is going to be a crack. It. Crew need to go for it. And they're shooting from right to left with Essentials from left to right. Essentials need to hold on or find more. Crew need to find a goal back very quickly. 
yeah, such a tight game. Obviously, only being 1-0, anything can happen. One opportunity, it's all it takes for you to get that goal. And especially with the players they're using, Mbappe, Ronaldo, Ginola, Messi. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of good players that can end up putting one in the back of the net. Even the centre mid, Hullet, Ronaldo Sanchez. Ronaldo Sanchez now near the edge of the box. Back inside, Hakimi. Neymar, he's actually managed to skip away down this right-hand side. Hakimi, if anything, just got in the way. Neymar, can he get it any further? No, he cannot, but he will find himself a corner. If Sanchez can find themselves another goal here, it really does put them in the driving seat. This one to be whipped in. Holland at the front post! I think it may well have been going wide. Donnarumma isn't going to ask questions, though. Puts it out for another corner ball. Holland is the one asking for it. Who's going to be able to cover it? Here it goes, it's going to be whipped in quickly. Are they going to be able to get the men in front of it? Holland heads it back out, Mbappe now. Ball in towards the back post, to Holland again, what a save! Essentials are knocking at the door. Holland now, twisting and turning, trying to find some space. The cross again should be just about kept a hold of by Donnarumma. My goodness me, the first big chance of the game falls to Essentials. And that is why you have Hullet in your team. He needs to be in that front post position. And he was there and he had so many opportunities. He, he red timed it, didn't, didn't green time it. Maybe if he green timed it, there might have been a better opportunity, but so close. Crew now pushing this one forward, trying to do something. Vinicius Junior trying to turn it around and just defending so well. Ginola, everybody getting bodies in the way. And Neymar now trying to play in Cristiano Ronaldo, but he's actually lost out to Neymar on the other side of things. And that one was rushed. Crew maybe getting a little bit nervous now. They've got to get nervous, don't they? Because this is a £15,000 game. We mentioned it all weekend, but it has a lot of money. And of course, the spot in April, which means they get to compete against, well, in total, 32 teams, including themselves, if they end up getting here. But it's a lot of pressure. It is. Neymar, good ball. Oral scoop. We're going to maybe clip this one in. Cristiano Ronaldo is waiting, but so is Ginola. It's another save from the keeper. It was an interception. If you're on crew, you don't care. This ball to be whipped in again. They have to defend against Hullet. This one looking like it's going to go short, or they're going to change the key. corner takers. Hullet now. He looks to try and clip it through to Renato. Can't quite get it there, but once again, Ginola has the ball. Is he able to wriggle away? No. Cancelo gets in the way. Crew really have not been at the races so far in this second leg. A little bit of space opening up here though. Mbappe all the way over the top towards Vinicius Junior. Pull it at the back post as well. It's going to be the option. Is he going to be the first one there? No, he is not. Van der Sar just about gets that. That ball seemed to stay in the air for so long about anyone else, but it just seemed to be dinking and dinking and dinking until Van der Sar ended up catching it. But I mean, in general there, like the corner as well, they went short that time. I don't know if you noticed, but trying to change thing up maybe be a bit unpredictable as such because they keep whipping it into the front post which it's being read every time so going short a couple of times change it up a little bit could put them, put them off a little bit Ronaldo Sanchez now pass inside Mbappe can't quite get it through nearly found its way to Neymar Essentials are holding on well here they're unlucky not to be in the lead in this leg as well I feel aggrieved not to be 2-0 up here, Lisa. Yeah, they've had a couple of opportunities. I mean, they started off like they did in that first leg. They got, the, they got that goal they needed, and then Crew ended up just coming back in the game, which gave them confidence. But they're starting off really well here, and as you see, another attack. Neymar now. Going to try and find a pass to Ronaldo, not going to work out. Crew will get this one away. Neymar. Pass out wide seems to be the one that's on to Mbappe. Plenty of bodies coming back here for essentials. They have the lead. They don't need to take any unnecessary risks. Vinicius, all into him was slow, so he didn't have time to make the turn. And Mbappe will lose the ball as well. Apart from those chances from essentials, crew really don't have too much to write home about, has to be said. It's not been the best performance so far, but they're going to win the ball there from that throwing now. Mbappe, is he going to be able to send Cristiano Ronaldo through? One and one! Green time, keep our moves. And this time around, Essentials get it right. Short corner. Crew starting to grow into it. Edge of the box for Kylian Mbappe now. Step over, steps inside. Good tackle coming in from Cristiano Ronaldo, but it will result in another corner. 
Looks in front post once again. Cristiano Ronaldo rising. It's going to be actually played out to Neymar here. Essentials, potential counter-attacking opportunity if he can keep hold of the ball and maybe find the pass. But Neymar will do the first thing, right? Keep a hold of the ball. And Essentials will get this moving forward. Slow it. Very great chance there for Crew to put them back into this game. And, I mean, great key for movement. We mentioned it before. Keeper movement so overpowered in the last couple of years. And it's just about moving your keeper. That extra couple of steps the way that they're going to shoot to have the extra chance saving it, especially when they green it. But, I mean, if you make a mistake and you go too much, do too quickly, they can just shoot the near post. Oh, well, trying to find that pass through to CR7. Someone forced it. Yeah, keeper movement's one of those, isn't it? It's a bit of a poison chalice. Like, sometimes... You can pull it off, you can be the hero. And then other times you can do it and you can just give them an easy goal if you pull that trigger. Just that little bit too early. Cancelo, pass inside to Mbappe. You thought it was going to hold it, it's out to Mbappe. Now inside, oh, oh and I've minded a shot across there from Kylian Mbappe at the first time of asking. Tries for the pass to Ronaldo and Essentials live to fight another day. Neymar down this right-hand side. Passing to Ginola is on, but he's going to keep on going because at the back post is Mbappe. Players arrive and Cristiano Ronaldo is one of them. Ronaldo into Hullet now. Little bit of time to turn and shoot. Defender in the way, but back to Hullet again from the header for Mbappe. It's an absolute massacre in the box. And Donnarumma will just about get there. Essentials piling on the pressure here. Trying to get that second goal to be a little bit more comfortable, but we've had a few opportunities from Crew and that might be making a little oh, bit Ronaldo's shaky. in. Oh, he gets across, does cross them in. But it's given to Mbappe in the box. Oh, it's a mistake. And Crew eventually find their way through. And it's one apiece on the stroke of half time. I mean, as you see here from the oh. replay, they try to clear it and it just bounces back to Mbappe kindly and he just puts it into the back of the net with that 88 shooting. But, I mean, we got, we got to say it was gifted, don't we? It was, they just panicked and cleared it. It's the pressure of the 15,000 pound on the line. And of course, that shot in April. But as you can see here from Crew, 81 pass accuracy. We don't really see this at a level we normally see around it's 94. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite similar, but yeah. we've seen it in the last couple of games. But normally, over the weekend, when we've been commentating, it's been 93 94. So the nerves get into both of these, and I understand why with so much on the line. Who do find that goal, but it was definitely essentials. The boys were on top in that game. Just more passes going forward, more completed, more taken, of course, as well. And still with better accuracy, it feels like crew are maybe rushing things a little bit. They will not really care too much now because of the fact that they managed to grab themselves a goal. Head into the second half yet. The second leg of the second game between these two, and we are all square. One apiece now. Who's gonna come out as a winner here? Are we gonna need extra time? Will we need penalties? Vinicius now, he's actually gonna find the pass to Ronaldo. There's men in the middle here as well. The back heel into Mbappe. Twist and turn and still has the ball. It's a big challenge. Essential survive. They'll be downbeaten about that goal at the end of halftime, won't they? The way that it happens, it's a mistake, but they can't rest on it. They'll be very upset to concede so late on in that, like 45th minute, 46th minute, but they've just got to forget about it. Talk to each other, just make sure that they're both all right because, you know, if it gets to one person, they drag one player out of position. They've got to do it as a team. If one person gets annoyed about a mistake they made, they've just got to forget about it. It's move on. Pull it to Ginola. Going to find that little bit of room. The drag back into Cristiano Ronaldo. The reverse flip left to just get a little bit of room. The shot cancels in there as well. Not going to get past Hollett. Been defending from Crew. Didn't step in. Mbappe will get away as well. Needs some support. Cristiano Ronaldo is going to be the run, but Ronaldo Sanchez is on. Mbappe will keep a hold of this ball. And Neymar space in front of him. Pass to Mbappe was on momentarily, but back to Neymar it goes via Ronaldo Sanchez. Now Vinicius Jr. edge of the box, a little bit of room, Neymar inside the box, usually mean one thing! And Crew find the goal, it's so well worked, a fantastic team goal from the Crew Esports boys. Essentials had the majority of possession, they had the majority of chances, but it just takes one or two little moments and all of a sudden Crew are in the lead. That was such a well-worked goal. Just, just playing it on the edge of the box, you mentioned about having an opportunity to put Mbappe through, but they just waited and waited. Got Neymar into that position. Five-star, five-star. He can twist, he can turn, he can go anywhere. You're not too sure. That's why it's so good to use Neymar. And he put it into the back of the net nicely. And Cristiano Ronaldo's found Neymar on the other side. And Donnarumma makes the save. He had to. Corner to be whipped in. Essentials making 
this pressure try and count. Defender gets in the way of that cross that was whipped in towards the back post and now Mbappe will send Vinicius Jr on his way. Look at the runs coming in from the middle of the pitch. Eventually going to fall to Mbappe. Into Neymar. Crew looking to maybe kill this one off. As you see, they're trying to keep the ball in this in this situation. You need to be doing this in a winning position, trying to kill a bit of time out of the game. And as we, as we see, Jinx must, must be a Jinx here. He loses the ball out to Mbappe and chance for them to attack. The cast a curse, Mbappe or Ginola runs into the defender as the pass is completed and the animation just doesn't finish in time. That's unfortunate. Cancela. 65 minutes gone here, crew in the lead. Ronaldo Sanchez, look at the room for the players over on the left side. Neymar turns around, look at all the players over on the left. Vinicius was there, Natal was there. Natal now needs to get back. Cristiano Ronaldo is running through on goal. He's got Hullet on the inside as well. This pass is over. If he keeps going, well defended though. Cancelo comes across, commits to stop that first pass. It was a risky player, but crew may well be in because of it again. Mbappe stretching his legs away from Marquinhos. He's got the player at the back post. It's Vinicius Jr. Could this be three? Klosterman just about gets his sword. Crew so, so close to making that three. I thought he was going to make that three, to be honest with you. I was expecting maybe a ball roll scoop in that position, to be honest with you. And he, he takes it to the back stick to finish his junior. Could he maybe pull it across the floor so it's easy for him to control down and shoot? But crew in this game have just been dominant. Flip ball in, Hakimi gets that. Van der Sar will just about clear this away to hull it now. Oh, it's given away though. Pass not able to be found. Good cover from Ronaldo Sanchez. Ridiculous that signature signing card, isn't it? You have that in your team? I actually wanted to buy him, <laughs> but I'm deciding to just go with Ginola for that extra hatch extra because sauce. he's just yeah, he's just yeah. so good. Every time I'm against him in elite <laughs> division rivals, he's just there and so hard to stop. Well, here he is on the ball now. Let's see if he can show the reason. Well, Lisa's got him in his team, her team as well, I should say. Neymar into Mbappe, is it going to fall for him or is it going to fall for Neymar? Di Giallo has to get this one away and just about does Mbappe being a hullet to the head there. And that will mean there is now a chance for subs and changes to be made. Bear this in mind on the left hand side of your screen, look at the stamina of the players on essentials. Yeah, it just shows that they, um, they're trying to get that extra goal, they're just pushing players forward, constant pressure. And that's why, you know, whenever you're constant pressure, your players just you lose so much stamina. And to be honest with you, I wanted to mention that Crew, they they started off the first leg, not not too great. They and they've done that in, in the every... They weren't great in the first half of this yep. game either. And they've done that in every single leg they've played. It's interesting. And whenever I play a game, when I, in a pro game, in, in, a, in a really game that I could win lots of money or pride of playing for England or whatever it may be, I'm nervous going into that game. And it, once 20 minutes, 30 minutes comes into that game, I'm feeling a lot better. And we're seeing that here, that each time, second half, going into the end of the half. And over. Natal to Draxler. Sorry to interrupt, but it looks like a good chance. That is going to just about be defended by Essentials. Yeah, and going into that second half, you feel a lot better. You feel a lot, another chance here going Neymar's over the top. Neymar's in. Is he going to be able to get past Marquinhos? Not quite. Will be cleared away. Crew still only have that one goal lead. Kosterman will win the ball here as well. Essentials really putting the pressure on now. Ronaldo, Mbappe. Back to Hullet, finds the pass inside to Nkunku, who's trying to find the ball to Neymar. Tijala will get this one away, it's a wonderful ball forward. Renato Sanchez will find Gelson Martins possibly, but the header ball back. Here comes Neymar. The ball clipped in by Mbappe is wonderful. He finds the little bit of space. Is it going to be the shot? Can the defenders get in front of it? The reverse elastico and not enough to get through. Well defended by Crew, but it's a throw in. The pressure continues. Five minutes in game to go. Very great defending in situations like that. And what are they going to try to do now, in my opinion? They've got to try and keep the ball. There's no need to go forward. Waste a bit of time. Maybe go down the line. People don't really want to see it, but oh, that's what you've got to do. He's won it, Cristiano Ronaldo. There's a little bit of space as he's going into the corner. He's trying to. He's giving it to Neres. Neres has got no support, but into the corner he goes. Three in game minutes. Essentials must get it back. They give it away. Crew now need to defend. Mbappe moving forward. The professional fouls coming out. Essentials throwing absolutely everything, but Crew have got the ball. Draxler's running into the corner, and that should be it.
Can the Essentials get it back? Draxler turning, gives it away. One final attack from Essentials. Neymar now, still has the ball. Mbappe, can he run by? Ginola is there as well, steps inside. Hull, it gets in the way. And is that going to be it? Yes, it is. Crew get the job done. And just, just about get the job done. Essentials reset the bracket, but Crew say no. And the second time of asking, Essentials cannot win the game. And what a performance that was from them. We did mention beforehand that they ended up first leg, they didn't start off very well. Same in the, the next leg, they didn't start off very well, but they got into it. And we mentioned, whenever I'm in a game, start off the game, I'm really nervous. And is that the reason why that? But they ended up getting into it once they got the groove going as such. And Well, you know, Essentials, though, they had the chances, especially in that second leg of that second game. There was opportunities for them to put a couple of goals in. They didn't take those opportunities. Crew did not have as many opportunities, but they took them when they got them. And that is what made the difference. It's the clinical nature of FIFA. It's the cruel nature of FIFA. Sometimes it can happen. These games happen. It happens in football. It's not just FIFA. It's a cruel way for Essentials to go out because you would have felt that they would have found some goals. But nonetheless, Crew, they make it count where it matters, don't they? they? They find them chances and it's about finding those 100% chances. One of them come from a, a mistake as well, from Essentials though as well, and they will feel really aggrieved by that. Of course, I mean, making silly mistakes in them positions, you know, it just they went to boot out of out of the, the play and ended up getting it into the path of Mbappe and on the edge of your box, I mean, in that position, Mbappe's always going to score, even if you move your keeper, but it is what it is. I mean, simple mistakes like that, they are really at a high level, but nerves gets to you and everything gets to you. And they ended up just about narrowly missing out, especially with all the chances they had as well. But unfortunate to them, but congratulations to Cruise Sports. You ended up being one of the important teams and going all the way to April and £15,000. We've got to remember, that's a lot of money. It is a lot of money and they will walk away as winners. But back over to Mike and Rachel to break that one down. Heartbreak for essentials. Yeah, thanks, Chris and Lisa. Mike, crew then needed that reset, didn't they? to get the job done and they did so brilliantly in that second matchup there. 2-1 to crew and it seemed like it wasn't going to go their way before that reset. But again, that's a sign of these players who have got great experience. Like we know, Yago and Valen do have them and possibly thought they were going to bounce back after that one, Mike, considering the quality of the players. I want to shift the energy. I feel yeah. like it just got real somber. We should be celebrating Crew here. And if you watch both those matches, there might be some irony. I actually felt that Crew played better in the opening series that they lost. And we just saw Essentials play better in the second series that they lost. And that's just the nature of FIFA to a certain degree. If you're not clinical, you don't take your chances. It's unforgiving. That's how the game works. But I still need this to be a little more uplifting over there. I didn't know if they were going to hug it out. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like there's tears before, after after the game. No, this is great. Congratulations to crew. They got the result. It took them a couple chances. And they got a uh, – that's the, the benefit of being undefeated. You get a second chance. They had to force the reset. And it, it comes down to, at the end of the day, being able to tuck away opportunities. Yeah, and do you think there's something as well, Mike, in the fact that Essentials had to do three games on the bounce? Crew obviously just doing two, not as long in game. We know how much a mental capacity these games actually take out of you. Well, when it's that close, when it's that mm. close, it's, it's bound that you're not going to get every bounce. If you're not going to play perfect, you have to be in your or on your A game the entire time. And uh, as we just saw in that last series, they didn't have that final touch. That's all that was missing. Everything else was there, but you didn't have the final touch. You didn't convert the opportunities. We're going to look through some of these highlights. Uh, we'll probably see a little bit of goalkeeper work. But th that was really the, the shift in terms of the difference between the two teams. But we knew going into this between crew, between essentials, that these guys are really even. And you can see even the goals that are being scored, that's not a, a fantastic goal. It kind of bounces out. They do the most with it with Mbappe. Look at this. How does that not go in? It's wild. It's crazy. The ball is bouncing around. It's a green type finish. I got out of my eyes. almost came out of my head, out of my face. Watching that, I was like, I have no idea. Uh, and, and that's kind of what we've seen in some of the 2v2s because you can move so many players manually a little bit quicker. There are more opportunities for those manual deflections. Goalkeeper movement. Got him. Wasn't able to convert. Uh, that was a, another trend that we keep saying every time we go through these highlights. The goalkeepers have been fantastic. Big mistake. Maybe you're feeling the nerves. It is what it is. Bad time to make the mistake, right around that 45th minute. And then Crew was kind of able to take that hope, or they now had that hope, 
And you see the turn with Neymar, tuck it away, 2-1, and they move forward, they move on, uh, and, and congratulations. Well, yeah, I'm sure for essentials, the nerves start kind of creeping in a little bit more when they see crew really kind of capitalizing, like you said, and being clinical because they just see that $15,000, like Lisa keeps mentioning, just slip away from them. And obviously it is nervy. They've got one chance at this, obviously. The LAN event is in April. Everybody wants to be there. We haven't been there for so many years. And like we said, Mike, the last two days have made this event feel a little bit more real. All these teams are seeing all the chat on social media. They want to be a part of it. Crew now are a part of it. They're in to our open, of course, in April. 15 teams down, one still to go. But Mike, let's quickly go back to that matchup because I believe you have picked something special to break down for us. I've got a couple goals that we're going to look okay. at. I just don't feel that it would be right if we don't showcase this beautiful overhead kick because I'm not sure we're going to see another one. A catch from sleeping on the corner kick. And I, I love that they timed it green. Just that added element to make sure you convert. It's outside the six. It's a beautiful finish. And then again, this is with crew. And this is in that first set of games. You're going to see that outside of the foot elastico, the reverse elastico. Both of those skills are needed. They're necessary. If you're going to be at the highest level in FIFA this year, the way they create space and it's just that quick hesitation, that moment of indecisive nature that can be formed via the shiftiness of the Elastico or the Reverse Elastico five-star skiller. It's one of those advantages, and you create that competitive advantage. All the pros are using it for a reason. I'm sure there's tutorials out there <laughs> on many channels. Maybe on my channel, but on many channels. It's out there. Trust me, it's worth your investment of time. Learn it. And be decisive is what Mike is saying there as well. Check out Mike LaBelle's channel. He has some great videos on there. I'm sure he has one about what he's talking about too. But Mike, like I just mentioned, 15 teams now have secured those spots. Shall we just remind everybody of exactly who they are? Look at that one space, Mike, which is still left. Two teams fighting it out for one space. Drama, but yeah, 15 Rachel. There. Drama's coming. And I want to speak about Dharma as well. Anyway, Crew Esports there getting that 15th spot for Buenos Aires. Um, before that, obviously, we had Frankfurt, Paris, Milan from Europe. And then we started today with Singapore. Um, but yeah, all 15 teams you can see there. One more still to go. Okay, well, Mike, after the break, we're going to get a special guest and so you're not joining us. So I want to talk about Portland with you now because I know you know a lot of these guys playing personally as well. I'd love to talk about Houston Dynamo with you and especially George Adamo, who I know used to be at New York Red Bulls. You guys used to hang out in person and he's playing um, with Remy out. Martin. That didn't change. I saw him last week. I saw oh, him last week. I don't want to hear that. We're still good. There we go. We never, um, we never were not good. We're, we've always been good. But you know him personally. But there's a, so lot to, there's a lot to unpack in this matchup. So if you're listening here on the stream, get your little notepad out. There's so much going on. Go on so then. we've got George who transferred from New York Red Bulls to the Houston Dynamo. And, it, and George and Remy are going up against uh, Panda and Jordy. Jordy used to be the number one player for the Houston Dynamo. Now that's George. Remy used to be the number one player for LAFC the last two years. Now he's the number two player for the Houston Dynamo. So that's one team, George and Remy. Okay? I hope you're with <laughs> me. Now playing against them, we have Panda, who's now the number one player for LAFC. And then Jordy, who would be number three in terms of, I guess, the, the depth list at the Houston Dynamo. So I don't care if they're friendly. There has to be some animosity here. Because all these guys are replacing people's jobs or they're moving in the depth chart. And you have to feel a certain type of way. And right now, this decides the qualification of the 2v2. This is your final. So if that doesn't set the tone, you know, I don't know what will. But I, I'm telling you, deep down, they, these guys have to want this more than just the money, more than just the qualifier. But major bragging rights. And it's also a little bit of a dig. Say, oh, you replaced me? Here you go. Mike, I think I you need see you in April, but I'll be there. Mm -hmm. Mike, I think you need to give me a break now just so I can write all those notes down because you <laughs> definitely just gave us so much information there. I absolutely loved it. I'm sure you guys at home got all that as well. But yes, it is after the break. Houston Dynamo taking on Panda Georgie, the Portland Open. Our final one, our 16th and final Open to decide all of those spots. It's going to be awesome. Mike LaBelle is absolutely pumped, as are all of us in the studio. So do not go anywhere. Welcome to my master class. えー、皆さんどうもこんにちは。えー、ブルーユナイテッド EFC 所属、えー、プロプレイヤーのアグです。えー、今回は、えー、フォーメーションの紹介をしていこうかなと思います。えー、紹介するフォーメーションは4231。
で戦術と、えー、指示についても紹介できればなと思いますはい、使用しているフォーメーションは、えー、4231ですこの4231を紹介していければなと思います守備のスタイルはバランス、幅55、深さは75に設定しています。4231は非常にコンパクトなフォーメーションで、幅は55であ,のあまり広げ,ず広げすぎず、狭すぎずっていう風にしています。深さ75にしている理由は、自分は結構プレッシャーに行くスタイルなので、75に、前からプレッシャーに行けるように、75に設定しています。でこのシーン、えー、自分が攻撃を仕掛けていて、相手にボールを取られましたで。相手はカウンターを仕掛けてきている最中です。でこのシーン、逆サイドに、えー、サイドチェンジで展開されたので、レーダーを見てもらうと分かるように、結構あの間延びしているのが分かると思います。なので、ここで、えー、ラインが下がってしまっているので、えー、オフサイドトラップを仕掛けて、このように、しっかりと、えー、コンパクトに。えー、1列目、2列目、3列目、4列目まで、えー、しっかりコンパクトに保つように、えー、しましょう。で、見てもらったら分かるように、この時点で、えー、4、4、えー、まあ守備時はちょっと4、4、2みたいな、えー、ブロック、まあ、4、4のブロックを形成して、えー、基本的にコンパクトにして戦うようにしましょう。で、この時点で、えー、4、4のブロックはしっかり作れているので、えー、数的有利は、えー、作らせてない状況です。でこのシーン、えー、最後、えー、4枚しっかり、えー、4-4 のブロックは壊れされて、ね、いないので、えー、シュートを打たれましたがシュートブロックにしっかり、えー、入っていて、えー、前作同様、今作も、えー、シュートブロックが強いのでしっかりカーソルを合わせてあげてシュートブロックをしてあげることにより、えー、守備することができましたはい、えー、以上が、えー、マイマスタークラスになります、えー、皆さんもぜひ4231強いので、えー、試してみてください、えー、それでは皆さんえー、ピッチでお会いいたしましょう。バイバイ。Welcome back to the final day of the FGS Open presented by PS5. Lisa and Chris are joining me because we're going to talk about these 16 Masters teams that are already ready and waiting at the Team of the Season Cup in April. And the reason we're talking about them now is because at the beginning of this weekend, we were looking for 16 teams to fill 16 spots available. We have 15 confirmed, guys. There is one left. We're heading to Portland in a short while. But first, we wanted to speak about some special Masters. Team. And Lisa, I know you wanted to talk about one in particular, and that was Fnatic. So we'll walk this way and have a look at some cool videos we've prepared for Lisa to talk over. Lisa, tell me a little bit about this man on screen here, Fnatic Tex, and why him and Diogo as a partnership will be so special. Well, we all know about Tex. He's, he's one of the best players at the moment, people would say, probably in the world, to be honest with you. And as you can see in the video, that You know, he, last year, not last year, two years ago, sorry, he ended up winning three Foot Champs Cups. After that, he ended up winning E Premier League with his Liverpool, his team that he loves. And then moving on to his teammate, he ended up being Diogo. And then you think to yourself, Diogo, Tex actually played Diogo in the final and ended up losing to him. In the last minute of the game with a Calvert Lewin header. A lot of people will probably remember that. Diogo was Fulham. Oh, I remember it. <laughs> Diogo was Fulham. And then Tex was obviously Liverpool. And he ended up winning that as well. And Diogo obviously plays for his national team in Portugal. And Tex, of course, with England. And together, I think there will be a great team. 
Lise, do you think they may go on and get the job done completely and be one of these teams that, you know, are going to take the trophy? Do you see that? I mean, it's quite hard to say because 2v2 is quite different. You've got to work as a team, but I mean, individually, they're really good. But what we know of Tex as well, he's someone that loves to chat and loves to speak highly of himself and possibly of Diogo as well. <laughs> do, you, do you think he's going to be the kind of player that will tell Diogo exactly what to do? Or who do you think will act as the captain in that partnership? Probably Tex, he's, yeah. he's kind of more known. And I think out of the two would probably say the better player. He's very good at attacking. Diogo, a bit of both really, he's really good at defending and he's really good at attacking. So for me, I'd probably say Tex, but it could be a bit of both of them working well together. Yeah, well, it's all about partnership, of course, in 2v2 FIFA this season, the FGF series. Chris, I'm going to bring you in because you have another team which fits pretty nicely with Fnatic because <sighs> it's Falcon. And we know the kind of story between MS Dostari and Tex. It's the, the whole GOAT conversation that we always love to have. But it's quite cool who they're partnered with, isn't it? Tell us. It is, of course, Nightwatch <laughs> going with MS Dostari. But, I mean, this, this talk of the rivalry, is it going to bear anything? Absolutely it is. You know, so many people are invested in this little game between these two. So many times they've come up against each other. So many times they have had fantastic games as well in terms of Tex and Dasari, of course. So I, I, I feel like there was some sort of tactics between doing these two in the final segment, Richard. I don't know. Is, is, is that something? Am I on the right track? No, yeah, I was also going to say, <laughs> obviously, you've got MS Dasari self proclaimed king of the jungle. You've got Dr. Nightwatch. We call him like the professor of the sport. He loves to analyze it. So those two going up together yeah. is going to be something pretty exciting, I feel. It is. And I think it, it's, it's for Nightwatch to step up, I, I feel. And he's the one that the pressure is not so much on Dasari. We know what he's going to bring in that scenario. We know how many times he's won at a high, high level. Nightwatch hasn't necessarily been at the high level of Dasari. Not many have, in fairness to Dr. Nightwatch, of course. But putting himself in there with Dasari. The pressure is going to be on him, but Dasari, I'm sure, can absolutely help him along the way. Well, um, talking of putting Doc tonight, watch under pressure, oh, should no. we bring him in now <laughs> and see if he's actually feeling the head. pressure? <laughs> he will course shake his head at you. Hi, Doc tonight, watch. Uh, lovely to have you here. I know you've been behind the scenes helping us, giving us a little bit of information about some of these players, but I've got to ask you about Chris's question first because you're shaking your head. Are you feeling the pressure being paired up with MS Dasari? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, hello, Rachel. Yeah. Hello, hello, Lisa, Chris. <laughs> um, yeah, I am. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm feeling the pressure. I think it's been it's been two, three months now that we're we're in a team. So kind of the, the whole team ambiance helps. Um, also, we have our coach, Enzo, who is a big person behind the scenes, to help us prepare for the individual tournament so far and more and more towards the 2v2 season that is yet to kind of really begin in a club competition in terms of the FGS. So yeah, I see where Chris is coming from, but <laughs> at the same time, in terms of expectations, people accept, uh, expect a lot of Dostry, but not that much of me. So there's both side, sides of the coin, I think. Yeah, so, and how did that partnership come about as well, Nightwatch? Um, well, I think you'd have to ask more um, Falcons and like okay. Dostry uh, in, for details, but I think in terms of 2v2, it's a whole different ball game. It's, uh, it's a lot more about communication, a lot more about team effort, and there's no established meta, there's no established way to play. It's been proven in previous competitions that two very, very good players don't necessarily make a good team. So I think communication is important. Your vision of the game is very important. And I think there are a few better trios in terms of Dossery, myself, and Enzo being analytical and looking at the game a specific way. And it's all about gelling together and learning the game and just practicing. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that at the same time, though. You know, I, in terms of we've seen some of these players come through who we who we didn't necessarily expect because 2v2 is so, so different. And have you maybe figured anything out that you're not willing to let on in terms of the 2v2 <laughs> that, you, you know, everyone hasn't established any meta? Have you guys got a, maybe a bit of a better idea than some? Um... We might. <laughs> uh, I might have a couple, a couple of things I want to try out still. Obviously, we have club competition, international competitions. So there's a lot of stuff to be tested, to be seen, to be adapted from other teams. I've been watching every game this weekend. So things to be adapted from different regions, formations, play styles, different tactics. So there's, I think, a lot of things to still be incorporated in the 2v2 meta that we don't even necessarily 
think exist. So it's all about keeping your eyes out and being one step ahead or a few steps ahead of the other teams. Lisa, you got a question? Yeah, I've got a question actually. How does it feel to actually team up with MS Osari and does it sort of help you in any way, sort of make you a better player? It definitely does. It definitely does in terms of experience. Um, the main thing, again, I keep repeating it because for me this is so important because I've always wanted to work officially with this coach, with Enzo. So there's a lot of things that Enzo as a coach brings to the team and teaches me and has thought also Dostry behind the scenes. Um, and few people know, but actually with Dostry, we did uh, participate in a Club World Cup competition a couple of years back, I believe. So it's not like it's the first time playing with Dos. Obviously, most of you know that Dostry is one of the nicest, soundest pros in the scene. So that also obviously helps. It's, it's been a pleasure so far, and hopefully we can build up on that. Yeah, Knight, which I'm going to ask you as well. Obviously, you've been behind the scenes throughout these last three days as well. Like you said, analysing every single game. Who has surprised you? I'm going to say the most. They've come out and really worked together and established themselves as, as the new team on the block. Well, three teams have, have kind of caught my attention. And surprisingly, only one of them qualified. Nom Esports that qualified in, in Europe and Frankfurt. They left a very good impression. I think they've gelled really well. They're playing really well together. And the other two teams are Movie Star and Footwiz, both of which who didn't make it. But I think their 2v2 play together was incredible. And again, one more Europe team in, in Le Levante. I'm actually very surprised at how well um, Maestro and Paps gel together, considering the language barrier, kind of the play style differences, etc. But they just seem to somehow make it work and... They made it work at the start of the year when they played 2v2 competitions and they just qualified. So they're really, really impressive as well. Well, they eventually made it work. They had a bit of a blip, didn't they? And finally, Maestro probably had a bit of a rage, possibly. He was streaming it, we know, getting excited though, in true Maestro style there with Pap City. I'm going to ask you finally, Nightwatch, obviously we have one more open to go, Portland. I know Mike Clabell is watching this with eager eyes. He's got, obviously, a lot of mates out there playing. Houston Dynamo is taking on Panda Geordie. What do we know about these two teams and how special are they and how is it going to go because they've got a lot of history between them? I mean, Mike briefly touched upon all the history these players have between each other. Obviously, he knows them also at a personal level. The same way I know the European players, he knows the North American team better than myself. In terms of pure FIFA, from, from what I've seen from the bracket, from the competition, we have the first C team against the third C team, which is already kind of a a big clash in itself. And I think Houston, for me personally, I are slight favorites because of just the names that are that are in the team. So Adamu, who is an EMLS champion, he's a top player for a couple year, years now, I think he's upped his game. And Remy Martin, when I came onto the FIFA scene on FIFA 18, I believe, he was making uh, foot champions cups already. So it's another player with a lot of experience. So in terms of FIFA experience, obviously not only life experience, <laughs> I think Houston should edge it, considering they also have the bracket advantage. Well, Nightwatch is going for Houston. I'm going to put Lisa on the spot. Lisa, where are you going? Houston or Panda Jordy? Mm. I think Adamu and, and he was mentioning Remy as well. I think they, I think they, they could quite edge this. Edge so this. Houston two at the moment. Chris, I'm going to put you on the spot too. Yeah, I, I, I've annoyed Nightwatch now, so I'm just going to say Houston. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're all just uh, obviously going with what the professor says over here. I'm, I'm going to keep calling you that, Dr. Nightwatch. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. You're going to stay with us, I hope, and give us a bit of analysis after this. But we have one more open to go. We had the Portland Open, and this is how our casters warm up. Um, for their events. Obviously, the FIFA players have their own warm-up style. This is how Richard Barkley... Oh, and Brandon Smith getting in with those <laughs> hip rolls. Oh, yeah, boys. Those sexy hips. And um, uh, Richard's got the hip flexor little things there. Uh, yep. Boys, I'm not quite sure, but you can tell us what happened there. They stole our seats uh, the last three days. We've been out of seat and I've got a bad back. I was just going up and over the gate. I don't know what you were doing. Um, anyway, thank you very much for that.
people we are <laughs> now live for this final game of the day. Um, and, well, we've had 15 spots already concluded. It's time for spot number 16. We're over to Portland now. North America is split into two different sort of zones. We had Washington, D.C. that was concluded on day one and day three. We are now here with Portland, in which plans to be a great game. Houston Dynamo against Savvy Panda and, more importantly, Geordie. There's a lot of history behind this one. Mike LaBelle was filling us in in the storylines for this one. A lot of these players naturally play in the EMLS and there's been a lot of roster change there's been a lot of transfer changes as we are going to probably see in this game yeah not only in the sort of the general EMLS but even between the four players and the clubs that they have played for a lot of interweaving storylines coming in to this Portland regional final the favorite definitely Houston Dynamo coming into the game. They've got not only the advantage from being the winner's bracket, but George Adami, what a season he had last year in FIFA 21. You can see how dominant they were when they previously matched up in the winner's bracket final. It was a 6-2 victory for Houston against Panda. It's a tough game. It, it really yeah. is. That's not, that's not any result, Rich. That's a 6-2 result over two legs yeah. in a winner's final. They went down into the loser bracket. Unfortunately, there was a forfeit there for underdog, uh, which meant that Panda and Geordie would come on through to this regional final. They will get a second chance against them. However, as, as rightly said, you know, Rachel, Lisa, Chris, uh, and when you know Nightwatch was on, Mike LaBelle were chatting about it. This is George Adamu, a man that's won the MLS in 2020. He was second last year. He's won a lot in North America. And to be brutally honest, he's not really had a chance to do it internationally because of you know, the coronavirus, because yeah. of events being cancelled. And if he does qualify from this, this will be his chance to go to an international scale and do it with Remy Martin. Not only that, but his, his general persona has also grown exponentially in the last 12 months. He started as maybe an outsider. Now he is one of the stars of this North American region. On the other side, you've got Remy Martin, who... I remember FIFA 18, he had a great uh, tournament in Manchester, the Spring Cup, back in FIFA 18. That was sort of a breakout year for him. Since then, he's had a couple of results here and there, but he's not been able to get back to where we saw him in FIFA 18. So this is a big opportunity, not only for George to cement himself on his first land, but for Remy to, to get back at that level. On the yeah. other side, though, we've got two players who... This is their moment, really. This yeah. is their opportunity, Brandon. And uh, there's been a lot of chat as well, you know, behind the scenes in terms of we've been looking at Savvy Pan, we've been looking at Jordi Reyes. Jordi Reyes, you know, you know, has a background from Honduras. I believe he might have was might have had a family from there as well. I don't know the full uh, the full breakdown of that. He was over the moon to see, uh, of course, RF Esports CA yeah. get their spot the other day with their Honduras player uh, in that one. But he used to play for Houston Dynamo last year. Now he's a free agent as it stands. And then to make matters even more confusing, Savvy. Panda plays for LAFC, who Remy Martin used to play for previously too. So there's been lots of <laughs> roster changes here. And Sammy Panda, one of the older competitors that we've seen in the bracket, the man got, uh, I think, technically top five, top four in NA last year in the Global Series rankings on PlayStation. He's played in, I think, Open Series tournaments that we've commented With on before. PlayStation, yeah. You know, this man has got just a hunger to compete a drive to really compete and to really show what he can do because there's a reason why he's playing for the MLS club and there's a reason why he has gone far in this bracket so far. They might have lost 6-2 first time out, but let's not write them off just as of yet because this is going to be an entertaining end to this FGS Open live to you from Twickenham. And I'll tell you now, it could be an upset, it could be a bracket reset or alternatively... It could be more of the same, and it could be another 6-2 win. It's all about the start. How Houston Dynamo will come out in this opening leg, opening half of this regional final. If they can come out firing, if they can come out hot in this game, I think it's going to be a long evening for Geordie and Panda. It will be Houston Dynamo from left to right, which I think from the get-go you can see they've had a bit of investment this year in terms of... Picking up Georgia Damu, probably one of the hot prospects at the moment with New York City Chris also departing from New York City FC. We're surprised not to see, of course, him move ships a little bit sooner. Neymar into Mbappe! The two Parisians linking up. It's only taken eight minutes for Houston Dynamo to get going. 
It looked really simple, I'll be honest with you. The way that they played through them. Three, four passes into the final third, and then it was a quick driven pass into the path of Kylian Mbappe. It was three yards out, it was impossible for him to miss. As Johan Cruyff looks to be the catalyst for potentially a comeback here for Panda and Jordi. What about that for a wake up call? But back to the point I was looking for. George Adama, he wouldn't come by easily. He, of course, made the decision to leave New York City FC as much as that probably broke Mike Bell's heart. But then they brought in a, a very, very good FIFA player on the flip side of that. Messi back to goal. Can't find Neymar in that one. On the flip side, can find and Messi in the Houston Dynamo shirt. Looks to break forward. Yeah, you're absolutely right with Remy Martin. He's, he's played in a lot of tournaments. He was in Manchester quite a few years back since then. Played for LA Galaxy, played for NFG Esports. That, of course, founded by Christian Fuchs. Previously of Leicester City. A lot of FIFA within his time as a, a pro at a high level with a number of different organisations. Here's R9 looking to build upon this one goal lead that they've already been able to build. If they do win this in two legs, it will be... The FGS concluded they will be the 16th team in the hat from this worldwide regional split that we have been bringing to you across these last three days. Pandy and Jordan do not write them off as of yet. No, absolutely not. And I mean, when you look at the opening 20 minutes here, it was a quick flash start from Remy and Georgia Damu, but they've settled into the game quite well here, have Panda Jordi. And a quick look at their team, Richard. I mean, it seems pretty standard in the get-go. We'll talk more about it after this attack comes in from Neymar. They have Messi in so much space at the back post. Couldn't find him. Yeah, just looking at their team very quickly. All the usual suspects in there, Messi and Kunku Fafana. It's Rudiger at the back, which is quite an interesting pick. The rule breaker, Rudiger. Let's Messi, see if he can defend Messi. well. Messi could be through if he can find the ball. Come back to Renato Sanchez instead. Messi's in the goal. He's completely goal hanging. Hey, get back on side. It's not five aside, Lionel. Yeah, and Cruyff. Welcome to the FGS Open. Yeah, I was about to say that. A couple of interesting picks. Rudiger at the back. Not really seen him used too much. We've got Johan Cruyff sort of as the cam uh, pulling the strings. But everybody else seems to be normal. Mbappe, Neymar, etc. Mbappe trying to find the ball into Cruyff. And as we said, there's been such a completely different mixture of icons that have been used. Whether that be R9, Eusebio, Cruyff, we even saw Rio Ferdinand. No surprise that Petr Cech's in goal. Ronaldo. Can't get past the man he was looking for. Looking across the board, Richard, the last three days in this FGS bracket. What regions have impressed you? And any standout games? I think mean, Paris probably comes to mind earlier today. Paris was outstanding. Miami was also outstanding. I, I casted that with Chris Tun. Probably the highlight game of day one for me personally. And Washington yesterday was outstanding as well. Croy, great feed. Rebound Jack with a save. Neymar Dow will be following that one. It went for a fake shot to find the cutback. Fortunate enough, there was a defender there to make that all important block. But you can create a chance of absolutely nothing when you've got a Cruyff or a player that has got that five star weak foot in your disposal. What about yourself? Any, any particular matches that have, have stood out to you? I mean, that, the Frankfurt Open that we commentated earlier was the, the non-esports destruction. It was, it was a pretty much one-way traffic, wasn't it? But on the flip side, you have to look and think how good that opener was today from Singapore, India. We'll be at that FGS Team of the Season Cup next year. First time India have been at Alain. Back to goal, one nine for two, surely! Just took too much time. Just didn't shoot. It was a really good chance to just pull the trigger there. It looked like it was the left foot of R9 begging to be hit. I think we've seen a different goalkeeper as well, not the typical between the sticks for Panda Jordi. Just at first glance there. 
Eduard Mendy, the signature signing. What looks to be guarding the goal. Well, there's been a couple of those signature signs that have popped up. I don't know if you called it earlier today, the game that you won't commentate, and De Bruyne Kevin played De Bruyne. for both teams. And from the edge of the box, he's got an unbelievable long shot on him. Yeah, you see the stats there for half-time. Possession dominant in the favour of Houston Dynamo FC. Not too much in terms of the chances. Uh, if we can have a look at that possession and see where the 63% has been. It's all been on the left-hand side, to be honest, uh, where Neymar seems to be featuring. They started the half strong, just edging over 58%, and then ended strong as well, with all the 60% of the ball going to the team in orange. They do have the one goalie behind them, as we said at the moment. They're in the winner's bracket. They have the bracket advantage to Houston Dynamo. Unfortunately, back on day one of the tournament, it was New York City FC that were in this exact environment that wanted to be sort of the first EMLS side to Chats. be in the team of the season cup. They did lose two. Obviously, Lewin and Host White, one of those players being part of Montreal. But it's been a completely different mix of us, and there's been players that officially are part of teams and esports organizations, and there's sort of just been a, a case of, I've not got a team for this. I do play for a team, but I can't get a team. Actually, fans just getting together for it, and for some of those players, it's worked wonders. You've had three different sort of approaches of it here. You've had the teammates who have already been part of a team together. You've got two individual players who aren't signed, and then two players who might come as a team. Can it a great save? And then two players who have come together from different teams, forming together for a super team. Yeah, which, as Ivan rightly said, AK Nightwatch, rightly so, you don't always have to have the best two FIFA players to stick them together. It's just different play styles and <laughs> personalities at times. <laughs> I mean, I know he was talking, I would never disagree with Nightwatch, he was talking a lot about <laughs> the communication, but we saw a team earlier today who didn't communicate at all, who went on to win, and that was Levante. Um, sorry, there is some I, 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 I thought, thought he was going to make a comment saying, sorry for Nightwatch to say, you know, it's not always the best two players when you've got a world champion as your teammate next year as well, but uh, that's, that's pretty, pretty decent on the sticks. Good to see him go back, it seems like there's a lot of homecomings as well, back to Falcons for Sorry. Looking to come forward again is Sammy Panda and Jordi. They have that half chance of Mbappe. It was a brilliant save from Petrček. The Burnley man gets a shout at left back. Out of my own FIFA Rodman team. And Rudiger, there's a little sprinkle of Premier League in there. He's a very good item, is the rule breaker Corne. Good pace, probably one of the best fullbacks in the Premier League. Mbappe there trying to do some sort of rainbow flick, it's not really needed. Do end up losing possession from that. It's nice to see Messi back involved. There was a few years where Messi, even when we were getting team of the year foot items, was nowhere to be seen in the Global Series. But Messi back in the teams, <laughs> the chemistry helps. Getting the links to Mbappe, and Neymar, etc., David Ginola, all these players that you can link in now via PSG or Ligue 1. But also, he just is really useful this year in FIFA 22 with the finesse shot on the angle being really good, uh, especially when you've got players who have the finesse shot trait, high curve, high finishing. And Messi sort of is the, the prototype player for the finesse shot. Yeah, that wonder a left boot that we've seen him finesse plenty in across this weekend. Cruyff into Mbappe now. First time we see the Dutch forward involved in anyone's team. Obviously, set of restrictions to be applied by by these pros, hence why you're only seeing one icon outfield. It's been quite a, a professional performance so far. They got the early goal, did Remy and George Adamu with. If hell possession, just to say that, I give the ball away quite cheaply. But for the majority of the game, they've been in control. Even though it's only one goal, they feel as though they're very comfortably in the driver's seat. And Kunku, can he find that feat of Cruyff trying to manually control him? Interchange as well with Neymar. Cruyff stinks the hands. Messi on the rebound. It's a weak foot. It's a strong foot scenario. But Marquinhos will be there. 
to stop his teammate in his tracks and says, no, thank you. We'll still stay in the lead by a goal to nil. Couple of chances there. You see the shots on target. They've had five shots on target, have Panda and Jordi. Or able to register a goal as of yet. A lot of those shots maybe be rebounds or sort of bouncing in and around the box. Messi. See the stamina bar so low on the Argentine. And Mbappe offloads to oh. Neymar, who does not get control of that whatsoever. See Neymar looking to tee his run forward. Cruyff, he's got numbers in support. Even Nkunku's making his run forward. Messi could be through if he can offload the ball to him. There's the overlap run of Yusuf Atal. Corner. Nine Need minutes something. left. Corners have been really successful this weekend. It's a case of playing short, then looking for the man on the edge of the box. Which seems to be cute. Yes, and Kunku's there towards the back post. post. Rudiger's there! Oh my! That would have been an insane goal! From the Chelsea defender who fancied an acrobatic, acrobatic effort, sorry. And we might be in for another one. It's the same short ball into Nkunku. Rudiger's there in the air, and that time will be outbodied and outstrength. If Rudig would have just scored a bicycle kick from there, I don't know what I'd have done. I mean, it's one way. Is it? You think with a header at least, not a, a bicycle kick back to goal from the German centre-back. Outrageous effort. Messi can be dangerous in this sort of area. Didn't fancy that left foot finesse. This man might, though, instead. Back to Neymar for a brace. Scoop turn! Finish! <laughs> And it's Neymar this time, it's a lucky red pick as well. Probably even sweeter to score with that in game item. 92 in form, Neymar makes it two and gives Houston Dynamo a bit of breathing space. Perfect performance so far from Houston Dynamo. They scored in the first 10 minutes, they scored in the final five minutes. It's exactly what you wanted. The only thing to make it even sweeter now is we keep a clean sheet. Unless. Panda and Julia have other ideas. They need something to come out of this game. Otherwise, it is going to be a little bit of a mountain to climb. And Kunku, Mbappe, back to goal. Mbappe still, great block from Marquinhos. Messi does enough, just about to keep it on. Drops the shoulder well. Time for Mbappe, reverse elastic. Oh, another great save from Czech. What a save from Petr Czech, that is. He had no right to get down to his right hand side. Look at the space. Look at the time for Messi, back to Cruyff. Massive tackle from Renato Sanchez. And that will do us for leg one here in our regional final in Portland. I tell you what, a couple of chances there we got to talk about at the end of the game. Antoine Rudiger with a bicycle kick from the top of the box, bouncing off the crossbar. Absolutely insane effort. And then that one at the end right there. Neymar, just a little reverse elastic hole to get inside the box, get into a really good area. And Petr Cech, insane reaction save, down to his right-hand side, forcing it wide of the post, even though it only ended 2-0. That game could have been three apiece. I mean, it was dominant possession for uh, sort of the, the middle of the game, the middle chunk of the game by Houston Dynamos. But at the end of the match there, Really, really solid performance. I don't know what the power is behind the scenes. We can see that Rudiger acrobatic effort again. I would love to see that. It was so good Ridiculous. in terms of why is he even going for that from uh, from that distance? We're going to have a little look at the chance now. It came from the corner, Richard. Talk me through this one. So as it could play short here to Nkunku, you just see Rudiger peel off at the back post. It comes to him. I didn't know Rudiger had that flexibility in him, to be honest. Unbelievable effort. If that had bounced in off the crossbar, You've just seen a lot more than a few stretches. That was unbelievable from Antoine Rudiger. And it's one of those that you hit it, not expecting it to go in. But if it does go in, you say that you mean it. Yeah, and I think as well, a lot of the time when people have looked to try and play that, it's not always been a defender at that back post. Sometimes R9, it's R9, Ginola could be in there as well. Speaking of David Ginola, where are you? Yeah, he's, he's, he's not been seen, has he? I mean... It all depends on where the ratings are going. You might, we've seen a couple of people bring Ronaldo, Cristiano off the bench, meaning that sort of, even though he falls under a 90, David Ginola, he still might feature into the teams, but he has a hefty price tag as well. If you want to bring CR7 off the bench, maybe that's where your coins are going. Yeah, 1.7 million coin player is David Ginola. Hasn't featured here in Washington, uh, I should say, 
here in Portland. That was Washington a few days ago. Portland, we haven't seen the Frenchman yet. Um, but at the halfway point, it is 2-0 to Houston Dynamo. They are 90 minutes away from taking our final spot here at the FGS Open for that Team of the Season Cup in April. We're going to go to a quick break now. When we get back, we'll have that second leg for you as soon as possible. Well, welcome back to the FGS Open for our final game here, live from Twickenham. Myself, Brandon Smith, and Richard Buckley guiding you through this Portland regional final. We left at the halfway point with this scoreline and this scenario, Rich. The Houston Dynamo were leading by two goals to nil. They already did beat. Uh, the duo of Panda and Geordie earlier on in the bracket and knocked them down into the loser bracket where they did get themselves that win. But it's a 6-2 result back then. It's a 2-0 result now. Do you see a comeback or anyway back for this team? Well, we need to see something early if they want to disrupt the flow of this Houston Dynamo team. It was a really, really good performance. They scored early, they scored late, they dominated the ball. And the chances that Panda and Geordie had were sort of Half chances, you don't expect Antoine Rudiger to score a bicycle kick from the edge of the box, but it nearly happened. Messi back to Cruyff, this is a, an opportunity for an early start, time red, that's never good, it's never going to be on target if you... So many chances red, it's Panda and Geordie on left to right on this one, Houston Dynamo kicking from right to left, and they're looking for a third in this one, Mbappe driving forward, Cruyff... Nowhere to be seen, it would be trying to get back to the fen for a split second, trying to speed that one up and... Just a bit too quick. A, a goal is needed for Panda and Jordi, not necessarily to bring them closer back into the game, which is always nice, but just to disrupt, just to make Houston Dynamo feel a bit uncomfortable. It's, it's just a little bit too 
too comfortable from it at the moment. It, it was an end-to-end -end game. It was a crazy game, but they never looked in danger. They didn't look worried. Here's Cruyff again. First Elastico, but you're just Elastico and yourself into Renato Sanchez. That out ball is there every single time for Mbappe. He's got the legs on him as well. Yeah, Maxwell Corne can't keep up. Arline's looming in the box, so is Neymar. And Messi's waiting and looming around the box, tries to look for that fist ball into the, the forward, which seems to work wonders nine times out of ten. As we've been talking about this duo of Houston Dynamo, Georgia Darmy, it's a mistake. And Remy Martin, tune up, could be a save! How many times has Pacek got a coming clutch for this duo? Because at times he has been the difference. It simply has to be a goal, unfortunately. You can't miss a chance like that, whipped into the box, it's going to fall to an orange shirt. He, when you get that ball into Kylian Mbappe's feet, 10 yards out, you have to score. There is no other option than scoring right there. It almost looked like they didn't put enough power on the shot. It looked like quite a weak shot. Did a good job as well to defend that. I mean, they could have easily panicked and sort of jammed the button. They quite cleverly decided to play it just back inside to the other defender, which gave them time to play out from the back. This is only quite a, a newly formed duo, this, and the fact they have played as well as they have is... Really impressive from Houston Dynamo. And of what will be a very busy EMLS season approaching. Georgia Darby finishing second last year, winning it the year before in 2020. It's been mainly him and New York City Chris. Just sharing it back and forth. Yeah, literally. I win one year, you win the next. You've got to remember as well, Houston Dynamo have had success in the past. Kid Mamito. Proving to be a, a successful acquisition. Space. Oh no, and back to goal. Does well to try and just find a way past Rudiger. Remember, winner of this goes into the Team of the Season Cup land event next April live in London. 32 duos will be there. Some of the best players from all over the world, of course, XL, Fnatic. Their duos, part of the the 16 master teams, but also some incredible teams that have been found this weekend from all over the world. Timbers Esports from Mexico, Levante from Paris earlier today. Nomi Sports also finding their way via that European regional final in Frankfurt. And that's only just to name a few. There were 16 in total, including whoever wins this one. Marquinhos, very high. All the way from centre back, I want to offload that and get back in position as soon as he can. And a great job of Houston Dynamo. Just look at the way they're controlling those two centre midfielders, whether it's... Did he leave him a little bit too much space there, Johan Cruyff, on the top of the box? It wasn't timed. I think he could have actually taken an extra touch, but the press, you were just mentioning it there, has been relatively good so far. But on that particular occasion, didn't get to Cruyff quick enough and a half chance. And you're sort of in two minds, aren't you, as well? You're sort of sitting back in that two, as we're seeing Kessie and Renato Sanchez on the defensive side of Houston Dynamo. But if you do sit in it, you are inviting the space, which will invite 30-yard finesse shots, which we have seen fly into the back of the net across these last two days. It's trying to find the balance of play. It's also pressing at the right times, making sure that you're closing down at the right times. And also, right that, here, also no, that you know who's going. Yeah, there's no reason to press here, because it's an undangerous area. Now, this is where you need to be tight. As soon as they progress into the areas that are finessable, that are sort of where you can play a driven pass and it creates something. And that's why, in this 2v2 format, communication is such a key part of it. And I know we said that, and we make the joke about Maestro and Paps, is he, that didn't say a lot to each other. But, well, I also know Paps is a, a very sort of high-level Pro Cubs player, where sometimes you'll not be communicating in the game and you'll just play off what other people are doing. You'll play off their runs, etc. So that does also play to their advantage, as well as just being one of, if not two, of the best European FIFA players right now in the continent. In the last five minutes, if this first half in the second leg. Remember, it's still 2-0 to Houston Dynamo. 
Handy and Geordie have to win the game to force the bracket reset. If Houston Dynamo get a third now, very much so they'll be on their way to this Team of the Season Cup and they will be taking the final spot here with the FGS Open. R9, reversal has to go, might fall kindly to Mbappe. Falls back to R9, who doesn't have much time on the ball again, pushed off it by Marquinhos. It's important in moments like that as well, Rich, that you just don't panic because when, your ball's in, you, when the ball's in around that sort of six-yard penalty area, naturally you're panicking, you're jamming buttons, you've just got to try and really simplify, as difficult as it can be in those moments of pressure. Messi. Back to Mbappe and Kunku of all people tries to offload into the path of Neymar. Just maybe try and just force the ball into a dangerous area there. It wasn't really on. You're looking at the time, you're seeing that it's 45 minutes and you've not really got an opportunity to play. You can see the stats. No shot so far from Houston Dynamo FC, but they are leading the game currently on aggregate two goals to nil. Possession. It's in the favour of Houston Dynamo, as you would expect it to be. Probably the first ever time in the game of FIFA as well. The passes are literally exactly the same. 64 each. There's, a, there's something new for the day. You were talking about the pressing. I'm reading into one particular stat, tackles there. They had 12 tackles in the first half. That sort of shows the intensity stepped up a little bit from Panda and Jordi. They're progressing a little bit higher up the pitch. They're moving a little bit higher up the pitch and they're winning the ball back more frequently. And what comes with that is them not allowing Houston Dynamo to play at all in those areas where they were successful within that first leg. However, we can congratulate the efforts of, of Jordi and Panda. They've got no goals to show for it so far, Richard. It's a 2-0 scenario, and they're 45 minutes or six in-game minutes of real lifetime away. They're having nothing to show for it, and Houston Dynamo taking the last Chance. point. Bappe, that's fell kindly, well played by Rudiger. Wouldn't surprise me in about 10 minutes' time if nothing does change. Get some subs on the pitch. Let's see a change of custom tactics. Next goal is everything. I, I don't think you change until you, you might have to change if it gets to like the 70th minute, but you're just gonna carry on playing the way you're playing, carry on trying to chip away. And if you can score the next goal, you put a lot of pressure Cruyff. on them. He's done everything right! Oh, just not the finish! I'll be completely honest, I don't even know if the reversal has to go helped him in that. I think, if anything, it put him on a bit of a weird angle. Because he, he was through in the space, obviously he didn't realise he was through. Bappe will get a second by the cherry, well played by Mark Quinn. Or scoop turn into the block, defends that really well. The last goal was, for me, really nice to create that little bit of room, to create that diversion in around the box. The only thing that you're asking there is, does R9 score that? Using Johan Cruyff. Still very good. It's still exquisite and probably should score, but he didn't. And we can hypothesize R9, does he score that? Croy trying to see that exact same run. He's got to be careful because he will be just offside. He does remain on. Back to Mbappe. The time is now! They needed that! They really needed that! And this sets this up perfectly with 30 minutes left on the clock. We said in that first 45, they've defended well, they've played well, but what do they have to show for, Richard? Nothing. Now they do, and now they've got 30 minutes, and probably the momentum behind them to go and find an equaliser. And they have been on top in this second half. They've been a lot more high up the pitch. They've been winning the ball back, but when they've been getting the ball as well, they've been creating opportunities out of their pressing play. Cruyff should have scored, Mbappe did score. R9, big chance for Houston Dynamo just offside. I thought he was on for a split second and you speak about R9 not missing chances. That was about to get buried into the back of the net. Best thing the Houston Dynamo can do now about sounding too obvious. Go and score again and get that two goal cushion again behind you. 25 minutes away. Chance. R9, that's nice. Still R9. Is he going to find a comeback? Just bundled off the ball. Fair play to Marquinhos there for just standing on his feet, not diving into the tackle. This could be a counter opportunity, actually. Look they at have that. They have looked good. They have looked good down this side of the pitch. Middle of the pitch, Mbappe. If not, that post, Cruyff. Numbers. Sort of lining up now. Mbappe does well to peel off. Back to Neymar. Neymar still. What's he got up his locker? That was a great idea with the pass. If it wasn't Fred of a Tower standing in the way, that probably would have been 2-2.
It was a really good opportunity. They, they built it up quite nicely, and Mbappe just peeled off. It was a, a selected player that they actually moved with, um, one of the duos. 20 minutes remaining. What is going to give? Oh, no. I think they played that ball into Mbappe, and he will be on side for it. Alfonso Davies is on, he's fresh. Houston Dynamo into Renato Sanchez. R9 back to goal. One more. There's the finish. And is that the nail in the coffin? There will be the difference to send Houston Dynamo into that team of the season cup. Very well, could be a game set and match right there. It was the the mistake by the ball into Mbappe. It was a wayward pass. They were able to recycle the ball all the way across the box. And with a 0.4 XG in this second leg, that was the all-important goal. All the damage was done in the first leg with a two-goal lead for Houston Dynamo. And Panda Jordi have a lot to do in the final 17 minutes. Well, they always say it's that one more pass, isn't it? That one more pass that always makes the difference. And that was the prime example of that. Just offloading it to the feet of Neymar. We'll see it again on the replay, maybe. A brilliant, brilliant goal. And it's the red pink Neymar coming up clutch. For Houston Dynamo. Vinicius comes on to grace the field. It's a fresher Dharma as well. Goal scorer comes off. You're doing your job. Adama Traore comes on. A lot more physical, a lot more of a presence. Tracking back. And I think what we also would have seen in that break, Richard, is everybody forward. Look at the black shirts in the box now. Neymar, Elastico, ball roll, scoop turn, runs into the path of Renato Sanchez. They can scream for a penalty all they want. He's in, he's in, it won't be an R9, it's through to conclude the tie, all the time in the world. R9, ball roll, round the goalkeeper. And I think the job is done. Houston Dynamo will take spot 16 from the regional qualifier in Portland. And they will be on their way to London next year. They had to press, they had to try and force the issue on this Houston Dynamo FC team. But Remy Martin and George Adamu stood strong. They stood solid at the back and they've been able to pick at this Panda Geordie team. And just pick them off. Done a good job as well of just riding those waves of pressure when, they, when it's really come at the team. Just offside, but... I mean, we looked at this duo, we, we hyped it up in the right way. You've got two different players there in terms of Experience, life experience, FIFA experience, winning experience. And it's a duo that, again, is going to make things really, really exciting. They won't be the only team to come from North America. They will be joined by two more. Team Complexity will be there. And more importantly, that side of Luex and Hosway. And George Adamu given his previous results in the last couple of years where maybe he's not been able to do it online because of the global situation. This is a really good opportunity, a big opportunity for him. And dare I even say a deserved opportunity. He's been there, he's been grinding he away. qualified for the World Cup. Yeah, he's been winning. Opportunities have not been coming his way. And now, one in April has got his name on it alongside his teammate, Remy Martin. Yeah, and I think for Remy as well, it'd be nice for him to get back to LAN, to travel back to Europe. As we rightly said, Georgia Darmy was an E World Cup finalist last year. Didn't get that opportunity to play in it. However, this time they will go to Land Richard. They One will be chance. there to battle it out for $500,000 at the Copper Box Arena in London. Mbappe into Traore. And it's an even sweeter victory for the duo. Cherry on top of a glistening cake. An orange coated cake because it's Houston Dynamo. Coming in clutch here in our final regional final in Portland. They were the favourites coming into it. They'd already beaten them in the winner's bracket, six goals to two. They didn't score six this time, but it was just as emphatic on the main stage. Five, one, victory. They did the damage in the first game of the two-legged series. It was 2-0 into the second leg. We said we need to see more aggressive, we need to see more attacking display from Jordi Panda. They did get a goal back, but then 
as they pressed higher up the pitch, it left space in behind and they were just able to pick at the bones where Houston Dynamo. If you had to be harsh, could you have said that the Geordie and Panther should have done more in that first 45? Because they did have a good first 45, but then was it too late with 30 minutes left on the clock to start panicking that we need another goal <sighs> to throw numbers forward? And then that's when Houston Dynamo started to score their goals. Well, they weren't panicking. They had to attack. It, it weren't the fact that they were in the lead and then threw the lead away, then had to try and scramble it back. They were already in a losing position, and that's what you've got to do. If they just stuck with 4-4-2 and kept everyone behind the ball, we'd be saying you didn't even try. So they did try. They threw numbers forward, and that's majority of the time what happens. Sometimes you'll get that heroic comeback. Sometimes you'll see that sort of Istanbul moment. But most of the time, players go forward. R9's waiting on the halfway line like a goal poacher, and it turns into 4-5-6-7-1. Yeah, absolutely. As we said, they will be the final team to take the last FGS spot from Portland in this regional final. It's been an incredible three days, which is 16 regional finals. I just can't wait for April now. It's a long way away, but that's going to be a stat 32 team tournament. Yeah, absolutely. We've got our 16 teams from the FGS Open. Now they're going to be mixing it up with the 16 Masters teams. I cannot wait for April 2022. Yeah, it's going to be a big one. Anyway, that's a wrap from all of us casting across these three days. Myself, Brandon Smith, Richard Buckley, Lisa Manley and Chris Dunn have loved bringing you the action from this casting area. Um, but that's it from us. And it's back to Rachel, who is joined by Nightwatch. Yeah, thanks to Brandon and Rich there. They'll join us actually in a short while. So if you're a fan of those two, then stay tuned. But Nightwatch has been uh, keeping an eye on that last match, the Portland Open. Nightwatch, like the boys just said there, it should have possibly been 3-1 on paper. But in the end, obviously, they had to commit bodies forward and it ended up 5-1 like we saw. But Panda Geordie had lots of chances, didn't they? And again, looking at their stats, they had more shots on target. They had greater expected goals. So what was it about that which didn't quite convert? I came with a um, pretty controversial take a couple of weeks ago, and it was actually a result of one of my own games, where I posted on Twitter that the fact that you have more expected goals in a game by far mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean you have to win, yeah. either because you're taking bad, bad shots or because you're not scoring the good chances you're creating. Logically, if you have more expected goals, the less you score, the more it's on you. It's not that you're not creating, it's not, you're not scoring. So, and I know there's arguments to be made most of the time where, oh, that should have gone in. Like, for example, the cross shot, I agree it should have gone in. But something my coach would say, but did you green time the shot? And if you didn't, then there's more to be asked from you. Obviously, being kind of perfectionist from that point of view. But I think in terms of the expected goal stat, there's... There's always more to be required if you're not kind of surpassing that set or coming close to it. Yeah, you can always expect more from yourself, of course. But have a quick word then, um, Nightwatch, on Houston Dynamo and how well they have done throughout this entire tournament. We knew the quality of the players. Um, they delivered, didn't they? Quick word on that and we'll get into the analysis by PlayStation that I think you've got something up your sleeve as well. Well, obviously, I think... Coming into the, the final, having not dropped a single game, you have a massive advantage mentally and in-game. Two very good players, a lot of experience. You're, you score early from the get-go. You're playing an opponent that's not necessarily also warmed up. So I think it all kind of lined up for them to, to win the, the tournament, to win the game, and I think they performed. Nightwatch, there's some highlights as well for you to cast your eye over. So here we go, it kicked off. Nil-nil, of course, and this is how it unfolded. As I said, seventh minute, first game, you go 1-0 up, massive advantage. And then it's all to, to play for, for for your opponent, just taking long shots, trying rebounds, trying to shoot through the defenders. It's not necessarily some clear-cut chances. You see a Rudiger bicycle kick that almost went in. Again, you would argue it could have been a goal, but it's Rudiger with a bicycle kick. And then at the end of the second game, it's a perfect start and a perfect finish for, for Adamo and his teammate. First leg, they kind of do 70% of the job. And from there, it's all on their opponent. They should be scoring this. I would argue far post, but hindsight is twenty twenty. Here, should go in, no doubt about it. A few minutes later, I believe, we'll see it right now. Here, six minutes later, they still manage to score, get that goal back with Mbappe. Nice play in the box. 2-1, but they still have to come back. And 70th minute, just, a, I would say, a dozen minutes later, I think it's GG. It's game over. Two goal lead. After the way things have gone throughout the two legs, I think it's it's an impossible task. And obviously, constant pressure on the counter. They're just 
going to be goals flying in. I don't think 5-1 does them justice. I think 3-1 makes makes sense considering how the games went. But yeah, we know we know how the ball rolls. If you don't score your chances and you need to go constant pressure, you're going to leave space open at the back and at the end of the second leg. Yeah, we spoke about that, didn't we, at the beginning of our chat, Nightwatch. Um, Nightwatch, before you go, I'd love just to get your thoughts on the last three days. And if anything has particularly surprised you in terms of any of the items that have been used, any of the tactics that our duos have displayed, anything that you didn't expect to see? I noticed a lot more formations used than I would have thought. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in 1v1, we also see a lot of formations this year, but not as as much. And what I mean is we see a lot of narrow formations, but a lot more than you would in 1v1. We see some five packs. We see some four triple twos, four four twos, a lot of formations, maybe seven, eight different formations. Uh, obviously, the player items, different icons. We saw a couple of bullets in the South America region, which is always uh, an interesting choice with icons in the midfield. And just generally, I think every region and every team plays different. Uh, it would be amazing to hear the communication between the players because I think that's where the real secrets are. But I think we, you guys might have to wait until April for that. And us players, we might have a couple things up our sleeves. I agree. That's work in progress there, Nightwatch, as well. I asked you a little question earlier about who surprised you the most. I'm actually going to now ask you a question about who, as a Falcons team member, you would not like to come up against out of the 16 teams you've seen over these last three days? Um, in terms of style as well. Definitely not. Like you and Emma, yeah. sorry, what do you think maybe wouldn't work in your favour? I'm not going to ask you your formations because that would be telling. Um, <laughs> it's hard to say what wouldn't work in our favour because I think it's there's four months until the, the hopefully until the event. A lot of things to change, matters to be discovered, etc. But in terms of what I've seen from the players and the, the teams. I think NOM Esports look very, very dangerous. They look very well gelled. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if those are their two national team players, so they would have some extra 2v2 experience. Um, I think there are two players playing like one, which in the 2v2 system is something that is incredibly important, and they gel well together. They're top, top players this year, last year. So I think there's they are the ones to look out for and avoid facing if possible. Well, Nom Esports then are Frankfurt Open winners uh, is Nightwatch's pick for ones to watch out for. I'm going to go with Falcons as well because you guys are forced to be reckoned with. Nightwatch, thank you so much for joining us today and for your help over the last three days as well. It really is invaluable what you guys add to the stream. Uh, Nightwatch, we'll see you in April. So thank you very much for joining us. You guys at home, our 16 teams have now been confirmed. We'll recap them after the break and we'll have Mike LaBell and the entire team back here as well to break it all down. We'll see you in a minute.
Oh, welcome back. I'm going to have deflated energy now, Mike LaBelle, because I'm welcoming you all back for the final time of day three of the FGS Open presented by PS5. What a three days we have had. We started on Friday looking for 16 qualifiers from all across the globe to make it through to our Team of the Season Cup in April. And Mike, all the spots have now been filled, ending with Portland there, my man, who I know you are a fan of. Have you actually already given old George Adamu a little message to say congratulations? I was going to drop him a call after oh. the stream, but uh, he got the job done. It was a crazy game, especially if you look through uh, both of those uh, matchups or both the legs. And the goalkeeper, Petr Cech, was all over the place, man. He's making saves this way and that way. Active. Did you expect those guys, though, to be as clinical as they were? I mean, 6-1, 5-1 in the end didn't really do it justice, did it? We thought it should have been more like three. Obviously, when the other team committed, it all unfolded like it would do. On the counter, we know what happens. It's similar to before. We talked about how the score lines don't always match up, but uh, the result, uh, at least in my opinion, makes sense. Uh, I think everyone had uh, Adamu and Remy Martin favored. They spent a lot more time in in these types of streams or being in finals of events, and I feel like that kind of pushed through here as well. And, of course, they had the extra helper if needed because they had a game in hand or a matchup in hand because they were undefeated. Yeah, in terms of Panda, Geordie, then, did they do much wrong or did it just kind of the fact that Houston Dynamo are such a force to be reckoned with that they got the job done? I, I, don't, I don't want to say they did anything wrong necessarily. Uh, what they were missing was being clinical. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little bit with composure, but they were in the right areas. They had the possession play. They had the build up. Even in the final third, the right skill moves at the correct times. But if you choose the wrong finish or you're missing some small margins, it, it doesn't always show. And that's why we said the score line might seem a little bit unfair uh, or, as you said, maybe not just. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's the reality of FIFA. Yeah, Nightwatch was saying that, wasn't he? He said his coach, Enzo, would be saying to him, well, actually, you didn't do something quite right. You need to go back to the drawing board and be better. That's what a coach obviously asks of you every single time. But Houston Dynamo, of course, were our 16th and final team, Mike and everyone at home. Mike, Nightwatch, though, before you joined us, said his team to watch now is Nom from the Frankfurt Open. Would you agree with him? Did you think they were pretty special? I thought they looked really impressive today. Uh, I also really enjoyed the Levante matchup because uh, I, I think they played an amazing footwiz team. So that result is even more impressive to me because I felt like their opposition was spectacular in terms of a 2v2. I, I think that footwiz team and Nightwatch, I bet, would co-sign me on this, would beat the majority of any of the teams that we saw uh, over the past three days. I just thought they were really, really gifted in every way, defensively, offensively, um, little details, intricacies, the particulars. Yeah, so many teams don't they have such strength in depth. But of course, only 16 could go through. Joining the 16 who are our Masters teams, of course. So 32 now qualify for April. But let's just quickly then recap over our 16 qualified regional teams from all across the globe. On Friday, I'm going to run through them all. We started in Tokyo. Kawasaki Frontal, Joe Berg, who went to next. 
Saf and Goliath, Miami, RF Esports, then to Mexico City for Timbers Esports to qualify, then Washington DC, we had Lou and Joe Sway, then Sydney on day two. Dire Wolves qualified first, followed by Zero One Esports, Creparetto, then in Stockholm we had Makers, the second team for Makers, then to Madrid, it was Casa, and then day three looked like this from Singapore. M42 kicked things off. Then we went to Milan for UT7, then to Paris for Levant U United, then to Frankfurt for Nomi Sports, who, you know, Nightwatch is saying is his ones to watch, before heading to Buenos Aires for Crew Esports. And then finally, it was to America again for Houston Dynamo from Portland. They are your 16 teams. What a three day we have had. And I mean, welcome back to our brilliant casters as well. We couldn't do these events without these guys and all their expertise. And the mic as well, of course, he's in the screen all the way from New York City. Guys, how much fun have we had? So much fun. Like, it's so good just to be back here as well. Like, being able to actually see you all and seeing like the reaction and emotion, like, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, Brandon, I'll come to you next and go, what has been, in your opinion, the most special thing about 2v2? I mean, uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I would say just the difference in play style you've got to play. You know, the small parts, such as how big a corner can be. People have been winning games off set pieces these last few days. Entertainment of games as well. I mean, for me, my favourite regional final, even though I didn't commentate, it was the Paris one. What an end-to-end -end game that was. Bracket reset, everything you could have asked for. And there's a reason why I've had a lot of bracket resets this last couple of days, because the competition is ridiculous. Yeah, it's been great, hasn't it? Lisa, I want to come to you next. Because uh, I know you have so many stats on so many great players in the game. Who do you think has been key, a standout player for most most teams that they've been using? I think for me it's got to be R9. He's so, so clinical in the positions that you need him to be. He's a lot of coins, obviously, the 10 million that I keep saying every week, but you know, he's so strong. His shooting is ridiculous and he's five star, five star. That's all you need in this FIFA. Chris, you look like you're agreeing with Lisa on that one. <laughs> that's it. That's all you need. Just get on R9 in your team. You could have me, Richard Buckley, Lisa, everybody there and you'd probably still win. You'd be yeah. fine. You just need R9. <laughs> and Chris, what's been a highlight for you from these last three days? I mean, there's been loads. I know I'm putting you on the spot here. I think it's just nice to be back in a studio with with all everyone, not just us, obviously all the crew and everybody here. And to just watch some really, really high competitive uh, FIFA, of course. I think the Paris game was, was probably the highlight and we, we expected it to be fair but what a game that was every single game was fantastic to be honest and I really agree with what Brandon said the reason we had so many double bracket reset was because of the competition so high I just want these players to keep on punching away even if you didn't get through keep going yeah and um, Mike LaBelle quickly how um, left out are you feeling in New York when we're all together right now <laughs> that's the energy you want to send my way thanks Rachel I appreciate it I was over here just gonna say this is the beginning of a mu movement this is really our first 2v2 that's built into the competitive scene I'm super happy and I'm interested in seeing how players pivot and adapt and then you throw the shade my way it's okay I'll turn off the lights I'll go downstairs I'll just wrap it up I, we I got love you. you and I'm actually gonna bring you all in now because I want to see if you all agree on this as goal of the last three days from that match between crew esports and essential it was that Ronaldo goal of course uh, do you guys all agree on it? Should we get it replayed one last time? I mean, it, it was, it, it is the goal just about, but if Rudiger put that by the kick in, <laughs> it, it tops it. That would have been it, but no, fair play. I mean, you're lucky you had that in your game, to be fair. You did well there. Uh, they're, they're, nobody's even tweeted it out yet. I need to see it more. I was looking to retweet it and everything. And I haven't seen it. Yeah, we need to get on Twitter. It was the best one. Bye. Okay. Far. Well, it will be clipped up, I'm sure, for all you guys at home. But talking about all you guys at home, if you have loved what you've seen over the last couple of days, well, you know where to go if you want a little bit more of all of this. Okay, we'll just scan that QR code right now on the screen and you can see some masterclasses from some of the top pros that you've seen over the last couple of days. And you can also watch some best matchups in competitive FIFA as well, so you know where to go. YouTube.com forward slash EA FIFA Esports. And if you want to possibly be at this level in the future, well, PlayStation are putting on some epic tournaments as well, weekly competitions for you guys to get involved and just get a little bit better, get your level up there. Um, and you can obviously win some cool prizes as well. They're on the screen right now. Just go to compete.playstation.com. There you go. Well, guys, 
I just want to say thank you to everyone, to Lisa Manley, to Chris Tun, Mike Clavel, Richard Buckley, and Brandon Smith. Guys, you have all been awesome, and obviously to EA and to Engine Esports as well. Thank you so much, and congratulations to all our 16 regional qualifiers. A massive well done. $15,000 is coming your way, and even more importantly, a spot in that Team of the Season Cup in April. We cannot wait to see you there at our first LAN event in a long time. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you very soon. Goodbye. Good morning. I want to double up on it. I want more of it. Last chance to learn for India. There it is! Ten of a land. It's their six. It's just clinical. Paris! Mbappe absolutely Ooh. acres of space. Frankfurt, of course, this one's going to be epic. A reverse elastico, cheeky chair, what's a goal? Oh, wow! Congratulations, you will be in the Team of the Season Cup. Buenos Aires, here we go. The puppy in the box, and crew eventually find their way through. I can keep going all day, all night. Oh, no, it's ball roll round the goalkeeper. The job is done. Yeah, 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 yeah.